Hey, everybody. This is Charlotte, the Gulf Coast granny, and that is Poppy. And he's making a whole lot of noise with his coffee that he's opening over there. <laughs> what is that? Black Rifle? Yes, Espresso Mocha. Espresso Mocha. Just got In it. In a can, and he shook it up as soon as I hit go live. <laughs> you know, I opened it when you said go live. So, how's everybody doing this evening? I hope you're doing great. Um, yeah, so... We are outside this evening. Figured it was a nice evening. It's fairly cool. We've got the fan blowing on us on the other side of the camera. And we've got the all essential Merlot. And he's got his essential coffee. Coffee. And I thought that tonight we would talk about how down here in the deep south, the garden is in a transition right now. Uh, and they can hear the frogs. And you can hear our frogs. <laughs> and, and don't pay any mind to the shadow. It's just the microphone and the lights and all that. We tried really hard to get it right, but I think we need some help. <laughs> but, Between garden lights, citronella candles. <laughs> right. Um, hang on a second. Let me, okay. Hmm. Comments. Okay, I got, I'm just making sure everything's good. Um, but anyhow, what I was going to say is we're talking about the garden being in transition and how down here in the deep south, summertime is the only time it's really difficult to grow anything. So because of that, I only have, I believe, four things growing right now. That's sweet potatoes, okra, um, um, corn, corn, beans. But now look, I just planted the corn again a couple of weeks ago. It's about this tall, and I've already noticed something is trying to eat it. I've had to pull three or four of them out because it's been chewed all the way to the ground level. Um, so I'll probably have to put some more corn in there in order for it to catch up. When the other ones grow, I don't even know if they're going to grow. I, I have no clue. I sprayed them down the other day with my Rithrin, um, but I don't have a lot of hope for them, at least for right now. Now, if they don't do well, I'll go ahead and go buy some more seed and start again maybe at the end of September, October, November. Mm. You might not be able to. I might not be able to. Maybe end of July. But I got peppers growing from the spring, and they will go until the fall. I never take them out of the bed unless they're dead at the end of the year, or I decide I just want to start over. I also have some zipper peas growing. There's not a lot of them, and the only reason I'm growing them is so I can have seed for next year. Um, Did you say tomatoes? I do have four tomato plants left. But basically, this week, I went through all of the beds. I cleaned them out. I pulled a lot of weeds. I pulled old dead plant matter out. Um, Killed a bunch of stuff. I, well, it needed killing. So, <laughs> but um, I, I have planted a few fall crops in the shade so that they can come up. And I might be able to harvest some by Labor Day as like little baby greens. Um, and if I don't want to do that, I can just wait and let them get bigger and harvest them later in the year. I'm going to go ahead. Hang on just a second. Honey, talk. Well, you also got to show them your uh, new addition to the garden. Well, just a minute. Please. Yeah, this is our first attempt for an outside live, so we need more light. What's going on here? Okay. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So, we did. We got a new addition to the garden this week. Um, my friend Gump Grumpus on Fire, who has a barbecue channel, he has a Lone Star Grill, and he does all kinds of creative barbecuing on that grill. If you haven't watched his channel, please go and watch it because he's very talented at what he does. But he also has another hobby, and that is fish fish and <laughs> he flowers 
he has a pond and he has a backyard garden. And he was the one that suggested to me that I should get a water lily for my little pond so that the leaves would grow out and cover the surface of the pond and keep the algae out. So I did that thing. I went to a website that he recommended called lilyblooms.com. And they just so happened to have a beautiful peach colored water lily on sale for $14.50. So it's going to have flowers on it? Yeah. Water lily. I bet. Y'all, really? That's saw the green things. Frogs sit on them. There was a frog sitting they on the water. They have big leaves that sit on the water, and then eventually it will shoot up a bloom. It's a lily, honey. The ones in the garden have flowers. It is the ones in your pond are going to have flowers too. A lily. So um, I got that going, and I already got it planted in the pond. And it, you know, it had to stay in the box for I don't know how long was it in the box. Probably three to five days. No, it wasn't that long. It was. I think I, they said it shipped out on Monday, and it got here Wednesday evening. But I didn't get to plant it until Thursday. But Poppy helped me get a bucket together and get the soil in it. Because you can plant it with soil in the bucket. Heavy and soil. It has to be heavy soil. Can't be like potting soil from Laser Home Depot. It's got to have um, clay. Yeah, that's what it said. heavy. So we got that together. And then we... <clears throat> Stuck it in the pond. I'm brain fog or something I for, i'm like all my words are just flying out of my head you put a bunch of rocks and stuff on top of it we did it that's what i was gonna up. say we put some rocks on top so that the dirt wouldn't just you know come out while we were putting it in the thing and we set it in the middle of the pond and now the pond's only four feet well a little more than four feet across long long and about three feet across so we put it in the center so that when it grows, it can go in all directions. And I can't wait until it blooms because I just think it's going to be beautiful. But, um, Poppy, you want to take a little tour of the garden? Um, might be a neat trick, but sure. Well, you can just turn the light around and shine it, like, down. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Can you get it ready? Yeah. Okay. It's going to get dark. It's, it, it might get a little bit dark, y'all. But I thought that we would take a little bit of a walk. How come my other lights aren't on? Because this light is so bright. Oh, oh, I see. Well, that makes sense. Um, I have a whole bunch of solar lights in the garden that light up a lot. But because I've got my, um, my box light. Oh, here. Over here is oh, my water. Fish is in there. I can't see. Okay. Over here is my water lily. And I, where's the fish? He's on that far one closest to you. Well, we're not going to see him in the dark. But there she is. And I'm very excited about her. I can't wait till she starts to grow and puts up some flowers. And if Grumpus, if Grumpus ever comes in here... I'm going to ask him how long it takes for the flowers to actually start blooming. Now, let's start over here at the peppers. No, let, follow me, Poppy. The folly with light. I can't walk around. Okay. Right down there are my sweet potatoes, and you can see my shadow. I'm going to wave to you. Over here's the sunflowers and the okra. Over here's a couple of tomatoes. I was kind of hoping that the, the lights would come on, but they're not doing it. Well, I can turn this light off so it looks like. Okay. Poppy's going to turn the light off. Let's see what it looks like. And there you go. It'll take them a minute to come on. But I've got floodlights and I've got little spiky lights. Oh, they don't even want to come on now, do they? Well, rain half the day. Hmm. That's interesting. But you on. can see over here... This is where the porch swing is, where we sit. And we've got some candles down here to keep the mosquitoes away, little torches. And we also have, oh, that's not even on. Yes, it is. A little bit. 
My spotlights over here aren't even on. So I guess we ought to just sit back down because there's nothing else to look at. Watch our balls. Okay. Keep it, keep it that direction, please. All right, y'all, I'm going to sit down here. And we'll just hang out and talk with each other. I gave it a good college try, right? Um, the other lights are oh working better gosh, when we good. have more sun during the day, but it started raining when I woke up at 7 and didn't stop raining until after 2 or so. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So they didn't have time to charge. Right. They probably didn't. Well, they were on when we came out here. Well, that's a lot, little bit of charge they had is already gone. Well, I know, because look at the back of the house. It's not lit up near like it usually mm -hmm. is. is here. Oh, hey, Grumpus, how are you doing? I want to talk to you. Get him out of jail. <laughs> I'm going to get you in jail or out, out of, jail. of jail or something like that. Oh, Not beer, just black rifle coffee. Yeah, he's doing coffee this evening. What kind of, it's espresso mocha. Yeah. And um, I got my lily in the mail, Grumpus, and I got her planted already, and I'm tickled to death with her. He might have seen it. No, I don't think he saw it, but he might have. So I put you a link in there if you want to come on up. But one of the things I wanted to ask you is how long does it take from the time you plant a water lily until it starts to bloom? I mean, I'm not in a hurry. I just kind of want to know, you know. And I want to know <laughs> if I'm killing it or not. <laughs> ask an expert instead of uh, Google. You what? Ask an expert instead of Google. Yeah, might as well. That light is right in my face. Can you turn it? towards you a little bit, please. Put it in my eyeballs, got it. No, it's on the ground, honey. It's not going to be in your eyeball. There you go. Okay. That works. What did Grumpus say? He's finishing up stuff, supper, and if we're still at it when he gets home from the restaurant, he'll hop on. Oh, okay. okay, thanks, Grumpus. We'll, we'll probably be up for a little bit. Even though it's, you know... Just a couple of us in here. <laughs> but that's all right. Mm. Well, what do you do with a garden in the South when it does nothing but stink and rain or bake your brains out? Hey, Cypress, how you doing, honey? Hey. Grumpa says he'll be back. He's finishing up his dinner at the restaurant. His his beautiful wife must have made him take her out to dinner tonight. <laughs> when you can take me out? I don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> Cypress, tell me, can you hear me okay? Can you hear both of us? And do we look goofy sitting out here in the dark? And am I mumbling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> noisy here. Oh, he can't hear us because it's noisy there. Ah. Uh. Well, I've got my mic on, so I'm hoping it's going to work. If not, we'll pull it a little bit closer. Closer? No, not, no, 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 oh. no. Back off. Back off, hater. Hater? <laughs> well, it's warm, and I've got this on. Yeah, it's warm, and she wears Okay, great, shawl. great. I'm so glad to hear that, Laura. Um. Ha, huh, not mumbling. <laughs> well, that's the first. Hmm. Um. <laughs> Mumbler. <laughs> Mumbler. We were just out here because it was so nice out tonight. We've got a breeze with a fan. And I was going to try to do a walk around the garden in the evening because I have a whole bunch of solar lights out in the garden. But since I've got my box light on so we can see what we're doing, all of the solar lights went out. So I can't, it total fail. Complete and utter fail. And it rained two-thirds of the day, so there was no sun to charge your light. It did. Yeah, the sun was having a hard time charging the light today. Check Checking out devices. I can catch her with... Wait a minute. It does look good there. You must... 
a resort. Shoot, no, Grumpus, this is my backyard, silly. <laughs> Poppy put this fence up for me so I didn't have to, so I could have some privacy in my backyard. <laughs> and when we get inside the house, I might even elaborate on that a little bit. Right. Um, here, it does look good there. Wait a minute. So checking out devices, I can catch her. Wait a minute. What's going on, y'all? I, I missed something. We'll be listening, but I'm at the end. Oh, no. Someone listening up above, and you're going to trap her. Laura, give us the dirt. What the heck's going on? If you're trying to catch somebody, you always feed them all kinds of bum information. So when they start spouting it, you're like, ha, I knew it was you. <laughs> Here was bad. Here was smoke, but not as bad as yesterday. Oh. Bye, Grumpus. See you later. Drive care. Be careful. <laughs> they have these things that cover fences, balconies. I want them with fake plants. That would be really nice. Yeah. That would be super nice. Or they've got these plants that actually smell like dead bodies. Buy some of those, put them up. Everybody will stay inside. What? Well, they only bloom once a year. That's so why you buy a couple of them. They can, if you're lucky, they well, bloom on a cycle. That's just silly. Or you get like. She's um, been listening to you for months, and every time I'm on the phone, she sniffs. <gasps> Oh, that evil woman. Okay, I'm outside in my yard, so I can't say the things I really want to say. <laughs> but we'll be inside in a little while, and we can say whatever we want. Yeah, once it gets too hot out here, we'll go inside. Mm. But there's all kinds of stinky plants. I would buy those just to make it fun oh, for Oh, no, them. I wouldn't. No, she's got to figure out a way to keep this woman from listening to her. That's what she needs to do. She's um, been okay. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. I can't believe somebody is that listening in on your phone. Well, if she can hear, then I was being an ass, and I said she should grow up as her mother is growing in her grave. She stopped over top of me. Oh my god! Oh my god! Unfortunately, Laura, because she's above you. She has a little bit of an upper hand, and that makes me sad. Um, what can she do? Yeah, she says she, she hates, hates birds, so birds. she's buying bird feeders. Darn right. Right? Get some bird feeders and put them right on your balcony. Right on the balcony. I wonder how she feels about squirrels. Because if you have bird feeders, you're going to have squirrels, too. Right. Ooh, you could buy some... Uh whale mating cds and play them loud point them up at the ceiling not She'll bad Poppy, not bad not bad be like um dory speaking whale yeah stop <laughs> stop you know i can speak she, whale yeah she can do it it's funny she hates birds i'm buying okay she already said that okay oh my god laura i'm so sorry you're having to deal with that Look, that's one of the reasons me and Poppy bought our last house. We were living mm -hmm. in an apartment, but we were on the second floor, and there was three floors. And we had a herd of elephants living above us, and Swear she to was you. going to go elephant hunting. I was about to lose my mind because those about people. To? Okay, I probably did lose my mind. We bought a mind. house. We bought a whole house to get away from them. Um, but I don't like a lot of noise. And even in this neighborhood now, we sold our house a year and a half ago. And we moved to this place that we're renting. And it's a house. And it has a yard and all. But we're very close to the road. Would you please stop reading while I'm trying to talk? You're distracting me. Oh, I know. I know. She wishes she could win some money. <sighs> um. There's one way she can be doing it, which was uh, probably illegal as all get out there, is listening devices that you can buy. So you can have them pointed in whatever direction, or you can have a really a non-directional antenna. And she could have it pointed down at your floor. She's probably not that smart. 
Well, you can buy those. Buy that junk at uh, Amazon.com. You can go to there's a Snoop store in Florida that sells all kinds of crazy spy crap like that to sell to anybody. And if she's a jerk face, she just might be buying that kind of junk just to bother you. What, just for entertainment? Oh, yeah. Some people are just jerks, honey. Or maybe she used to know somebody that was a cop or something like that and got her hands on it, stole it, kept it, whatever. I'm looking on Amazon now. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, look on Amazon and post a link and see if you can send her a link to something like that. He works in electronics and listening devices and cameras and um Ooh, a scrambler. That's what she needs. A scrambler. A scrambler. But anyhow, he knows about all that stuff, so he can find it on Amazon for you and post a link. You can post a link in the chat. Okay. Go ahead and look. Okay, wow. Well, Don't have... you know how to do this? Okay, look. You can keep your chat up. Okay, get out of there. Pull up Google and go to, or pull up your Amazon. Yeah. So the police won't do a thing. So she's just your neighbor on the floor above you? Is that what you're saying? Because at first I thought it was somebody you knew. But that that's miserable. Of course, I'm going to be honest with you. If somebody was listening to me, I'd give them something to listen to. <laughs> I'm I'm for real. She can talk like a sailor too. We'll help you. You have to help her. I'm looking. Listen, you're not paying attention. She wants help catching her. Instead of just making her stop, she wants to catch her in the act. Is that right, uh -huh. Laura? See, she said yes. Okay. And then you can scramble her. Whatever that means. I don't know anything about electronics, but I know who she is. I put in the building when I, oh, oh, I see. Oh, God. And how long has she been there? Because, I mean, you'd think people could just move out eventually. Because, <laughs> you know, apartments are, you have a high turnover. Or at least from what I remember of living in apartments, apartment. You know, you'd have one neighbor today and the next neighbor tomorrow. Um, then I'm going to take her to court and she, shoot, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm so sorry, honey. I am so sorry. I hate that. You can come to Mississippi and hang out in the backyard for a while if you want to. Give her a tent. I know, I know that you, you live far away. Don't you live in Arizona? No. There you go. I know you live cool. up out there somewhere. What is it? It's an anti-spy detector, bug detector, hidden camera detector, GPS detector, RF signal scanner, and device Send detector. Send her that. I don't know. How do you do that? From where Well, you go to Here. this. Oh, hang on. Yeah. We're going to have to copy link. Where's our chat? Right here? Yeah, it's those two okay. people right there. And then paste it. Ah, super cool. Booyah. She's Wait a smart. minute. Wait a minute. How come it's not doing it? It is. It's right there at the top. Well, it, I can't make it. Hang on. There. Aha. Uh -huh. Click on that link, Laura. Look at that thing and things like it. Some are better. Some are worse. Some can do more. I thought, did you put the link in there? Yes, yeah, you did. Ma'am. Send it to her um, email address. Hang on, let me, I'll, I'll get you hooked up here in just a second. Send it to her, wait a minute. Where'd it go? Where'd it go, Wesley? Is that it? That's it. Okay. Right there, that device. So now we hit this thing right here, share. Yeah. Okay. And then you go email. And then you type in... Hang on. Two. M P B E L L N O L A N D at yahoo.ca. Oh, shoot. No, it ain't. It's right here. At yahoo.ca. 
That's right. You're in Canada. Dot C A. There it is. Okay. Now hit send. Oh, did we put the? No, we didn't put the link in. Ah! Show me where the. Compose. No, I already should have composed it. You should have already. Oh, for the love of God. You did have it. And then you typed in her junk and it went away. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm getting there. Here it is. Anti spy. Booyah. It's okay, it blah. just got sent to your email too, honey. You know what? I just saw that there's no link on the thing, but for some reason. It's on my thing. It's on his thing. So, but that's all right. We just sent it to you in your email, okay? And see if there's something else you can get for her. <laughs> what are you going that way for? To make sure. It... No, it's not. Go back huh. down. You can catch this old woman. Is it an older lady or is she young? Because that sounds like something a crotchety old lady might do. Or a woman who's afraid that you're going to horn in on her. You on know, her man or something. On her man. Yeah. Which is crazy. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope it works. God, I hope it works. Because there ain't no sense in that nonsense, honey. She's in her. Yeah, that's what I thought. Was she a geezer? Yeah, she's a geezer. God love her. Somebody's got to love her. Who can play like Nine Inch Nails and fun music like that? Oh, She'll yeah. love that. Trent Reznor will run her out of that place in a New York minute. Um, Close. That song. Or some ICP, Insane Clown Posse. Who else? Um, oh, Flogging Molly. Play yes. Some, oh, my Lord. It runs me out of my own house. <laughs> My, my kids like my it. My youngest daughter, my youngest son, and I love Flog and Molly, Dropkick Murphy, the I Dubliners. I like Dropkick Murphy. I don't like Flog and Molly at all. You just, they don't, she doesn't like the bagpipes very much. No, I don't. She, well, I do, but not not played by a rock man. I like them at funerals and stuff. Not, Parade. Not heavy metal and a bagpipe. I told her on her man round on her... Oh, 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 What'd she say? oh, oh, she told her that her man was messing around on her and <laughs> she blocked her on Facebook. That's great. Holy crap. That's hilarious. It's okay. It's okay. I get you. I get it. I get it. And look, on a public platform, I might be doing the same thing, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to uphold the, the whole granny image here. <laughs> There's also things called a, it's a listening device. You point it, you can aim it around and look. We'll send that to her email too. Well, there's, I just see this one here. It's called a listening device. So you can just Amazon and type in listening device. It might be in the same page that I sent oh, you. Oh, it might be. But there's ones that you can just listen. Then there's some where you can listen and record. So if she's, you're catching her talk about the exact same stuff you are. Or you can hear yourself through the system. Mm, Bam. Mm. You got her. That's true. I didn't even think of that. See, I told you he's good at that stuff. What to do for a living. I know. I know. I put a radio on my stove because I'm sick of listening. Her, li Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another good thing. If you're trying to jam, jamming her stuff, if she does have any devices, go to the AM side of the dial. And when you're... Trying to listen to her. Be super quiet when you do it. Scroll through the AM nice and slow. And that'll make her stuff bug out and act stupid when you hit the right frequency. Her, her listening stuff? Yeah. Uh, yes, I want to record her coming into the bedroom. That every time I'm on the phone, I hear her creeping in. So she's a creeper. Mrs. Kravitz. Oh, my God. She's a Mrs. Kravitz. Look. Don't you have a dog you can sick on her or something? That's illegal. I'm just saying. Then Oops. You, then the dog would have to be put down. And well, your yeah, friend is getting yeah trouble. you don't want to do that. Can't do that. Uh, no, dogs. No, don't do that to the poor Besides, dog. the dog would taste something gross if he bit her. 
No, she ain't going to have a device that can detect anything like that. No. No, that crap's expensive. Yeah. There's no way. That's like in Virginia, it's illegal to have a radar detector. Mm -hmm. So the cops have radar detector detectors. Yeah. But you can't have a radar detector detector detector, if that makes any sense. Told the office I would like one shot at punching her face. In. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes those trips to jail are worth making. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm not giving any advice. Y'all, please. I'm not giving any advice. No. <laughs> but for me, for me, sometimes it would be worth it to me. Sometimes I think the only reason why she's not in jail is I married her. It, that's the only reason. There's been a couple of times, girl, you don't even know, because I'm crazy. Definitely. Just not getting the Section 8 check. But Told crazy. the office, okay, the lady on the phone, what hurt is the police? I, I, exactly. And I, I don't understand. Well, sometimes that. they can't. There are certain rules that they have to follow, good, bad, or indifferent. But once you start to have evidence and proof, that makes their job a thousand times easier. Then it's no longer hearsay or that kind right. of garbage. And they're like, got you dead nuts. You did it. Well, is it illegal to eavesdrop on somebody's business in their own house? Well, I think it is. But you have to check your local laws. Canada, Canadian laws might be a little bit different than United States laws. And that is true. And state laws are different than federal laws. I mean, there's so many yeah. stinking laws out there. It's insane. But you deserve some... Uh, privacy? Yeah. Some expectation of privacy in that apartment. And you there are, besides blockers, I mean, I know you want to bust her, but if it is too much of a hassle to try to catch her, there is um, substances that you can buy that you can put on your ceiling that she can't hear you through. It's not thick. It's a thin, it's a thin layer of stuff you buy and you just kind of adhere it to well, the what ceiling. Is it? Well, it's, it's like a foil, but it's a, um, it's like an RF filter. It's almost like turning your bedroom into a Faraday cage. Nothing can oh, penetrate. Oh. And you, you have to go online to find that stuff. The, the exact name of it. I'm not sure, but it's, well, you should Google it. You got a phone right there. I don't know anything about it, but, yeah, but just look at look at possibly turning one room of your house into a Faraday cage, and that way none of her devices or stupidity can get to you. Right. Oh goodness gracious, that's terrible. That sucks. Just terrible. God, I thought we had it bad when we had a crackhead living next door to us. No, 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 not 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 a crackhead. He is no. a meth head. I'm so glad he's gone. I can't even tell you how glad I am that he's gone. The house got foreclosed on, and some investor bought it for, like, really cheap. And so right now there's nobody in the house at all, and it is so nice. At 2.45 in the morning, a big bang on the wall. Oh, did you bang back? Well, wait a minute. If, if she's up at 2.45 in the morning... Chances are she's asleep at eight. That's six hours. Six yeah. Minutes. Six hours and 45 minutes. Well, actually, it's not. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's five hours and 15 minutes. I bet you she's, up, she's still in bed trying to sleep at eight. So I'd get up at eight o'clock and start hammering nails in the wall. I mean, two can play that game. And that's just when you have your speakers pointed at your ceiling and play all the fun music you know she's going to hate. And that, too. And that, too. Because two can play at she's the... She's not going to bed because she thinks my TV is bothering her. Well, if she turned her listening device off, she wouldn't have to worry about your TV, right? would she? If that's what she's doing. Turn on... If you Turn really... on some porn. <laughs> I was going to say... a. Adult entertainment, but yeah. No, turn on some... Oh, I'm not supposed to say that on, on no, YouTube. No, you're not. So adult entertainment type stuff. 
Point it at her ceiling. Point it right at her ceiling. Shoot, yeah. Yeah, her bedroom. Went, That'd be great. Her one was in the apartment. Uh, Hey, Kat, how are you doing? We're not having neighbor We're problems. We're not, Somebody but our friend uh, Laura at Cypress Blue, she's having some neighbor problems. So if you have any good ideas to drive a neighbor nuts, let her know. Yeah. <laughs> Kat, we did have some neighbor problems, though, but thankfully after a year and a half, that neighbor is, gone. is living in his van down by the river. Well, actually, it's around the corner, but he's not next door to me anymore. Well, I don't care. I'm in she don't my care yard. About nothing. <laughs> She's loud. She don't care. Uh, well, that's all right. Five foot tall and ten foot tall and bulletproof hey, at the same time. We have... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you get another tick? Oh, she just said, hey, the cat. Okay. See, I'm not getting it. Till... You're getting it before I am, so it's distracting uh -huh. me whenever I see it pop up. So yeah, can't can't have pet. Oh, there goes the dog idea. Shoot. Hmm. But you can you can turn on the pet channel on your TV. Ooh, what pets for me channel? Yeah, or the one just get a recording of barking dog. Yeah. And then she would call the management on you. And you'd say, what is she talking about? I don't have any barking dogs. And eventually, they'd 50, 51, 50 her behind. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you got it. Great. Oh, I hope you get that woman taken care of. Yeah, that'd be great, because then they would definitely bust her for trying to get somebody else in trouble when there's no dog to well, get Well, I don't know if they can bust her for that. Yeah, they can. I'm like, you're an annoyance. Get out. They can tell you to get out. I don't out. know. Is that a violation of the lease? You don't know. It might be. Look at your lease. Go through your lease with a fine tooth comb and see what can get your butt kicked out and make her do it. Yeah, because she's probably got the same lease you do, doesn't she? Um, most of them do. It's a blanket so, Kat, lease. what's going on at your house, honey? She said that the manager, I said, do you think she's going to tell you? The truth. Of course, she's not going to tell the truth. We could take it to land. Or to, yeah. Well, I, I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds serious, so I do it. I know it probably has something to do with uh, solving disputes between tenants. Tenants. But if yeah, if you make her yell wolf a bunch of times and she's wrong, there it's going to look like she's trying to get you in trouble, and she's just going to look like an idiot doing it. Charges and yeah. Yeah, well, that's what you need is the proof. Yep. And if you get the proof, that that listening device will probably help you get the proof. And maybe, what's that other thing you, you sent her? The, the um, device where you can the, listen to her but record it. Right. The record and listen device. Yeah. So you're listening to her, listening to you while you're recording her do it. Right. I hope you, sh I, gosh, I hope you get that taken care of. Cat, are you still here? Cat, cat. Yes, there here. she is. I'm just... Oh, good! Good Lord, that took a long time, didn't it? Without going to jail just once. <laughs> well, you know, I've always heard that the Canadians are always very nice and polite. So I'm sure if you went to jail for it, they would just smack you on the hand till you go home. Maybe if she fell on accident and ran into her. Uh, well, that's not nice. Put her, uh, put her shoulder right there Cat in your gut. Said, what do you mean forever? Don't, don't tell me you're going to have surgery. Is that going to fix it? Look, I know it's miserable, Cat, and I'd probably do whatever it took to get rid of it myself. I, I get it occasionally, but nothing. It doesn't keep me from walking usually. Only one time. It kept me from walking for a couple of days, but 
it took forever to get over. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, but the bummer of that sciatica crap is it never really goes away. No, it, it'll come back and then it'll go again and bleh. I've been having it off and on for so, what, 12 yeah, years, maybe. 13 years? Yeah. 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 <laughs> she said, yeah, maybe they would just smack her on the hand. <laughs> Tell her go back home and be nice. Right. Now that's just what I've heard. <laughs> well, I've been to Canada twice and I stayed out of trouble, so. Well, I've never been to Canada at all, but I've never met anybody from Canada that I didn't like because they're nice folks. To, for, yeah. Well, Kat, what are you going to be doing now that you're able to, um, you know, run free? She said she can cut grass. I could walk, cut grass, anything standing up. Just couldn't sit. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, God, that's miserable. Can you imagine not being able to sit down? Yes. No. <laughs> it's true. I mean, look. Uh, what's his name? Who's that actor from Canada? Oh, well, now Justin Bieber. I, he's he Canadian. Count. He don't count, though. I'm talking about... Uh, you know, Marty from uh Marty McFly? Yeah, what's his name? We just saw a picture of him. I know it. What's his stinking name? You know who I'm talking about. And the Doc. one that God loving me has uh Parkinson. Cat says she's gonna clean her filthy house now that she <laughs> 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 I've been doing that all week, Cat. I um I really need to declutter. We downsize to a house half the size of the one we we owned and i love this house and i can keep it clean but now the it's starting to get a little overwhelming as far as how much stuff is in the house and we have a storage unit and i told poppy what michael j fox that's the one heck yeah cypress you got this laura good 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 on you it was right on the tip of my tongue, and I just, I was trying to call him Justine Bateman, and that's a woman. <laughs> you know, he was on that, that show, uh, Family of Family Matters or something, and Justine Bateman, Bateman was his sister in that program. Uh. But anyhow, uh, uh, I was going to say, I'm going to start decluttering everything and whatever I don't want to stay in the house is going to go to the storage unit. No, we're not going to go to the storage unit. We need to clear it's that out. It's going to go somewhere. We need to clear the storage unit out. Well, get get on it. Cat said and maybe meet. Oh, I'd love to meet you for coffee. That would be so much fun, Cat. Is she in the same yeah. state as us? Yeah, she lives in Long Beach. ding a -ling. So down the road. Yeah, right down the road. Yes, and was or still on... Yeah, Boston Legal. Was that the name of it? Was it Boston Legal? No. Oh, no, that was William Shatner and Dave, uh, Alan Spade. Yeah, he Ooh, was that shady. Was good. God, that was a good program. Yeah, I think it's not yeah, uh, on anymore. But that was a long time ago. Hide your stuff, Wesley. <laughs> no doubt. She likes throwing crap out. I do. I throw a lot. I mean, yeah. If it's not nailed down, she'll throw it out. I could put a hot cup of coffee on the counter, come back, and it's gone. She done threw it down the drain. I throw it down the drain and wash the cup. Why is it on my counter? Where's my fresh hot cup of coffee, honey? Do it out. What's your email? Oh, cat, my email's just Gulf Coast Granny at Gmail. I'm going to start throwing your tea down the drain. See, that's easy, Chairman. I'll just make more. I'll throw that away, too. It'll be in the way. Might be thought one another. I don't understand, but that's okay because I'm on a hundred different tangents. You know what? I'm going to put my computer in my lap so I can see better. I'm having a really have hard a time. a good time with that. You'll look at the cord. It's pulled tight. Hey, well, I guess I'm just going to have to what pull it tighter. Around? What do you mean? I can unplug it, Wesley. Look. Look. It's wireless. You're a you know jerk. <laughs> Your battery goes. No, it's full. See? I did that on purpose. She's a jerk. I did that. <laughs> At jerkmail.com. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah. Um, shoot, I forgot what I was talking about now. I got all <laughs> I got all up into what Laura was dealing with. 
I don't even know what I was talking about. Yes, we are outside. Yeah, we're outside in the backyard. And I know it's kind of sh shadowy and stuff, but... Just because she's shady. Marcel might be in later was on Facebook chat with her. Okay. You know, uh, she actually texted me right before we went live and asked if we were going to. And I told her, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, oh, decluttering. <laughs> no, we, um, it's just so nice out and cool tonight, Kat. You ought to go outside and, I don't know, lay down on your back porch <laughs> until you can sit. <laughs> lay on your stomach, lay yeah. on your back back. <laughs> Um, cause it's really, it's cool tonight. See, I got my, my little shawl on. I made this y'all see. She's always cold. I'm not cold. Or I just, hot. Well, first of all, it. I've got on this scoop neck top and I've got to get those snaps that you can snap your bra strap in it so that your bra strap doesn't show. And until I do, I'm going to wear something over it because I just think it's real tacky to walk around with my bra strap hanging out. I don't like that look. Of course, I'm old-fashioned and, you know. I didn't say it. I'm an old fuddy-duddy. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's so, this was the easiest shawl I have ever made in my 50 years of crocheting. Oh, I almost 50. Three more years, it'll be 50 years since I learned how. I lived on my back porch because I smoke. Oh, you've been banished. Yeah. No, nope, she makes the house smell like smoke. They haven't banished me yet, Kat. We tried. Doesn't work. And I do try to keep it in my bedroom away from the rest of the family. Except for him, of course. He's got to, you know, be in there with me. Unless he wants his own room. Hmm. We can have the kids share a bedroom, and you can have one of their rooms. Uh, no. Uh, that's what I thought he was going to say. Um, <laughs> but you might want to turn that because it's going to get see, darker now. I like to snuggle ball. Yeah, but I don't want to right now because it's going to be hot. But you said you don't get hot. Hot flashes, honey. Hot flashes. My family doesn't. Yeah, my family hates it too, Kat. And I quit for a year and a half. And then he made me mad about something, and I told him, don't you dare come home without a pack of smokes. It wasn't me. Who? Oh, it was my daughter, wasn't it? Yeah. And then I'm days sorry. later, you have a heart attack because of said daughter. I, I lied on him, and I didn't mean to. And cholesterol, but well, there was a catalyst. No, it was not my daughter's fault that I had a heart attack. Now, catalyst. Quit it. Quit catalyst. It. That is not true. Catalyst. Thank God for YouTube, because I don't know how many times <sighs> the yarn went flying across the room. <laughs> I, I, I've taught quite a few people to crochet, and um, yeah, I'm not a very good teacher. Now, they learned, and they were a, but these people were kind of self-starters, so once I showed them the ropes, they kind of went on their own and did the rest, which is good for me, because I don't know. I'm just not a real good teacher. You should tell me how to I make a crooked washcloth. Stars. I said, oh, cigars are good. I like cigars. I do, too. We both we had a fine cigar when our oldest got married. Cat, that is something I would, look, when Poppy and I are going to stay here for six years. And then whenever the kids are graduated, I think we're going to move out to Diamond Head. And we're going to build us a little place. And I want a a screened porch so bad and I'm not even going to buy a place unless it has one. Or not can have it. one put on. Or it can, yeah, well, no, I want it to already be there because waiting to have it put on is too long. Well, we can just work it into the loan. We can do that. Anyway. We can do that. I'm too uncoordinated to crush it. <laughs> you know, I learned when I was just eight years old. Dang, that's a long time ago. Seven or eight. My granny taught me how and We'd sit there and watch soap operas and crochet with each other. So, if I were to pick it up now and try it, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. But because it's something that's kind of second nature to me, then 
it, it's just easy for me. It's it's part of my hand. It's just what I do. Um, and YouTube is a great teacher as far as crochet is concerned. I tried to learn how to knit. Well, let me take that back. I know how to knit. I'm just not good at knitting. I know how to cast it on, and I know how to do a knit stitch and a purl stitch, and I know how to get it off. But I'm just not very good at it. And my granny taught me how to do that, too. And I'm a, a what, an instant gratification kind of girl. <clears throat> so crochet became the thing that I like to do because you can see results as you go. And with knitting, it's just that one little tiny itty bitty stitch at a time. And it just never really, I couldn't stick with it. I wish I spent time with my aunt because she did so much knitting crochet. My granny's died one before I was born. And I was, oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's other places you can go to learn if you really want to. Me, to go. It does feel good when you make something. It does. And well, sometimes you can go to a senior center. Sometimes places mm -hmm. that sell yarn and all that kind of stuff will have. Laura, I don't think you're old. Enough, I don't think Laura's or, old enough to go to the senior center. What do you well, mean? I don't think there's an age to get in. <laughs> they don't look at you and say you're not old enough. Get out. I think they do. What? I think that that's why they call it the senior center. That's discrimination. Now she could go to. You can go somewhere like. Uh, Just check all the hobby places that sell yeah. yarn. They should be able to point you in the right direction so you can learn right um because they make you needle learn work is just oh uh, yeah yeah buy more junk i have several blankets my grandma made yes of course and i have one blanket left that my granny made and she was not my granny she was actually my great grandmother um her daughter i called her Mima, and um she was not a domestic at all she went to work every day she came home every night she had a few glasses of Seagram 7 and then went to sleep. <laughs> Just glasses of gin straight up? Well, it wasn't gin. It was whiskey. And, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, except for a splash of water and lemon juice on top. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> cat's 56 too. Hey, you're a little bit ahead of me. Don't you wish that on me. And Laura's 56. Y'all are both. Okay, I'll be 56 in December. So, in the same year. I was just born the last, almost the last day of the month. And I'm still not I, even 50 yet. Shoot. Almost the last day of the year is what I meant to say. Very true. What did you say? And I said, I'm not even 50 yet. No, he's not 50 yet. So you know what that means? I'll tell you what that means, y'all. What that means? That means by the time I'm old enough to retire... He's still going to be working, and by the time he's old enough to retire, I'm going to be so old I can't even enjoy it, or I'm going to be dead. It means I can buy a Porsche. Oh, you're 57. Well, happy early birthday, Cat. Did you hear me, honey? You can what? Buy a Porsche. Yeah, if I die, you can buy a Porsche. Laura said she thinks that's why she smokes cigars. She was young when her grandpa gave me a puppy, and my mom was pissed. He is just a spring chicken. In fact, he's such a spring chicken that we have radio wars in the car still. She loses because I'm the driver. I don't always lose. And you'll be 57. In, well, I'll be 56 in December, so I'm a year behind y'all. But that's all right. Is that kind of okay? Because I like World War II songs. They, they probably look younger than I do. <laughs> I know Kat, uh, Laura does because I can see her picture. I can't see any pictures. Well, it's right small. there. Hey, ding a -ling. I need new glasses. I can't see her picture. It's so blurry. Oh, well, I think you ought to get that done. Mm -hmm. What music do y'all like? Oh, goodness. Love Jimmy <sighs> Buffett. I'm a parrot head. But I like just about anything. I like older country. Do not like rap. I like old, old country music. Like 70s. Hank Williams. 60s. Senior. But I really love 1940s and 1950s music. Oh, but you and like Bare Naked Ladies. Hush, I was just about to say that. Why are you always 
You always do that to me. I love bare naked lady. I love nine inch nails. Who else do I love? Um, I love Elvis. Um, the possum. Who? George Jones. No, I rode in an elevator with George Jones in Nashville, Tennessee one time. And you didn't even know who it was. I had no clue who he was. <laughs> I love blues music. Oh, my Lord. That's like belly rubbing music right there. I love, love some blues music. Um, I've seen Chubby Checker and Fats Domino. Have you? Yeah. I think I have, too, in Jacksonville. At one of them, you know, community festival, festival things. type things. Yeah. Shoot, I've even seen the um, Bill Haley and the Comets play. Yeah, I saw them too, because they traveled. They did the circuit. Yep. In Florida, and and stinking what's his name, Bo Cephas. Good God. Oh, I'll tell you what. I though. love him. I got to see him in concert. I'm gonna get rid of your mother. A long time ago, I saw him in concert. Your mother should should know that we're doing a stream, and she needs to come and just show up so we can get some views. Right. But tell her not to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rockin' but you love I love Sinatra and I like rock and roll too but <clears throat> and actually you know who I do love that's country? I absolutely love Crystal Gale and I love um, Linda Ronstadt but you know Linda Ronstadt She's just the most versatile, well, she was the most versatile singer. Um, I love Lady Gaga. Shut the front door. I love me some Lady Gaga. And I know that's kind of pop. Like but the B-52s. You like the B-52s? I like her too. Go listening to Ginger. She is unreal. Ginger, who is, I don't know who Ginger is. Shoot. And I know she's got to be some blues singer. Like my, And in this neighborhood, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but some house down the street has their music thumping. And I can feel it in the back of my head. I he can't. probably can't hear it, but I do. And... I hear all of that bass music when people are playing their bass real loud in their car and stuff. I can hear it coming from miles away, and he he don't hear it. Several years of sitting there listening to sonar on a fast attack submarine, and then several more years of listening to jets on a flight line. I'll tell you another singer I used to love with a passion, Damn. and that was Barbara Streisand and the Carpenters. Oh, my God, I love the Carpenters. Um, a growler. No, she's a growler, but things normal too. It's also oh, I like that. What the heck is a growler? You know when they when they oh god. Okay. You know when they growl when they sing growling. Okay. But there must be something different. I, look, look, look! I'm gonna YouTube it that. It might be like that band um, Lilac. They do a lot of rock and roll. They're a they? family, and they're I think they're all brothers and sisters. I think the mom might play the piano or something like that, or keyboard, I guess. But that um, the, the I'm lead looking singer, her up. she does that growling thing a lot. They do a lot of covers of 70s and 80s rock. Oh, okay. Oh, my. What? What? Look. Ah, your computer got mad. Did it get mad? No, I don't think it got mad. I think it's trying to turn on a video, and I can't have that because it'll, you know, it'll have feedback watch. and everything. Check out, that's the one I just clicked on accidentally, and um, I'll have to listen to it later, though. Growler Ginger? Her name is Ginger, and her style is Growler, and the song name is Pisces. I have to explain everything in this house. I was so shocked when she growled. Oh, no, I like that. I like that. I love 70s music too, Kat. I love it. All of, pretty much all of it. I like The Doors. I like... Uh, Do you like disco? Yeah. The Bee Gees and all them. Heck yeah, I like them too. 
Um, I normally just get to work, turn on margaritaville.com and let it run all day. Favorite daughter. They're on the way. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> so should I leave now to go Look, get her? Look, you want to hear what's funny? Yeah, you can go ahead and go. But look, what? don't be fiddle farting around like you did last time and leave me sitting here for hours thinking you're dead in a ditch somewhere. No, that was the first time. Like I said, go. Then the last time I went, we talked for a couple minutes and I grabbed her and we went. Yeah, and it still took you 45 minutes to get home because you're sitting there yapping. Don't be yapping this time. Well, you want me to get there faster? Get me a Porsche. You walk in there and you say, hey, Darren, nice to see you again. Come on, Violet, we got to go. Porsche. I get there faster. Whatever. Porsche. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm going to pick you. I'll take a 928. Maybe your neighbor would enjoy that music. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Cat. Laura, let me tell you something. Down here in the South, we don't tolerate no foolery. And I was going to say the other effery word, but I said foolery instead, if you know no what I mean. Oh, potty mouth. I'm trying not to have a potty mouth tonight. I'm really trying hard because. Mm -hmm. Five finger death punch. Oh my gosh. My daughter used to listen to those all the time. In fact, I forget. She likes corn too. That's my oldest daughter. Flipping. Yeah. The flippery. The flippery. <laughs> I am kind of mean sometimes. Some, sometimes I am. And you know what? I thank my lucky stars every day that I got a husband that'll put up with my nonsense. And that's a God's honest truth because I am a hard, hard person to live with. And um, sometimes I'm ashamed of myself, but most of the time I'm not. <laughs> oh, you speak French. Oh, that kind of French. Okay, I got you. I got you. Hey, look, if either one of you want to come up on the stream with me. I'm going to put a link in here. Oh, wait. Let me see. Oh, hell. I done lost it. No, I hadn't. No, I hadn't. I got me. I got me right here. I will copy that. And then I'm going to put a link in the um, comments. Oh, come on. Don't be a weenie. I will. Copy. Now. Well, shoot, my stupid computer's trying not to work. I'm going to try that again. You're not offended by language. You know, Kat, I'm norm normally I'm not. But I'm going to tell you what does offend me. is <laughs> Me and my husband will be walking into the Walmart there in the past. And somebody will do something stupid in the parking lot. And all of a sudden, he'll holler 40, a string of 40 curse words and ask what that ding-a-ling, effer blah, blah is doing. What kind of idiot? And I'm like, do you have to be so loud? You want to embarrass me in front of your children while we're walking into the stinking Walmart? Come on now. That makes me crazy. I don't like it when he um, expresses himself in a foul manner in public. In public. Well, my boyfriend speaks French, Japanese, and Arabic, but his English is a little off. <laughs> hey, I tell you what. People who can speak Japanese and Arabic will never be unemployed. Um, yeah, it is ignorant. It, it is. It is. I can't stand it when he does that. And he doesn't do it very often, Cat. But I don't think that he, a lot of times he will, he just doesn't think before things come at, fall out of his mouth. And I think sometimes he gets so irritated that he just doesn't realize, he knows where he is, but he, something disconnects. Something disconnect. And, you know, if I'm in public or on a public platform, I mean, I'll, I'll curse like a sailor in my house. 
And sometimes even around my children, if they make me mad enough. <laughs> but I try not to open my mouth and show people how stupid I am when I'm in public, you know? Well, thank you, Homestead Aquarius. I appreciate that thumbs up. And the rest of y'all in here, thumbs up. <laughs> I need it tonight. <laughs> I have a feeling that my um my thumbnail was a little off-putting because I haven't had very many people come in the stream. I appreciate you being here. I do, all of you. Um, Cypress and Cat and Homestead Aquarius, I appreciate y'all so much. I'm trying so hard to get over that 4,000. Woo, bug just hit me in the head. Um, that 4,000 hour mark. And I got a long way to go. I'm I'm only at 2,400 right now, so I got a long way to go. And you know, I don't really care about the subscriber count because I figure as long as I keep posting videos, it'll come. But those watch hours are hard to get. I wish I would not be so stupid. <laughs> it's all right. It happens to the best of us. It does. It certainly does. Um, my family heard the spiciest language. I try to keep it clean in public. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I try really hard to keep it clean in public. Oh, my goodness. So, I'm here by myself now. Thank goodness. <laughs> Look, let me tell y'all something funny. Okay, it might not be funny to you, but it's a little bit funny to me. Um, my husband's been off every Friday for over a year and a half. Um, he works for a company and they were working nine hours a day, four days a week. Excuse me. And that was just what they worked. And they got paid, you know, I think they got paid for like 38 hours just because I don't know why it was a, a small company. Well, they got they got bought out in January by a corporation from Florida. And starting on August the 2nd, he's going to have to go back to work on Fridays. And in a way, I'm sad about it because that was our day that we could go on date while the kids were at school. And, you know, we could go have lunch without taking the kids with us and that kind of stuff. But in another way, I am so glad because that is one more day a week that I will have to myself. And I don't know if y'all are like this, but the older I get, the more peace and quiet I've got to have. And I'm really looking forward to it now. I'm, I'm looking forward to him having to go to work on Fridays because I spend Monday and Wednesday with my grandbabies. I have Tuesdays and Thursdays to film and work on YouTube stuff. And then he's home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with the kids. And so I, I feel like it'll give me another day to be able to be productive on my channel because I'm really, I really want to kind of grow the channel a little bit. But um, I don't know. Are y'all like that? Do y'all need time to yourself and peace and quiet and, Relief from hot flashes and <laughs> y'all, this is so funny. There. No, 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 don't put her in timeout. There. Okay, nobody's in timeout. I just hit the wrong button accidentally. Um, have you ever seen ads on Facebook or YouTube that say, Would you like to work for more money and something like fire your boss yeah I mean I've seen them but I don't pay too much attention to them why why are you asking <laughs> yeah Grumpus you've been having hot flashes too honey <laughs> you know you haven't had a hot flash but they are kind of rough they, they really are um 
thankfully I don't get very many of them. Um, I know a lot of women who are in a lot worse shape than I'm in and they deal with them on a quite regular basis. Okay. What is wrong with you? Come on, stupid computer. Look, y'all, my computer has done become possessed. There. The introverted empath in me needs my retreat time. Uh, yes, I like my alone time too, Homestead. I really do. I treasure it. Kat says, um, my husband works from home and my oldest son still lives at home. He has autism and is home all the time. My poor... I bet it is. I bet. Well, and that, you know, that's what my garden is for me too, Kat. My garden is my peace and quiet. And before Zeta came along, this porch swing was. But I don't know if you can see this. Let's see. See how the, that was the top of my porch swing. It used to have a cover over it. And I just love sitting out here in the evenings. Um, when the sun was going down or even in the afternoon because I had shade over me and um, Zeta tore up the top part of it and I've been wanting to get a new one but we've been trying to improve the garden and I've got a sweet 16 party that I'm throwing for my daughter at the end of the month and I just didn't really want to go and spend the extra money um, come on up Grumpus Let's see. I put the link in there for you. So when you're ready, um, hang on just a second, guys. If you do go click on them, if I had a job been seven months in and over time you can make money with only two hours working on your Is that right? I just might have to do study about that. I'll click on it and check it out. Um, I hate to tell you, Gulf. Um, Laura, you never had a hot flash? That's amazing. Oh, cat. Yeah. <laughs> I think every fence in Long Beach went down. My oldest daughter lives on the west, no, on the east end of town. And... She had to get her whole fence replaced. Well, then my other daughter lives up uh, between Biloxi and Gulfport, and it's north North Biloxi. And um, they had to get their whole fence. Both daughters had to get their roof replaced and their fences replaced. And my old or the the one that lives in Biloxi. She still hadn't gotten hers replaced yet, but it needs it. Um, no hot, but yeah, she is lucky, ain't she, Cypher, or Cat? She's stinking lucky. And, you know, honestly, I don't get them very often during the day. What I get more than, I guess it's still a hot flash, but I get night sweat, something terrible. And it'll wake me up invariably every single morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. I wake up, and I'm so hot that I can't even hardly breathe. And um, I have to get up. I have to get in the shower. I have to change my clothes because it's just gross, you know. But I guess that's just all comes with the territory. I mean, I'd rather do that than go through puberty again. <laughs> Wait, I held on it one ad for a year, kicking my, we're not doing it over, yeah, I get that. Well, especially when you find out something's profitable for you, and you're like, why didn't I do that five years ago, ten years ago? Look, y'all, if I'd have started YouTube when YouTube was first a thing, when I was young and cute and didn't mind wearing a little cleavage, I'd have been a millionaire by now, y'all. For real, been a millionaire. But, um, my mom had the operation. She never had a hot flash either. Ha! Ha! Ugh. 
No, not good times, Scott. That's crazy. Not good time. <laughs> That's another thing I can't enjoy a shower because the as above me plays in the water. Oh, don't tell me she'll cut on the hot water so yours cuts off. Or lowers your water pressure and stuff when you're in the shower. That would piss me off. That would make me really angry. Oh, there he's Grumpus. I'm sorry, Grumpus. No sweat. How y'all doing tonight? Okay. Hang on. All right. I How y'all doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? I just walked in the door. How was your dinner? Oh, it was great. Awesome. Awesome. Where'd you eat? I want to know all of it. I can't go out to eat for two more weeks. Well, I had, there's a little place up the street for me called Krabby Daddy's. Uh-huh. So I had, uh, I mean, you want me to tell you what all I ate? I'm yeah, I want to hear it all. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to hear what Mrs. Grumpus had, too. Well, she wasn't with me tonight. That's that's why I ate too much. <laughs> I had, uh, See, I had she a half. She would have put the brakes on you, wouldn't she? She probably would have. She probably. <laughs> I had a dozen raw oysters, a half dozen fried oysters, some fried shrimp, and a catfish with fries. <laughs> oh, dear God, that sounds amazing. It was pretty good. Oh, that sounds good. Cypress said, no, it goes hot, cold, hot, cold. Oh, no, Laura, that's ridiculous. She, Laura's having a neighbor problem. Who oh, yeah? She believes is listening in to all of her phone conversations. She's messing with the water pressure and the hot and cold water when she gets in the shower. This woman's 70 years old and is messing with Laura. And might, might be time for a new mailing address. That's what I'm thinking, too. That or a... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of lead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a little lead in the water. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, Laura wants to know, did you kiss your wife before you got on this laptop? No, I got lucky. <laughs> She's already asleep. <laughs> She's already asleep? Yeah, she said she had a rough day. She, I had to go to the grocery store. Yeah. And uh, she didn't want to go. I said she was going to bed. And for me, uh -huh. I was on my own for supper. And that was the wrong thing to tell me. Oh, well, she just gave you carte blanche to go wherever Man, you want. I got a hall, pla hall pass like you wouldn't believe. Heck, Yeah. Heck yeah. I wish my husband give me one. <laughs> I'd go, you know what? I think I would go. I would drive all the way to Jacksonville, Florida and go to Patty's Italian restaurant. You drive that far for Italian? You darn right. I would. And, or I would go to Fernandina beach and I would go have some, uh, potato soup and a bread bowl at the local Irish pub down there. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best potato soup I'd ever eaten. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Okay, my final answer. My final answer, y'all. I would go to Key West and hit up Pepe's on Caroline Street. Yeah, best I'd probably go anywhere in Key West. That was the best meal I have ever had in my entire life. And all it was, was mahi with a black bean salad and something else that I, that was not memorable. And the best unsweet tea I've ever drank in my whole life. But it was a delicious meal and I'll never forget it. And I don't know if it was because I was super hungry or super hot or just all of the ingredients came together to make me mem remember that for the rest of my life you had one of them hungry flashes uh, apparently <laughs> um what's homestead saying i wish i was on the gulf right now we just got y'all thunderstorms from this <laughs> hey the thunderstorms haven't left no they haven't left us either but uh um, we had a, we I'm had sure it real bad this afternoon more. we're gonna have it tomorrow yeah we are <laughs> I may have to get a video in maybe around September. <laughs> well, that's why I'm doing this tonight. I was going to do a little walk through the garden earlier. And because I have a whole lot of solar lights out here that 
they light up the walls of the house. They light up this fence back here. They light up the fence over there. And all of the garden beds have at least eight bulbs, you know, in them. And it looks so pretty out here at night. It's almost like an enchanted garden or something. Well, wherever and, you're at right now, it looks very nice. Well, thank you. This is um, the south end of my property. And Poppy put this little reed fence up for me. Look, I'm going to be real quiet. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Just It's I just us. I don't really like looking at my neighbor's yards very much because they're kind of gross. <laughs> and we live in a – we did this on purpose, and sometimes we regret it. But we're going to stay here because it's saving – we're, we're, we're saving – so much towards retirement by staying in this place. And I mean, like we're banking over half of our income. That's great. And, but the neighborhood that we live in is not what I'm used to. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and it's loud sometimes. And I really don't like looking at the scenery around me. So he put these up so that I didn't have to. There you go. And I've got my porch swing here, and I love my porch swing. Um, now, what we're going to do next spring is we're going to do the same. Well, we're going to use like that tennis court fencing that's six feet tall, and we're going to put uh -huh. it all the way across the back of the yard. And that way, because, I mean, you can get 50 feet of it for 100 bucks. Yeah. And, and we're just going to get um, – landscape timbers and put them in because you know this is not going to be a permanent solution so that's the way i'm going to handle it and it makes me happy and as long as i can have my privacy back here i can live here for as long as i need to that's the way i am i moved to the back and i don't i don't have to see anybody across the street right right and um eventually poppy and i are going to get some land and have I don't know. We, you know, we're kind of torn, Grumpus, and I don't know how. What? What do you? What is your opinion on this particular oh dilemma? <laughs> I want to be in the woods. I want to be so far away from people that I don't have to listen to nothing if I don't want to. I don't have to engage with people if I don't That's want the to. The way I am. Um, the older I get, look, I wish that I had known that about myself twenty years ago, because if I did, well, and. The caveat is I have children who need to socialize and be at school. And that is the reason we moved to a neighborhood because I didn't want the children to be so isolated that all they had was me and my husband. Um, I wanted them to be able to make friends and to, you know, go down the road with it. But here's the thing. After all these years of being in a neighborhood there is only one person that I will let my 15 year old daughter go to her house without my, without me going with her. I don't let my 15 year old daughter walk to the bus stop by her house, by herself. Because it's just, it's just too dangerous. And I know, we're in. well, and I live in a relatively safe little beach town. Nothing really happens here except the occasional somebody breaks in a car. And there are some drugs here, um, but if you, you don't go, if you don't go looking for it, it's not going to come and get you. You know, you got that. You got that no matter where you go. Exactly. And um, so anyhow, that's our one option is to go get a, some acreage. My dad. Oh, my God. My dad has 22 acres up in South Georgia. And it's the most beautiful piece of property I've ever seen in my life. Half of its pond. He's got. Well, I call it a lake because that's how big it is. It looks like a lake. It's probably 100 feet across, but it's at least 400 feet uh, oh, nice. long. It's beautiful, beautiful. Um, he has landscaped it because that's what he does. He loves doing that kind of stuff. Um, he's got a couple of horses. He had some cows over at his brother-in-law's house. But I'm telling you, I just when I go there, I just sit outside like this and just lay there. It's, he's got a back porch that's probably 12 feet deep and 55 feet long. Nice. And 
that's where everybody hangs out. And then, you know, you can walk down the steps of the porch and go straight down to the lake and fish. Now, he won't let you eat the fish. You got to come <laughs> back. But um, I was just telling him the other day, I said, Daddy, I think I'm going to order you some koi to go in that pond. <laughs> <laughs> Because he would love that, you know, just the, just because they're beautiful. Yeah. And my dad, he'll feed anything. My God, he's, he, he Tell him he I'm has, on my way. <laughs> he, I know, right? <laughs> um, my brother, on the other hand, lives around the corner from my dad and has over 400 acres of pine tree forest. And then my other brother lives next door to them. Let me let me take that back. He doesn't live there. He has a few properties. Um, his main residence right now is in Maryland. But he bought my parents' old home in Lake City, Florida. And he also has a home in Georgia. Oh, and they have a place um, in Atlantic City. But anyhow... Um, I don't know how much acreage my brother has, but it's mm. but it's right next to my dad's acreage. But I, I don't know. How, look, in my opinion, an hour away for relatives is plenty, plenty close enough. That's just me. It's close enough to visit, but uh, far enough away they don't want to come too often. Right. <laughs> and, you know, my daughter lives. Okay, I live at one end of town and my daughter lives at the other. From one end of town to the other takes about five minutes, and that's it. You're you're in uh, Gulfport, right? No, I'm in Long Beach. Long Beach, okay. Yeah, just west of Gulfport. All right, right so, back oh, to Gulfport. It's not very big. No, no, the town I live on. Oh, oh he, hang on, Jules, I'm coming. I'm sorry. She was in prison. There she is. You were in purgatory, Jules. I'm so sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Because, on my feet. You know, that's how I am. Well, Charlotte, I, the ideal for me, I would love to have about 10 acres of woods. Oh, and just yeah. Scout, just scout me out a hole in the middle of it, put a house and a little bit of a yard. And Wait a minute. let, let what Go happens ahead, around sorry. me happen. Yeah, that's what I would like to. But, but then, now... But then reality sets in, and I'm sitting here in a house that I've got paid for. I've been here 37 years. And with that mortgage money I'm saving, I can buy a lot of bob wire and burglar bars. <laughs> and koi fish. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Well, I'll tell you what reality's hitting me is that I'm not going to be young forever. And I done passed young about 10 years ago, maybe 15 and I keep thinking, you know, if something were to happen to one of us, it might be a good thing to be close to civilization and have neighbors who might come and check in on us every now and then. You know, like if they don't see us coming in and out of the house, maybe they should go knock on the door and see if we've fallen and we can't get up. <laughs> you know, and... and so get to one of the next things. <laughs> well, and another reality for me is that I can't drive due to my vision. And in the little community that we live in right now, I have an electric tricycle. Wesley bought it for me for Mother's Day and put electric motor on it. And I can go <laughs> anywhere in this little town I want to go. I can go get my hair did. I can. Hey, best yet, Journey. How you doing, honey? It's good to see you. Thank you for coming. Um, but anyhow, I can go get my hair done. I can go. There's little shops downtown. I can go have coffee with folks if I want to. And that's nice for me to be able to get out of the house and have a yeah. little bit of autonomy. You know? Because anywhere else that I want to go, my husband has to take me. I can't just get in the car and go by myself. So, um... I don't know. And in the town that we want to move to, we're thinking about moving to. Have I done turned everybody off? I hope not. My phone's froze up, y'all. No, we're all still here. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to do, I got, I got a little bit of housekeeping to do here. Oh, there's two of you. 
Yeah, oh, there's gonna be two of me. I'm taking. Lord have mercy. There's two Charlottes in the world. <laughs> Can we, the, I don't think the world's ready for that, sweetheart. We couldn't, we couldn't think it'd get any better. Right. <laughs> buckle up, buckle up. There's two of them. Um, I gotta figure out if y'all want to help me figure this out. I want to back out of the stream. I gotta turn this off. Is it off? Okay, my mic's muted on that one. I need to figure out how to back out of the one on the phone and kind of redo it. Uh, because my screen froze up. Was the stream is hosted off your phone, right? It is. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you'll lose your stream if you turn that off. It's okay then. I but I'll just um. I'll just look at the chat from. I'm gonna remove myself. So. Basically, my camera is still streaming. Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to remove myself. So there you go. Only one of me now. Yep. And. I missed that other one already. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. And now I can still see the chat on my computer. That's the way I'll do this. But you can't see You can't see the, the screen? It's yeah, all locked well, up? The screen on my phone is locked up, but the one on my computer is not. Oh, okay. So I'll just have to do it this way for right now until my phone decides to quit being a bozo. But anyhow, in the um, in this community and the other community, I'll be able to go anywhere I want to. The other community has a country club and a um, golf course and um, shops and grocery stores and all that that I could go to. Uh, um, and here too. I mean, we don't have a country club here, but that's okay. I mean, I really like being a half a mile from the beach. That's fun. Yes. And not because I swim, but because I just like to go down there and look at it. But if I go out in the woods somewhere, I know I'll be at peace and I won't have to deal with any neighbors. That's a little bit scary to me too. So we're juggling with that, that decision now. Well, everything has a trade-off. It does. It does. You're right. And I just have to figure out which one is more valuable to me. You yeah. Know? Well, at my particular point in life, uh, debt-free is the most important thing for me. And see, that's where we are. I don't, I don't want to go back. I don't either, ever. We it took, paid it took off me a lifetime to get here. <laughs> yeah, we paid off every debt that we ever had when he got out of the military. And now if we can't afford to pay cash, we don't need it. There you and go. we've been living that way for 11 years. And it's been yeah. wonderful. And, you know, there's sometimes, you know, I want this or I want that. But then I keep thinking, do I want that payment? No, I do not. That's right. That's no, exactly right. So we, we did that, like I said, 11 years ago. And we've never turned back. And it's been great. It's very uh, liberating. Mm, mm -hmm. Yes. And well, now we did have a home. That was the one debt we did have. But when we sold that, we don't have that debt anymore either. Yeah. So we're good. Yeah. Um, and we will probably, I don't know if we'll pay cash for a home or if we'll use it for a tax benefit. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with that. That's, that's going to have to come later. <laughs> I got it. I got to raise these two kids before I think about that. That's right. I told them, I told my kids the other day, my son is 12. And his favorite thing to do is sit on the video games and chat with his friends. And the morning, uh, oh yesterday gosh. morning, I told him, I said, look, you do not get on that game in the morning until the dog is washed, her crate is cleaned. The cat litter box is taken care of, and the dishwasher's unloaded. Do you know, little man, first time he's ever done anything like this. He got up that morning, he unloaded the dishwasher, he washed the dog, he took care of the crate, and he emptied the cat, and was sitting there playing the game when I got up. And I looked at him and I said, little man, <laughs> thank you very much for doing what I asked you to do. And now that I know you can, <laughs> we're going to have some fun. 
because yeah. starting today, you get to learn how to be self-sufficient so that by the time you're 18, I don't have to be legally responsible for anything about you. And you will be able to know that you can go out on your own and take care of yourself. I said, now, when it comes to money, that's a different story. Because, you know, young people, I think, have a harder time in this world today than we did when we started. I really believe that. Um, it's just a different kind of hard. It, it is a different kind of hard. I don't think it's I, any harder. It's just different. It, yeah. And um, yeah. But I think financially, things are so crazy for these kids. Um and you and know they need to be taught they need to be taught early. Right. I mean, right. I mean too many too many kids go out on their own. They they don't have the first bit of knowledge on, on how to how to do a budget or how to juggle with your income and live on your you know or even how to show up to a job on time. You've got uh I mean you've got credit guys hawking credit cards on the college campus. Exactly. And have to high school poor kids in debt before they even graduate. Exactly. Well, and not only that, but they're graduating with $100,000 worth of stinking student loan debt. That's right. Which is yeah. insane. I told my kids, yeah. you do, and I here where I live, <clears throat> if you're in the band for four years, you can automatically go to the first two years of college completely free. So that's what I'm encouraging them to do because yeah. I said, there's no reason to start your life off in debt. And unless a college wants to pay you to go to their college, then you don't need to go. You know, as far as living there and right, tuition right. and everything. Um, I said, there is no re It doesn't matter where the diploma came from. As long as it says bachelors, when you walk across that stage, then you're going to have a job. Well, and, and even look, and let's face it. All that paper does is get you a good interview. That's right. And not only foot that, in the door. but I know plenty of folks, even today, concrete workers, mason workers, welders, plumbers, who are doing great. Oh, yeah. Doing trade work. And if that's what they want to do, more power to them. I, nope. I would encourage them. Nobody, nobody wants to do a trade anymore. Everybody wants to sit at a desk. Well, I t <laughs> today... A mosquito bit me on my shoulder back here, and my shoulder swelled up about this big, and it was itching like nobody's business. And I told Wesley, I said, would you please scratch my back? And he saw it, and he was he was rubbing it with his hand like this, but I thought he was scratching it because that's what it felt like. And he says, I said, stop it, you're hurting me. And he says, I was just rubbing it like that. I said, that wasn't your fingernails? He said, no. <laughs> and I looked at my son. I said, get an office job, son. Trust me on that. <laughs> Trust me. Oh, Grumpus, I wanted to tell, did I, did I tell you that I got my water lily? I heard lily at the restaurant, but I couldn't, I couldn't really hear what you, so you got it in, huh? I did. I did. did and I got did it, it come planted. Did it in bare root? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, it did. And, um, I'm not sure if I planted it the right way. I'm hoping I did. I just used the soil that was in my garden and I put it in it there needs. and I did it at the 45 degree angle and yeah. up against the, you know, the side of the pot. And I wrapped the roots kind of in a circle around and I didn't bury the crown, but then I put a few pebbles on top to keep the, dirt from coming up out while I was dunking it. Right. Cause you need, you really need to put it in a really, really heavy clay. Heavy I don't clay know sauce. where to get any. Do you know where I can get something like that? Where you're at? I don't everything you, around you, Sandy. Yes. Yes. But if you put enough rocks and stuff on top of it, it, it it'll grow through it. Do you think it'll uh, see? That's what I was concerned about because I thought these heavy rocks, might prevent, um, you know, the root, the, the new branches. And right. And I put, I had rocks, I had rocks about the size of red potatoes on top of mine. Oh, okay. Well, mine are about half that size. So they'll be all right. Cause I, I had to put heavy rocks on because the koi, the koi would just Up drill down everything. through the rocks. 
mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just make a mess of everything. Right, but, right. But yeah, if you got it down underwater without without everything floating out of it, you're you're good. It did fine under. Yeah, well, a little bit floated up, but nothing that I couldn't net out. You know, and um, now I want to know how long does it take it to bloom, or do I have to wait till next year for it to bloom? Oh no, no, it it I I I'd be shocked if it didn't bloom this month. Seriously? With, I mean, the water's good and warm. It. Oh yeah. You got yeah. A, you got a hardy lily, so it, it's. You'll probably oh, see. Wait. You'll be you'll be surprised how fast the uh, the leaves come up, and start I, spreading well, out. I'll tell you this. I just planted it night before last, and I got up this morning. I came to look, and I tell you what. I thought that there was a bloom coming up, like. A few inches under the water, but uh, it's a leaf that's rolled up. It's a new right. leaf, is what it is. Looks like a tobacco leaf coming up. Yes, yes. Yeah. And um, now these leaves on this one, I don't know what all of them look like, but they're beautiful. They're yeah. green, but they have on the underside of them, they kind of have little spots, red spots. Uh huh. And I don't know, is that? Please tell me that's not a disease. No, 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 no. There's there, there's a lot of different different ones out there. That's not a disease. It's okay. Well, probably, they are probably beautiful. have a red stem too. Yes. Yeah. That's why I thought it was a bloom coming up because I saw the red color under there. Yeah. And I'll bet you. Is, I'll bet you have a bloom this this month. Oh, I surely hope so. God, I hope so. I'm so excited. I can't hardly see. Oh, look. <laughs> hey, y'all. My phone unfroze. That's wonderful news. <laughs> um well i think that's pretty cool I, I'm, I'm anxious to see how it looks oh i am too I, I actually tried to to show the video of it in the beginning of the live stream because i was so proud of it but it really you can't really see it because the lighting and everything was kind of yeah. off um but i'll come out here tomorrow and do some video on it because i'm just super tickled with it <laughs> i was absolutely blown away by how big it was it probably has if i had to guess it, i'd say 10 or 11 leaves on it fully grown leaf you got it from lily ponds right i did i did yeah, they, they, they send out good stuff it was enormous I, and like i said i thought i was just going to get you know a couple of leaves and some roots <laughs> this thing is really big in fact I put it in the middle of the pond and it probably already takes up a third of the pond. Yeah. Yeah. It'll go to, it'll go just, to the edges. Well, I believe that by February of next year, I'm going to have probably two water lilies <laughs> and a, a three by eight foot pond instead of this little miniature one. No, I might that, have three water lilies. <clears throat> When that water when that water starts cooling off in the fall, uh -huh. that that thing will stop growing and kind of pull itself back underwater. Okay. And once it does that, it's trying to go dormant, and you need you need to make sure it doesn't freeze. Okay. okay. You can leave it in the water as long as it doesn't freeze. It won't freeze. Nah, that water never gets that cold here. Yeah. Okay. I'm, well, unless some freak thing like what happened in Texas happens. Right. You know, but we've had one ice storm since I moved here, and uh, I don't even think my chickens' water froze back then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now they're they're pretty hardy. I mean, they'll 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 stop growing in the winter time, and you'll know it's spring as soon as that water warms up. It starts coming back. Because it'll shoot back. all up. Yeah. Seem like overnight. I'm so excited. I, I really appreciate you turning me on to that because I never thought I was going to be so excited over a stinking plant. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, a whole new world of water gardening? Yeah. And, and in fact, there's I a lot a, of, there's a lot oh, of things yeah. will grow in the water. You can, you can put irises, you can put uh, marginal plants where you can just plant them in a pot and just set the pot right at the edge of the water and, and, and have half the pot in the water. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that will grow with wet feet. That, 
you know, I'm used to growing vegetables and they don't like whipped cream. <laughs> and this is just something totally new to me. Um, I am going to get a few more goldfish to go in the, the pond. That would be nice. I believe that Leo's a little bit lonely. He's yeah. a, a white fantail goldfish and he's a, he might be the size of my hand. Uh huh. Um, but all of his brothers and sisters got eaten last winter. And I'm not sure if the cat got them or if some birds got them. Oh, but, um, it may have been birds year, where you're at. Huh? I, I, it may have been, may have been birds where you're at. I have, oh, chased, I have chased blue herons out of my pond several times. I've chased them out of this yard before. Yeah. Um, no, I take that back. I don't know if they were blue herons or if they were some kind of crane. Well, it, it, but it, it really makes you feel bad. You see a thing fly off with $300 koi in its mouth. Oh my God. I would die. I would no. die. Um, that is another thing. <laughs> I don't know if I would be able to put koi in an eight foot by three foot tank. About 300 gallons. So I think I might could get one in there. Maybe one. That that'd be pretty pretty tight for it because they get pretty it would big. Be. And I know that my dad had some in his pond that were like twenty four thirty inches long. Yeah, that's they were not enormous. Unusual. And um and and I do realize that's normal, but um I would like to have just one. And I told my husband, I said, I wonder if the landlord would have a problem if I built like a two thousand gallon tank. <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, I know how to do masonry work. I could do, you know, like a concrete pond or something. Now, you can also look into, uh, if you like the goldfish, you know, they got shabunkins out there. They're kind of blue oh, they, and orange yeah. and stuff. Now, they, you know, you don't have to worry about them over overcrowding your pond. That right. That some color out there. It surely would. And also, um, I was looking at Wantanai <clears throat> goldfish just the yes. other night. Um, and also some fancy goldfish, but you can't really put those in the same living environment. <laughs> Poppy said he's got the package running on fumes, getting fuel. Of course he is. <laughs> I told y'all it would take him an hour to get back for a 10 minute drive. Well, he, he might've thought he had a hall pass. <laughs> hey, let me tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old to be bothered with it. <laughs> um, no, he went to pick our daughter up from uh, her babysitting gig. She got paid again tonight to babysit cats. Nice. Cats. This is the third time in a row that she's babysat cats. And it's a little freaky to me. I'm like, Sound like a good gig to me. Well, it is. And she gets pizza too. <laughs> but, and, and she's tickled to death with it. Well, and I'll tell you another thing. Her sister told her that whatever she has in her savings account by the party on July 31st, that she would match it. Ooh. And Gutsy so bet. far, Little girl's got about 230 bucks in her account. <laughs> ah, that's a gutsy bet for sure. It is a gutsy one, but that's what she told her. She said, I'll match whatever you save by the party. And uh, so Poppy and I are going to get her. Um, we're probably going to end up getting her a battery for her car because it needs it. And um, with her money, she'll have enough money to put brand new tires on. it, And then it'll be ready to roll. There you go. Well, Daddy, uh, he's going to have to get the gas out of the tank and, you know, flush the tank and everything. But other than that, because the car's been sitting a while, mm -hmm. don't drive it anymore. I mean, it's only one of us can drive, so we usually take the truck because it's got better air conditioning. <laughs> but um, we're going to let her have that car. And now, mind you, we bought that car when she was about three months old. And now she's going to be driving the stinking thing, which is 
kind of gets me a little emotional. <laughs> Because at the end of August, she'll be eligible to go get her driver's license. And that's a little scary thing. Grow up pretty fast, don't they? Oh, God, Grumpus, they do. And I knew it, you know. When I had her, my oldest daughter was 19. So I was in a weird position that I already knew how fast the time was going to go. Oh, yeah. Except that when you're 40, the time from 40 to 56 is a lot faster than from 30 to 40. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> you know, it, I didn't realize that time warp was going to happen and it was going to speed up. Um, Laura said her stepdaughter opened a kid account at the bank to learn how to manage money because her mom <gasps> would steal it if left at all. Oh. God. Well, hey, she learned how to manage it, right? She managed it right out of the house. That's pretty smart. Right move. the heck out of that's what I'd have done too. Somebody was stealing my money. <coughs> I just I can't even imagine doing that to one of my children. <coughs> <coughs> Jules, you doing all right over there? Yeah, I just have been sick, so I'm not I'm feeling sorry. so hard. But thanks. I'm just listening. Okay, okay. Um, but I'm very, boy, we are having, everything's coming down to the wire with this big old shindig we're throwing. And Violet just went and bought her dress today. And she come home with a brand new pair of Doc Martin boots. Oh, Lord. I don't know if she's wearing the boots with the dress. If she does, that's going to be a little weird. But, you know, kids. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, those, the, she bought platform Doc Martin. So they're like this high and boots, like combat boots on top. Weird. <laughs> That's the style now. So I, mm, but um, the dress she bought is absolutely beautiful. It looks like it was made just for her. And it's navy blue and it has little tiny spots of glitter. Like, like a hint of glitter, you know? Uh -huh. and, um, it's beautiful. I, I, she put it on and I almost cried. You know, like the day you see your daughter put a wedding dress on. It. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I had two of those happen already. So. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I got the cake taken care of. I got the DJ taken care of. Now all I got to do is buy her. I'm buying her some pearls for her 16th birthday. And um, got to do that. And then I got to get all the food. And we're done. So all we have to do is wait until that Friday, decorate everything, and wait and have a party the next day. So I'm excited. So how many weeks away is it? Mm. It's on the 31st. So oh, that's okay. what? Two weeks? Getting close. Yeah, it's getting really close. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I hope, I hope, I hope. But even, you know, even if it, even if it doesn't turn out great and, and the way that I envision all of this happening, it's still going to be a great time. And I think that she'll have a great time. And as long as the people that she cares about shows up, that's all that's important anyway, you know? She'll have great memories no matter how it yeah. happens. And that's what I wanted. That's really the only reason I did all this so that she could remember it for the rest of her life. And she will. In fact, my middle daughter just bought herself a brand new Jeep and it's um, the color called Snazberry. Snazberry. Yes, it is gorgeous. It's kind of a reddish, a purpley red, uh, a purpley. It, sounds cool. You know, the crayon color red violet. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of because it's more red than purple, but um, it's got the, you know, you can take the top out of it. Heck, you can take all of it off doors and everything. But she was talking about um, having, having Violet make a grand entrance and she would put her in the Jeep and have her sitting on the top. 
<laughs> and pull into Erica's backyard and have her daddy, you know, help her out of the Jeep and stuff. So I think we're going to do a grand entrance thing like that. I think it'll be great. I just want her to be the center of attention for like two whole minutes, just every, all eyes on her, you know? So I think that'll be really cool. Sound like you got a good plan. I hope so. I hope so. I'm, I, I'm thinking about videotaping it, but I'm not sure. No, you should. You think even, so? Even if you don't walk around with it, just put a camera on a tripod and turn it on. That's a great idea. Yeah. And that way uh, you'll have something because you right. will look back one day and wish you'd done that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Grumpus. I really do. Uh, oh, I hate seeing her grow up. I hate seeing both of them grow up in a way, but in another way, <laughs> that, that I'm kind of excited That empty to nest be... is kind of nice. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm thinking it probably is. <laughs> it's, it's a nice it's a nice goal to shoot for. <laughs> right? Especially after being a parent and being responsible for somebody for going on thirty six years now. <laughs> I'm just You've paid yeah. your dues. It's time to move on down the road. It, it's time for me to be able to just take a trip. Even if it's down the road for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you. Um, I found these. Um, oh, shoot. Can can you see them okay? Uh, I can't read the top. You got. It's a daylily. It's called blackberries and cream. Oh, okay. And th the outside, the, the light area is pink. And the uh, center and the edges are like a blackberry color, kind of purpley. But I am so excited to plant this thing. I've got two bulbs in here. Have no idea where I'm going to plant them, but I'm going to get them in the ground somewhere. Yeah. Um, and I've got. I told you I had the red gladiolus. I don't know if they're any good. I bought them like in the early spring, and I never planted them. So uh -huh. I'm thinking about trying to plant them in August and just see if they'll make it through the winter. I had right. one I had one bulb come up out, out of about, uh, I think it's like 40 in the bag. Oh, no. I had one popped up. The rest of them, I think, rotted in the ground. Because of all the rain? All the rain we've had. I think they just <laughs> yeah. rotted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be an issue here, too, because... You know where, I? if you've seen my gardening videos, you know I have a red shed in the backyard. All across the back, up to the chicken coop, and down the entire north side of my property is this deep in mud and water. Yeah. This deep. Um, we can't mow. I've had to weedy all of this garden area just to be able to walk through it. And... I, Poppy was going to come out here today and mow the whole lawn. And I told him, I said, you're crazy. There's no, you're just going to be slinging mud everywhere. Yeah. You're not going to be cutting any grass. It's just going to be ripping it out. Over. Yep. So we're going to see if the weather holds out tomorrow. It doesn't feel like it's going to, I can feel rain in the air right now. I mean, it's not raining on me, but I, you can smell it and feel it, you know? Right. And um, so I think it will probably rain by, by morning. I don't know. Let me see something. Oh, there's a star. Huh. Well, I'm looking at the weather now here, and it's, it's, it's showing rain all the way into next Wednesday. Is it? Yeah. Oh, God. I, I'm just really sick of the rain. I am, too. I mean, we might get... 30 minutes of sunshine and then it'll cloud over again and starting to get a little depressing. It really is. And if, I don't know if you're like me, but if it goes more than about three days without some sunshine, I start to get a little wiggy. Yeah. I need to get out and play. Yes. And, um, yeah, this weather's for the birds and this is, you know, Grumpus, I don't, have you ever seen it like this before? 
No. Me either. I've been down here forty some years. I've never seen I've never seen this much rain consistently. Mm. Mm. Well, I've only been here twelve years. The first year that we moved here, it started raining in November. It was freezing cold and the wind did nothing but blow until March. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration. It was probably February. But I remember asking my husband, what are we doing here? Didn't we move away from Virginia to get away from this crappy weather? And then the sun came out and the sun was out ever since, really. Yeah. Um, this is the first year that we've lived here that I have seen rain so much. I know in June we got 20, 29 inches of rain. I don't know how much we've had in July so far. I haven't, I haven't seen see how, looked to see how much rain we've had, but generally fr uh, February is our rainiest part of the year. And see, usually and then, for us, we get it early like that. And then it's just it just goes from wet to hot for the rest yeah. of the summer. Yep. And well, you don't have the, the breeze from the ocean either, do you? I get a little bit. We're about an hour from the coast. Okay, okay. Yeah, you might get some. But I can't believe how breezy it is tonight. Yeah, or, but well, you're right on the water, so yeah, you're gonna you probably have breeze all the time, don't you? Uh no. <laughs> really? Um there are so many oak trees in our town. The oh, okay. city won't let you cut them down. Um, the people south of the railroad tracks, which is the first four to five blocks from the ocean, they get some breezes. But once you have the tracks and then you come into the business district and then all of the residential areas, you, there's not a lot of breeze most oh, okay. of the time. Um, and again, thankfully... <clears throat> Those oak trees that are all around my property saved this house in in the hurricane in October. Um, I honestly believe that my house was very lucky. We didn't lose any shingles. We didn't have a tree fall through the roof. We had a little bit of a problem with the fence behind the chicken coop. A tree fell on it. But as far as our house and up close to our house, nothing happened. Except That's the great. roof came off of my uh, porch swing. Big deal. But the lady right next to me, a tree fell on her electric, uh, her, uh, you know, the, the line that comes from the road into the house fell on it. She, that poor woman, didn't have electricity for like three months. It was oh, terrible. Gosh. Uh, well, and there's reasons for that too, you know, choices. But look who popped in. Who, 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 who? Hang on, hang on. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yep. Ah, Marcel, hey! Goodness gracious alive. Now I got to do this all over again. I don't know if I know how. <laughs> no, I don't want to share nothing. I want to invite. Okay. Co copy. Well, Poppy should be back any minute now. To be honest with you, my mouth's getting a little dry. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to go back in there so I can get a refill. <laughs> there you go. That glass is getting kind of low. It is getting skinny, isn't it? Mm. All right, Marcel, hit the link and come join us, honey. Look, I had a pretty good week this week. How about the rest of y'all? It was peaceful. I got to go to my daughter's house. Other than that, I didn't do anything. And yeah, mine was kind of uneventful. Nothing yeah. bad. Nothing bad happened, but nothing to write home about either. Just well, another week. Sometimes those are good days. Uh, I'm not complaining. You know? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Good God. Oh, my phone is stinking, froze up again. So, long is as it I can. Is it your Wi Fi? 
It probably, I don't know. It could be, it couldn't be. Who knows? Is your anyway. phone, is your phone hooked up to your Wi-Fi at home or is it on uh, like 5G or 4G? Well, it's kind of on both right now. <laughs> okay. I've got both of them on just in case one fails, the other one can back it up. There she is. Let me get her out of purgatory. She's over there dancing. Marcel, Woo! what you dancing for? Hello, hello. Hey. Hello. I'm not in, I'm not in my at, backyard. Marcel? I'm at my mom's house. Oh, okay. oh I'm like. I thought she's at church. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're at church. No, I'm in Corpus, uh, the land of the crazies. Oh. Yeah. What you doing there? Just having a little visit with your mom? Yeah, that's this is my hometown, yeah. uh, Cor Corpus Christi. And uh, so we just hadn't been able to get down and see her. And so now we're here. And I told her her bedroom's right over there off to the side. And my son's in this room right behind me. So you're going to get a glimpse of the teenager when he comes out. We're going to ambush him. Um, <laughs> um, oh, there's, there's Poppy. Do you hear the yeah. truck coming in? So my mom was like, what are you going to do? And I showed her while y'all were going on. I showed y'all to her. And I said, I'm going to chat with these people and drink uh -huh. wine in your living room. <laughs> and she was and like, she said, OK, yeah. he's like, OK, I'm tired. Bye. <laughs> Basically, like, that's great. OK, hey, Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> he's deaf. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> I'm outside in the backyard, Marcel. Okay. See, oh, we switched places. I, I know, but only I don't have a nice porch like you do. I just have this old porch swing and some mosquito lamps and a fan in front of me to keep the bugs off. That works. There's The mosquitoes are so bad here. I thought about trying to sit outside of my mom's, but they are bad here, like swarmy, crazy That's insane. The They're like that here too, Marcel, but... Um, say hello, Poppy. Hello, Poppy. <laughs> what am I sitting on? I don't know. What are you? <gasps> Stupid You're cigarettes. You're sitting on my smokes. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And a fuzzy thing. And what else oh, do you stick back here? this is the dead cat. It's not a dead cat. <laughs> say that. That's, That's what they call it. Hey, wait a minute. Don't sit down. I mean, don't sit down. I need a refill. And there, my butt. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, he sat on the microphone. It. Oh. it was just a flash. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, Felt would like you give me some refills, please? Huh? Bring enough for the group. <laughs> he's like, he's pacing nervously on the other side of the house, like. Uh, <laughs> he said he was going to be in it. I know. He will not. Now, this is Charlotte and Grumpus. There he goes. <laughs> Hi. You got the front and the back. <laughs> oh, I love those teenagers. I'm glad yeah. mine's home. She. Isn't it that. funny how when your kids are not in the house, you can't sleep? Yeah, well, it's crazy right now. My little one. The one who, you know, who's always with me until I finally get her to conk out. She is my constant shadow. It's right. been strange for me because she's actually stayed with my sister for uh, last night and tonight. Oh, and so nice. I'm down one. And this one just stays back there and talks to his friend on the PS4. Right. And, you know, and then she's gone. Last night, I'm, I'm relaxed now, but last night I kept looking over my shoulder like, I'm forgetting something. Yeah. <laughs> like something's missing. What's going yeah. on here? <laughs> Hi, Jules. Jules popped on and she popped off. Yeah. Oh, well, she's God. there. She says she's listening and she's not feeling very well. My legs are super achy, so I have to lay down and put them up. Right. Oh, no. So I hope you feel better. Yeah, thanks. I'm listening, though. <laughs> and the, the weather's been weird. Does that affect your legs? Yes. Oh, God, yes. Bit. Yeah, my mom like suddenly uh, had a really bad pain in her leg today, and that's what she said. The weather's going to change. Yeah. So how's everybody been? Has a? I'm sorry, I'm so late. Oh, it's okay. Rumpus, tell her about your wonderful dinner. 
Oh, I just I, I got a hall pass, so I went out and got something to eat a little while ago. Ooh, where'd you go? There's a little little place a couple miles up the road called Krabby Daddy's. Oh, that sounds good. Seafood. So I had uh I was embarrassed to tell how much I ate, but I had a dozen raw oysters, <laughs> a half do, half dozen fried oysters. I had some fried shrimp and some catfish and fries. Oh my god, I <laughs> love oysters. I do too. I left sparks on the plate when I was eating too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way to eat oysters right there. <laughs> I'm gonna try that next time I go down to Bacchus on the beach. I like oysters on the half shell. With a, the, you know, the traditional way with a little bit of lemon, a little bit of horseradish, a little bit of Tabasco. Oh, yep. yum, yum, yum. What are you doing, dear? Oh, I see. I'm not drinking alone tonight, huh? Well, I don't have to drive anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Oh, when we first got on, he was drinking coffee because he had to drive to go get the daughter from her babysitting gig. So now he's back and, yeah, he can stay home now, so. Yay, so that's good. But it, yeah. yeah, it's been kind of a lackluster week here. Um, you know, I did my obligatory babysitting gig for my daughter and got, oh, I, my butt off. I got to hang out with grandkids a little bit. But look, on Tuesday, I thought I was going to have to wring his little neck. And I know that sounds terrible to say, but... <laughs> He did not stop screaming from the time I got there at about 9.30 in the morning until the time I left at 2.30 in the afternoon. Try so this is the, the one that's real attached to your daughter? or like yeah. Won't, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, she's his mama, so of course, but like he can't relax at all. No, and she was there, and that was part of the problem is if he sees her when he's in a mood like that, he doesn't want anybody else. You can't wow. make her. And, um, of course, she's sitting at her desk trying to work, and he's climbing all over her. <laughs> and she's like, Mom, can you do something? I'm like, yeah, I can, but you don't want me to. <laughs> yeah. And she said, well, what are you going to do? I said, okay, fine. I'm going to pick him up, and I'm going to put him in his bed and let him scream his little fool head off. <laughs> That's what works. Yep. And... Well, it didn't. Work. It did time not for, work. Time for a well, double. Because mommy will run and go get it. That she did that twice. That's the problem. Mommy won't that's do what he's told. That's what it was. You need I a double shot her. of Benadryl. Right. Right. Put some gin. I never used Benadryl intentionally to put one to sleep, except for one time in my whole life. <laughs> but boy, she needed it. Yeah. <laughs> And she's 35, right? No. <laughs> she's almost 16. <laughs> well, sometimes I think the 35-year-old still needs it. She yeah, does. sometimes, sometimes uh, my 40-something-year-old husband needs it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'd rather take Benadryl to go to sleep. If I, you know, if I need to sleep, then I would. If I have some pretty heavy-duty sleeping medication because I have bad insomnia. And I refuse to take it until things get really, really bad for me. And then when I do take it, I make sure that he's going to be home for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And that's the only time I take it because I'm afraid that I won't be able to take care of my kids. Yeah. In fact, I'm afraid if the house catches fire that I'll burn up in it because I have, won't get up. Have you tried melatonin tablets? My son takes those. They, they worked. I they take those really sometimes good. when I feel I like to, real uh, anxious. I used to uh, give them to my dogs. Mm. During thunderstorms and stuff? Well, no, I, I used to raise show dogs, and I had some males and a couple of females. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these females would go into heat. And they'll, they'll, my poor boy, he'd cry and until he just lost just, his, yeah. he'd just He'd lose his voice and be hoarse and just miserable oh. for about two weeks. Oh, because he wanted it them girls, didn't he? I'd give him <laughs> melatonin. He'd, he'd zonk right out. Well, he needed a break. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't what he needed. <laughs> <laughs> he needed a break from wanting what he couldn't get. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a, a break. You so needed I, it? 
<laughs> I give him I give him melatonin and I'd have me a, some whiskey or something. <laughs> yeah. Go. Oh my uh, god. The, my neighbor around the block, their dogs, they had he has a full blood male German shepherd. And then another neighbor had a mixed dog, a real pretty mixed dog, and ended up adopting this girl dog, put it over there. Turns out neither one of the animals are fixed. And so they have puppies now. Surprise. But they're so cute. Oh, my God. They had nine, not not just a couple of puppies. They had nine freaking puppies. Oh, and, um, well, I took, they're down to seven now because they, two got home, got homes. But every time we go out for our evening walk, we walk past their fence. Oh, got him again. Oh. Um, we walk past their fence and these puppies come out of their like a covered patio. They have like a little sunroom and mm-hmm. all the puppies run and it's so adorable. And so I finally caught it with my phone. When we walked by, I had my phone ready and I hit it and I like, it's just like a puppy attack. They're just running. It's so darn cute. Aww. But it's like, had, what are they going to uh, do with all those dogs? They're going to be huge dogs. I had basset hounds and you know how vocal they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I ended up one, I don't know how it, ha- well, I know how it happened. It's just bad timing, but I had three litters in two weeks. Ooh. Hi, Laura. And they were like nine. One of them was nine. The other one had six. And I think the other one had eight. Oh, wow. Mm-mm. Um, my brother has a basset hound. Of course, their basset hound is six. Um, but I love that dog. Oh, I did too. They're such sweet dogs. They really are. But you can't show them if they're fixed, so. Right, right. Well, no, he, I don't think. That's their little baby, Grumpus. They wouldn't show him. (laughs) 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 They, that is their children. Um, And we just have an old mutt now. Donna, Donna's an old lady. She's part Chihuahua and part Papillon. Part Grumpus. And part grumpy bonehead. And she's, <laughs> well, she's kind of lost some control of her bladder. So she has to stay in the kitchen or in her crate all the time. And of course, she comes outside a lot. She loves to be outside. Um, but I think she's just getting to the point where, I don't know. When I get tired of cleaning up after her, then we'll decide what to do with her. But until then, we're just going to keep her like she is and get through. Um, well, I'm, yeah. I'm dog. I'm dog free right now, and it's okay. I, I, is it? Yeah, I mean, at, at one time I had 26. Oh, wow. he smoked. Uh, I mean, they was mostly in a rotation. You know, I I would I would have a litter, and and we'd end up selling them and showing them and that kind of stuff. But as they got right. older and the herd got smaller. And finally, after the last one, we had to put the last one down. I I was done for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, well, we we had standard poodles most of our marriage. Yeah. And through the years, we've had four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Opus, Cannon, Ashton, and uh, Jasper. Yeah. And Jasper um, ran out the garage door one day. And I was not aware that the kids, <clears throat> they're not in there, are they? No, I was not aware that the kids had left the garage door open. I thought he just went out into the garage because he did that all the time. Uh-huh. Um, but the actual garage door to go outside was open. And he ended up getting hit by a car. Oh, and no. somebody just left him on the side of the road injured. So, and we called and called him for him for hours and finally Wesley got in the car to go see if he could find him and found him sitting, sitting on the he side was just road. sitting on the side of the road he wasn't smashed I mean well he was but he was, he was able to sit up and he was just yeah. sitting there he wouldn't move so he picked him up and put him in the car and we didn't really realize till we got him home that he was really seriously injured Mm. And I thought that his hip was dislocated. So the next morning, we got him to the vet first thing. And God love him. He had, he couldn't walk. So he, he had pooped all over himself in the house, which is something he would never done. So before we took him to the vet, we had to wash him. And um, it come to find out 
he just really couldn't be fixed. His pelvis bone was in several pieces. Yeah. Oh, his, gosh. It, it was bad. It was so bad. And I just don't... It's been how many years? Six or seven? Yeah. Six or seven years. And I think now we're we're starting to chomp at the bit to get another one. Ooh, but that's, that's hard. It's a hard. That's a hard <clears> call <throat> to make. I mean, you, you know you're going to have to eventually. Yes, but, but it's, he it's, was only 18 difficult. months old. Yeah, he was a baby, yeah. and it was a $3,500 to maybe fix it. Well, yeah. we would have paid the money to fix him if they could have said he'll be okay in the long run. Well, Even you gotta, you, you got to think of their quality of their life. But, yeah, and that's what we're thinking about. And I told Wesley, I said he'll never be the same again. He will be in pain for the rest of his life. And so we decided to put him down, and God, I hated that. He yeah, was my little, my little male. He was my shadow. Mm -hmm. He was uh, eleven, which yeah. is pretty old for any. I mean, he was only, oh gosh, twelve inches tall and oh. 65, 65 pounds. I mean, he's a big, big dog with short legs. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he got tumors real bad, and we had him in a couple of times. They just kept coming back, and it. That was a rough one. <laughs> yeah, Laura makes a good point. I don't have it, but I should get it because my, my animals are getting older. No. The pet insurance. Yeah, that, that, that helps because. Yeah, Laura cause says that she get another pet. Is that what you're saying, Grumpus? Pardon me? Are you saying that the vet insurance helps? Uh, that's, what, that's what Laura's saying. Oh, okay. Okay. You can get pet insurance. Oh, yeah. See, my phone's froze up and I can't. God, this is so frustrating. But I, I feel so bad. I see some of these dogs that, you know, that people have had for so long. And they, got them, they got them strapped onto these little wheels and dragging themselves around and stuff. And I'm thinking, you know, that's, that's kind of selfish. It kind of is, isn't it? I mean, that's just my yeah. opinion. Mm -hmm. But I understand. I, I've told pe a lot of people through the years, if, if you know, when you get that puppy, if you're not prepared to put it down, you shouldn't buy it to start with because you know you're going to outlive it. Gina, I'm so sorry I didn't say hello to you. My my phone's froze up and I'm having a hard time looking at my messages, but I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Hi, Gina. Um, hey, Gina. Um. But yeah, we we'll we'll end up getting another another standard poodle. I don't I don't really want to be without one again because it doesn't feel right. It, we just there's something missing in the house, you know. Yeah. It it just doesn't feel like our house anymore because, and it's been that way for years. But we just I didn't want to have another dog until Dinah's gone because we got her right after Jasper died. And it was just an impulse thing, you know, like the cure for a broken heart's a new boyfriend kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw her on the uh, Humane Society webpage, and I fell in love with her instantly. And I still love her, but some days I could just rocket her off to the moon. <laughs> Be because I get so tired of having to clean up after her now that she can't really control herself so much. What kind, of dog, right. what, kind of, what kind of dog was Jasper? Jasper was a standard poodle. Oh, okay. Oh, Big okay. Yeah, he was silver, and he was just the most beautiful, gentle soul. Well, for, oh, so for sorry. me, it's, That's so it's, hard. it's like we were talking about that the empty nest. That goes with pets, too. Yeah. You know, we're, we're at the point to where if we want to take a three-day weekend or four-day weekend, we can just take off. We don't have to worry about you know, putting them in kennels or getting somebody to come over and take care of them. Worried right. about if they get out and, you know, get hit by a car or something. So, right. you know, I'm just, I guess one of these days I'll end up wanting to stay home all the time and uh -huh. it'll be time for another lap dog. Well, I don't know. Do you think train. a standard poodle will fit in the RV? Yes. Not my train this time. Yeah, that's the same <laughs> train. You know it is. <laughs> Hey, it went by your house about two hours ago. Not six hours ago. My husband heard it then. He's still home. Yep, he sure did. 
Oh, that's the one that blows all through town, too. Yep. Darn it. He'll be done in a minute, guys. <laughs> Send him one. my love from Texas. Be quiet. <laughs> you? I know he can't hear me. I'm going to mind melt with him. Shut the front door. That's right, Laura. She kind of takes care of herself. I'm serious. This train engineer, this particular one, it will have to be a long one. From the time he gets to the border of Long Beach all the way down the beach. Oh, no, that cat starts it in Gulfport. Does he? I've been in Gulfport following the train home, mm -hmm. and that guy don't lay off. He just never stops. He's probably watching that air compressor. How much air do I have? Whoa. Yeah, it's crazy. If he lets go when he needs more air, let's build up and just throws it down some more. Oh, there's a dirty so mosquito. He must have air. Now. He's in the past. What? He ain't quite there yet. Marcel, was he that a, a was that a mosquito or a hummingbird? <laughs> I'm just feeling the beat. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a tambourine. Oh. Um, they do. They do, Laura. They do have to blow coming into town, but they don't have to blow through the entire town. What, but what's so funny about that is we can hear it when he starts and we can hear it when he leaves town. <laughs> so we know we blow all the way through Long Beach. It is How many right miles through. is it from the pass to the Gulf Port? Four miles? Something like that. Four or five miles. It's only about four miles across. From one border town to the other border of town. It might be four and a half miles. No. Might be. But, yeah, it's a, it's a short little trip. That's crazy. See, now yeah, I think I feel mosquitoes. Now I think I feel mosquitoes all over me. <laughs> Why? Because. I you inside. Well, I am, but one got in here with me. Oh, my God. I hate it when they get in the house. I hate yeah, it when you're we trying to driving. And you hear a little <laughs> in your ear. So you smack your head and kill it. That's miserable. You know that. <laughs> no, yeah, you we can't drive. smack your head and kill it. Because it flies off before you can hit it. And then it comes back like 45 times and you're up all night. Ridiculous. <clears throat> See, she's just so sweet. They love chewing on her. I'm just old and sour. They don't like me at all. I heard that there were certain blood types like they actually avoid. I'm a and negative I have, of mine. Uh, <laughs> I have a like kind of a rare-ish blood type. I have B negative. Hmm. Um, Do you know my grandson's a B negative? Hi, Patrick. Hey, Patrick. How are you doing tonight? Hey, Patrick. Um, Where is he? Shoot. Yeah, I'm there just plain old boring there old negative, is. so... I mean, Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna refill my glass. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll be waiting on you. I just have boring blood. Everybody's got the same as mine. Well, yeah, you you have normal blood. <clears throat> Not alien blood like you. Yeah, my my kids and my husband all swear that I'm alien because I'm O negative. She is an alien. Ridiculous. Um, there. Patrick, if you want to come on up, I will. The link's in there waiting on you. If, if Completely up to you if you have time. Let me know if you see him because mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to keep my eyes on three different Cypress things Blue here. Cypress said me too. I said, oh, you're O-neg too. Yeah, that's fun having babies, isn't it? A couple of aliens then. Um, When you're O-neg... You have to have shot to keep your blood from attacking your the in utero fetus. And, uh, yeah, that sucks. I didn't feel a thing. Yeah, I know you didn't. <laughs> well, I learned my last two kids are also O negative, so I didn't have to have it with them, which was nice. But, uh, yeah, that was good. Wait a minute. My link didn't go in, did it? I see it. Yeah, it's here. Oh, it's here. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure it was there in case he wanted to come on up. 
Um, Patrick, sorry, there's no food tasting. We're just kind of getting hooted. <laughs> I'm not hooted. <laughs> She's only on number two. She's not hooted yet. I'm only on number two. We're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking well, of which, I need a refresh. Oh well, go go get yourself refreshed. What are you going for scotch? Yeah, for something. something. So, um, who who we got here? We got Jules. Jules, you still around, or did you fall asleep on us? She might be slumped. She she might be. Yeah, she doesn't feel very good. That's a bummer. Um, I'm trying so hard to keep up here. Well, there's seven other people in here. We'll say something, somebody. I know. Hey, if you're in the stream. Go ahead and say hello, please. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you showing up for us. Um, and go ahead and hit that like button if you're enjoying us crazy old folks. <laughs> old? Who's old? You are. I am. Yeah, you look older than me. <laughs> it's all the children. It's all the children. Yeah, yeah. Well. And you. I'm never look. I've done decided something. What? I'm not coloring my hair again because I have earned every one of these highlights of mine, and I'm just gonna keep them. So then I've earned all this. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Hard work. Oh yeah. <laughs> married, but, for, um, married for twenty years and seven kids. Then we have to definitely a lot of work. Right. I'm surprised you haven't killed me yet. I'm surprised I haven't, too. <laughs> Here comes Patrick. Oh, God, I can't see him. Hello. Hi, Hi Patrick. I don't see you yet. <laughs> How you going? How you doing down under? It's all good here. How are you folks going? Oh, couldn't be better. Couldn't be better, except for the rain and the crappy weather. But, but it is nighttime, it is not raining, and we're sitting in our backyard. Oh, you are too. Yeah. But it was now, raining. Where, where, where are in your back guard are you? I'm trying to get a where in relation to your house are you? Um, I'm on the south Where's... side. Um, just between the fish pond and the sweet potato bed. Ah, lovely. Mm hmm Hello, Marcel. I'm actually Hello. I'm actually sitting on the porch swing. That the hurricane tore up, but it's okay. It works. Holding both of us. The only well, part of the tore up was the pretty little awning, but I'm about ready to rebuild it. He did. He told me he's going to rebuild the awning for me. You think I should video? Oh, really? I should video that. Are you rebuilding your I, awning? Yeah. Well, I mean, we all know I'm a big fan of Wesley. I mean, the more he's on screen, the better. <laughs> Look, I've almost got him talked into doing a YouTube channel, Patrick. Well, it's going to be called look, Fix Anything with Wesley. Thanks, Laura. I think what that's a think? great idea. I think it's a wonderful idea. But what am I going to fix? You fix things every, like, at once a week, at least. Mr. Fix-It. Yeah. Look, let me tell you something. When I first met him, well, the first time he ever came to my house, and it um, took three months to find her house. It took three months for me to allow you to find my house. <laughs> <laughs> I had kids. I wasn't going to have some strange guy coming up in my house. You know. Oh, my God. Speaking of strange guys, I've got a story. Go. Um, okay. It's kind of a long one, but I'm going to try to okay. do it as succinctly as possible. No, you All go right. for it. I want details. This isn't about me, is it? <laughs> no, no. This is about like okay. I'm I'm at my mom's house right now, so that's why the background's unfamiliar. But um, uh, so I'm visiting my mom, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what does it look churchy? That's so funny. It does, it does look churchy. Oh, um, my mom has interesting taste in decor, <laughs> but um. And so came down here and I'm in my hometown and my mom, you know, she just had a rough time. You know, she had a bad fall at work and she's 83 and she's been recovering from a bunch of injuries and she's done great. God willing, she's doing fine. And um, but, but she's walking with just a, a little cane and she's out around and she's very, 
she just wants to get through it, you know? So I come home and I take her, we go to the thrift shop. Um, anyway, so I parked under this tree that's over her driveway and the birds did what they did all over my car. And it was an extreme, like it wasn't a little bit, <laughs> like it was terrible. And so Did we were getting out. Yes. Well, it's a, it's a fairly new, newish car. So we're trying to take care of it. But um, anyhow, so we, we were going to go thrift shopping. She wanted to get cookbooks. And so we like to go to thrift shops and look at cookbooks. That's where I have like collected my whole library is at thrift shops. I can stand there for hours like the giant nerd that I am. And um, so we stop at a Goodwill, which is right up the street. And then we pass a gas station that has a car wash. And I said, mom, I'm gonna pull in here, get us a couple of waters, and I'm gonna run through this car wash and get this, this mess off of here, cause it's pretty bad. And um, so run in, get the car wash code. Um, there was a car in the car wash as I was waiting. And I noticed that they moved up and it looked like there was some issue, but I didn't know what it was. And then they pulled through and they left. So I put in my code, right? Nothing happens. The light stayed blue. It never went to green to enter. And I sit there for a long time and then I scoot up a little bit. Like maybe I didn't trip the sensor. Right. Nothing happened. So then I actually pulled into the car wash stall and it never triggered. It never went. So I backed up and tried to enter my code again. And then it wouldn't take my code because I already entered it. And I was like, oh my God, okay, whatever. So I pulled all the way through, went back inside, talked to the clerk. And I said, I don't know what happened, but I put the code in and it's not working. And so long story short, she calls the guy over from there. They give me code. By the time they get done doing all this, it's this was supposed to take 10 minutes, right? <laughs> and um, it did not. And so I go back and get in the line. There's three cars ahead of me, and this one little white car pulls behind me. <sighs> so go through. Everything's fine. Finally, it's our turn. Put in the code. It goes right this time. The light turns green. Ding, go in. And I'm like, okay, whatever. That was just a fluke. It's all good now. So we're sitting there going through the car wash, the little spinny things are going, everything is happening as it should. And by the third pass, there's some spray had gone over the car, right? And it was a multicolored spray, the clear coat or whatever they call it. And then the whole thing stops, like it all stops. And I've got the clear coat on, one of the spinny things is actually resting on my rear view mirror. And I'm like, what the fuck? And um, so my mom's dying laughing at this point she's dying like she's laughing so hard i'm like i'm glad you're finding that this is so like stressful i was like i hate this car wash like with my whole life force i hate this and um so <laughs> and then the lights blinking green like to go like to exit so my son says he's in the back seat he goes mom go you're done you're done i said i'm not done my car is covered in goop i'm not going anywhere and so he goes well scoot up and see what it does and so I scooted up and then as soon, I scooted up like three inches and then the light went from green to red, Doop, stop. And I was like, what the, and it started again and it started rinsing everything off. And then it started, it seemed like it started over but then it had never finished. And so by the time we got a clear shot to leave, I left and I was like, whatever i think we got all the goop off i just thought it was a scary car wash i'm never going there again i'm gonna call as soon as i get a chance and tell him okay well i'm not done yet scary guy right so i turn right and i remember i said there was a little white car behind me waiting and the line had gotten longer since then but so i pull out onto this major street in this town and we're kind of laughing and um my husband had called and he was on the phone and, and then this guy pulls up beside me and in his car and he's pissed. Right. And he's like, roll your window down, roll your window down. And so I was like, I didn't know if he was mad or I'm thinking, Oh, he's a, <laughs> me being me. I'm thinking he's a good Samaritan. I left my wallet on my car. I've got a flat tire or something. He's trying to tell me something. How nice. Right. So I rolled on the window and he goes, you stole my fucking watch. And I said, what? 
and he goes, you stole my wash and we're driving. This is like straight out of a John Hughes movie or I don't even know what. And I said, I didn't steal your wash. And he was like, I saw you, you went twice. You stole my wash. And I was like, I did not steal your wash. I was like, who even does that? And um, he was like, no, you <laughs> went twice. I saw you, I saw you. And I said, okay, listen, I didn't steal your wash. Are you kidding me right now? And I like rolled this up. And then my husband's on the phone. He's like, call the cops, call the cops. And my son's like, <laughs> it was so stupid, right? And then the guy gets behind me. He started following me. And oh, I was like, this is terrifying. And his guy is so freaking out of line. And um, so my, my son's back there with my phone trying to get them non-emergency police and all this stuff. Well, eventually we go a couple miles and this guy just turns off all like peeved. And I'm like, oh, what is even going on? I just want to go home. I'm terrified. <laughs> and um, and uh, then I started thinking about it. Like, that's what happened to me. Like, when I was waiting the first time because the car had gone up, they moved. And then by the time they left, my code wouldn't work. So there's a sensor or something was off inside the car wash. Mm -hmm. And so, but he thought... He, he chased me down. See, my immediate reaction was like, okay, car wash isn't working. I'm going to go talk to the attendant. Right. He chased me down and accused me of stealing a wash. I was like, how do you even do that? <laughs> I was like literally trapped in there. Um, <laughs> That's insane. Well, not yeah. I was like, road raid much? Road well, raid and not much? only that, but why wouldn't his first thought be, oh, Something's wrong with the car wash. I'm going to go see who can fix this for me. Yeah. Instead we, well, of we obviously, somebody. I was like, I stole your car wash. Why the hell would I want to sit through that twice? Right? Right. Yeah. There, there's, a right the there's, a the there's a small chance. There's a small chance. There's a small chance he wasn't uh, all there. Do you know what I mean? And I'm that's thinking you are just a little bit. It's a little bit. Might have been yeah. a little bit out of it, you know? Well, right. there's been so many cases of people, like, pulling guns and all that stuff, and that was my immediate thought. Like, what? Like, what could I even do? Marcel. What could I, what could I even do? Like, what was he thinking I could do for him? Give him his eight bucks back? You know? Well, I'm kind of surprised you didn't whip out your ammunition. <laughs> I don't have a gun. Oh I my mean, goodness, get one. Really? Get one. I'm thinking I'm want, this time. I get a machine gun. Might be time. Get, get a machine yeah. gun. Wow, that's what <laughs> you people are allowed that. You can get a rocket launcher if you want, can't you, over there? Yeah. And then my mom was like, <laughs> get, get one my, mom. <laughs> my mom was like, he might have taken down your license number. I was like, what's he gonna do with it? Oh. <laughs> I'm not even that, from here. That is you know? a horrific story. A horrific story. It, that's that's that legit scary. happened today. And then, and then at some point, the call had disconnected. The last thing I said to Evan was, he because he was like, "Call the goddamn cops! Call the cops!" You know, he's upset. You know, he's not with us. Well, and, sure. Um, I said I am, and I said, "Look, I said I'm gonna call the cops." I said. He goes, drive off, drive off. I said, I already have, but now he's following me. Uh, I'm going to call the cops. I got to let you go. And that's where I left him hanging. And he's, you know, two and a half hours away from us. And then I didn't call him back for like 45 minutes. And then by that time, we'd all calmed down. We told my sister the story and she was <laughs> laughing. And then we went to, the <laughs> next, uh, went to the next thrift store and we're standing in there and I've got six cooks, but six cookbooks in my hand waiting in line to check out at Goodwill and the phone goes off and it's it's Evan and I told Jer uh, Jared my son to answer the phone and um he goes way not to call me back thanks for that he's like the last thing you said was some psycho was chasing you and you didn't even call me back and now you're in line with six cookbooks in your hand and I was like sorry <laughs> oh my gosh that's some crap you on me I would yeah. not. You would do. I wouldn't call you until I was in jail getting questioned as to why I blew his face off. <laughs> but isn't that scary? I mean, that was such an irrational response from that person. 
very irrational. Yeah. Yep. You know Marcel, it seems like the world has become irrational. No doubt. In the past decade. Just the changes that I've seen are... And I'm sure you guys have seen them, too. I mean... Oh, well, the whole know, planet's lost his mind. I, right? I agree. I, I really We're agree. stealing those car washes now. <laughs> All right. common sense look, is gone. Look, look. Next time me and Wesley go to the car wash, I'm going to have him steal one and see what happens. <laughs> Shop it's going to get ugly. I can tell you that. I didn't even know that was a thing. You stole my wash. That was not at all. Like, yeah, not in thinking, at oh, all. He just, he just wants to tell me I have a tail light this out. Yeah. You know? I left my wallet on top of my car. My trunk right. was open. Something, you know. Marcel, next time go to one of those places that you, you go and have a coffee while they do it for you. You don't go through these drive throughs <laughs> Oh, and that's a good that's, idea. Yeah. Those drive yeah, yeah. things don't clean your car properly anyway. Right? Yeah. Well, I, like I said, it, it was not yeah. planned. I just wanted to get the bird poo off my hood. Right. Oh. And then you have to poo. go through all that. It was, and then you know, I ended up with you know enough to write a novel. Right. About chased a psychopath a chased by a psycho. Well, it's a great start to a movie. There's a movie like that um, with Russell Crowe in it. Oh, oh really? Yeah, there unhinged. is. That's right. Unhinged, and it's extremely <laughs> over the top, but it's his road rage movie. Oh my and god, something like that happens, and it just really, and it's a woman, a woman gets uh, involved with this psycho on the road, and just and that's Russell Crowe, and it's just non stop terror. It's, it's a great, oh, it's not a great movie, but it's, I tell you what, it's not, far from it. not really, no, no, it's just a okay. chase movie, and he's a psychopath. <laughs> Right, but, um, and he kills everyone. But the thing is that um, oh. it's probably not not too far from reality, really. Well, this guy, the car he was driving, he had a work logo on the side of his car. This was a work vehicle, and as so much was going on, I saw the logo, like the design of it, but I didn't take in the words, and so I was hoping so hard that either my mom or my son had noticed the word because I totally would have called his employer. I would have gone oh, Karen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, all my son saw was uh, that whatever the business was what had the word blood in it. So maybe like a blood and tissue oh, center right. or, a blood or something like that. I you know, right? Perfect. But um, <laughs> maybe, he, maybe he realized, well, like there's a, you know, it was probably like, like a blood transfusion, a blood bank, something like that. But I'm going to look tomorrow because I would recognize um, the logo if I saw it. But sure, I just did, I never took in the words, you know what I mean? But yeah. there was definitely, yeah. But I called the gas station when we finally got home and we were solo. I called the, the actual gas station and I told them everything. And she was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. And I said, well, anyway the short and the quick of why I'm relaying all this to you is that there's something wrong with your car wash. <laughs> Somebody's going to die. That is really scary, Marcel, uh, and I'm glad nothing washes. bad happened to you. Yeah, um, car washes are overrated. <laughs> yeah. Next time Leave I think the... you probably should just get um, a water hose. Yeah. And... Leave the bird poo. Don't worry about yeah. the bird poo. Oh, it was so nasty. I couldn't do it. I had to get the bird poo off my car. It was it was extreme. It wasn't just a little pitter patter. It was that bird ate some spicy stuff the night before or something. I don't even know why. It was oh man. That bird had a rough night. Upper <laughs> GI issues. Oh dear. Well, all's well that ends well, eh? <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. So how long are you at your mom's place for? Uh, we're going to go home Sunday. Okay. So yeah, she's all so right. We've been here since. Yeah, she's doing great. She's hanging in there. Very yeah, good. Spot. So. And how old did you say your mom was? Huh? What's up? How old did you say your mom was? She's 83. Wow. Mm -hmm. My dad just turned 73 last week. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he is very, very proud of being 73. But he's still running and gunning, too. He, well, falling he, out of trees with chainsaws and all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> uh, there you go. A couple of years ago, young. he calls me up and he says, Hey, uh, you ain't going to believe what I did. So, well, go ahead and tell me. So, he says he was up in this tree with a pole saw or a chainsaw. Was chainsaw. It chains chainsaw. And he was trying to trim the branch the low branches but he was on an eight foot ladder and um he's trimming branches and everything's going great well he gets to this bigger branch and it he needs it to come out so he cuts the branch and it twists and hits that ladder and knocks it out from underneath him thank god he had sense enough to throw the chainsaw away from him <laughs> that's familiar oh, god. Yeah, he lands on his shoulder, and he's injured himself. And thank God it was just his shoulder. I mean, I told him, I said, what the hell are you doing at 70 years old up in an eight-foot ladder in a tree? Are With you a chainsaw. I said, are you so cheap that you don't want to have somebody <laughs> come over and do it and, and pay them? I can understand yeah. that. He said yes. And I said, look, you need to go to the doctor. I'm not going to no doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like last summer, all the extra garden junk that's over there, honey. Mm -hmm. My I wife remember. had a tree that she needed things pulled out, chopped out. I'm like, okay, but you're going to have to pull on it. And I'm up six feet in the air with the pole saw. And she's like, I'll be back in a minute. I, well, I had saw. to pee. Yeah, well... That limb came down and smoked me in that ladder. We were in the yard. yard. <laughs> he comes out and I'm picking myself off the, off the ground. She's like, what'd you do? I'm like, couldn't you have waited until I got out of the bathroom? <laughs> but a man on a mission. I'll tell you what's funny about my dad. He, <laughs> he refused to go to the doctor for like three months. He couldn't even lift his arm up over his head. And finally... It was giving him a fit at night because he'd wake up in the middle of the night in pain. So he goes to the doctor. And the doctor's like, yeah, looks like we might. We're going to send you to physical therapy, but we, we might have. No, he, my dad says, oh, no, we're not even talking about surgery. Yeah, I'm not going to no, allow not, that. Not even going there. But I'm 70 years. At the time, he was 70. He says, I'm 70 years old, and I just fell off an eight-foot ladder. Out. Let me tell you something. My old man, every time I talk to him, tells me to put a shape he's in because he can fall out of an eight-foot ladder and land on his shoulder, and now he can lift it over his head. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, just hire a damn lawn person next time. And I still can't put my hand over my head. And he won't He won't do it. He'll go out there and do that again. You, yeah. you, you, can't, you can't stop them because this is what my father would do. He was right, obsessed yeah. by getting up ladders, and he had countless falls. Oh, jeez. And it ended well, up he, here. I mean, it, you couldn't stop him. Right. And that's the way my dad is. He, he, You can't. Look, you can't tell him anything. Nothing. No, you won't. What else I know? He's, I'm a lot like my father. Yeah. Uh, that's as surprising, far, really. As far as being stubborn and hard-headed, and, and my dad used to tell me all the time, a hard head makes a soft behind. <laughs> In that case, you're as stubborn as an army mule. I might be, but and I got a soft behind too. <laughs> That's good to know. You better quit it. <laughs> nasty, you nasty. You don't have to tell all your business. Well, well I'm glad my wife's asleep because it, it sounds like you're all talking about me. <laughs> 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 she don't need to be here in all this. Yeah, well, I'm as hard headed as they come. I think you're one I've, of these ladder. You're one of these ladder people, are you, Grumpus? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I got a. In fact, I got a tree out front now that she's been fussing at me about getting a branch taken out of way up at the top. Well, it, the last hurricane broke it, mm. and it you're just crazy, refuses, you're crazy, man. You're, it just you're refuses crazy. to fall, and it's about thirty ah. feet up. Oh, yeah, you're, geez. you're not going to do that, are you? I got a twenty. I got a twenty-four foot ladder and a, a ten foot pole saw. I think I can right. reach it. 
<laughs> Good idea. I think I can reach it. <laughs> Good idea, Grumpus. What are you next to the two swim, swim she with said, alligators or something? She said, just hire somebody to cut that. And I said, no, I can get it. <laughs> you know what? He's the foolish. same way, though. Such foolishness. No, no. I, why would you take the, the risk, Grumpus? Why would, why would you take the risk? That's good barbecue wood. Oh, <laughs> God, God. You know, if you allow somebody to cut it down, you can tell them, hey, leave that damn wood right where it's sitting. I'm going to chop it up and use it in my barbecue. No, nah, they yeah, want too really much can. of that. I, I got everything I need to do it. I'll get it done. Oh, Lord. You're, you're insane, Grumpus. I was going to put the truck Just another the day. And put the ladder in the back of the truck and then do it. <laughs> my wife's like, no, you're not. Daddy get it up another two foot. That's right. what he said. Yeah. But look, look was... at, least ha at least have your wife standing at the bottom so she can catch you if you fall. No, I, I will all not I hear is I told you anybody. so. Take pictures and laugh. <laughs> I told him oh, you... Look. This man has what had a hip replacement. Yeah. I've, I've got a plan. I'm going to tie myself to the tree. <laughs> oh not, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Then you'll be dangling. Ah! <laughs> now, look, when he had a hip replacement, how many years ago? 12. 12. It's I been feel the video years. coming. <laughs> Ten, eight, I, I tell you what, that would be a good video. <laughs> So he, he gets this hip replacement, and about 18 months later, he tells me, I want to get a motorcycle. Oh, no. Uh, well, look, we're, and I we're, said. We're, I Wesley's said, at another level, though. You know, he's like. Uh, <laughs> 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 so he's said, like Batman. Hey, he's like Batman or something, you know. Well, wait a minute. I, I said to my husband, fine. You want a motorcycle? Get one. But if you wreck, you better die. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. you saying that. Before. How nice is my wife? No, I have all, I have taken care of this man through countless hip surgeries, countless Ooh, other four. surgeries. What? Four hip Only surgeries? four hip surgeries. Look, I am grateful that it has been twelve whole years since he hasn't had a surgery, and yes. now we find out he needs to get this shoulder fixed. Well, I've known I've needed to get it fixed because a true. helicopter I was working on in the Navy decided to pull it out of the socket for me. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. yeah. And you, I've been babying it for a long time. What, but what I can I'm put it above my head for any amount of time and lift anything above my head with that on for any amount of weight. So, well, what do you need done to it? Huh? What needs to be done? What's um, the surgery? Uh, there's there's tears in the muscle. You know, and, the ligaments. Okay, well, yeah, the ligaments. There's tears in it, and they need uh, to go in there and try to put them all back together again. Yeah. But Ugh. I'm busy, so I just keep telling them to wait and just keep damaging it more. Well, well if I, I can't it. use I it for it. work, then I'll have them fix it. <laughs> what, that? <laughs> what is that noise? Is that you? Is that the train again, or no, no? no. <laughs> That's what it usually sounds like when my cell goes away, like someone's dragging a dead body across wow. the floor or something. <laughs> it's usually some sort of strange noise in the background. Sounded like a really healthy <laughs> flush. Kate's husband's got a motorcycle. <laughs> I did too. Cat husband's <laughs> got <laughs> flush jewels. I can't see all see, this. See, look. Time. Six months later, riding his. Welcome back, oh, Laura. Wow. Wow. Nope, it's not happening here, cat. <laughs> not. Happening. She said eventually I can have another sports car, but until then, not so much. Look, my daughter just my daughter daughter bought a motorcycle about six months ago. Yeah, a little two fifty. And I keep threatening that I'm going to go over there and slip the tires and set it on fire. And she said, "Mom, you know that's vandalism, right?" I said, "Okay, so what? <laughs> if it keeps you off of it, then okay." But I've got an 1100 cc Yamaha in my garage now. You should be ashamed of yourself. The biggest thing I wrote was the GSXR 1100R. And the that's biggest, the 1100 Yamaha. Yeah. The hers is a. It's a little 250. 250 shadow. Well, shadow. Shadow. Yeah, mine had the uh, four Makuni carbs with the velocity stacks, had Vance and Hines box and pipes. 
That thing Kirk is hitters. Insane. <laughs> well, you, I rebuilt a 1969 442. Huh. Well, and you also made our uh, Dodge Dart Pass, too. And I stuck a 455 with pack in it. Dual exhaust, whole nine yards. It was great. She's a motorhead. Freaking car hated my gut. <laughs> have y'all have y'all ever seen the movie um, My Cousin Vinny? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that movie. I love that I movie. Love and when but she's on the stand talking about how it can't be a so-and-so car because the, that car had this and that and the yeah. other. And I'm like, you go, girl. You go. Yeah, that's an awesome scene. Yeah, that's my and then one. the thing with the train and the mo the motel they're staying at. Oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> yeah, Wesley Wesley says the reason he married me is because I can tune a carburetor by ear. And oh, wow, it. that's awesome. Well, you just know how what? a car's supposed to sound. You know, I mean, a motorhead. Well, does. it for an older car, and I'm talking, you know, all the old muscle cars and and those. And in fact, I. Helped my ex husband build his 64 F85 convertible. But, um, and that was an amazing car right there. That, that was a beautiful, beautiful car. Uh, but, and it was a, a you know, it was an Oldsmobile. But, uh, <laughs> anyhow, what was I going to, I lost my train of thought. You're Where was I? Your dart. Oh, the Dodge Dart? God, yeah. I love that car. That was a great car. God, that was a good car. A couple of our dates were at a speed shop and her spending my money on that car. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I have never met anyone in my life at that point in my life. I had known him for maybe, what, three months? Four yeah, three, months, four months. Three or four months. And this guy goes and buys me a car because my car was falling apart. And she had an you know, old well, look like a thunderbird heard but it was this a, story but yeah. my point my point in bringing that up again was that you know nobody had ever done anything like that for me before just because they were worried that i was going to be stranded somewhere mm -hmm. and i just thought that was really special and yeah, i'm done that's that. very nice but you had to take the chicken bone <laughs> yeah thing is this car was weird you pop the hood and on one of the supports going from the firewall to the um shit to shock tower were some chicken bones tied to it for good luck yeah. <laughs> she's like that's gotta go <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got rid of the chicken bones the would, you buy, would you buy that car from a witch doctor <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, no, I bought it from an old woman on base. There you go. She lives on base she as old as dirt. Let me tell y'all something. Before I married Wesley, I lived in a really scary place. But it was, um, it's all I had. I was single. I was raising my five kids pretty much so by good. myself. And... I was the crazy lady on the street because what I would do about every three or four months is I would go to the butcher shop and get a dead chicken and I would hang it on the fence and paint a program in my house. And they were like, which? And the reason yeah. I did that was to keep people away from our house that because worked, it's it? that bad of a neighborhood. <laughs> 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 It was shady. It was scary. Look, the reason, let me tell you why I left that neighborhood. Your neighbors might have been thinking the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> but you were shady. I didn't care. They could think all they wanted to because as long as they weren't bothering us, I had two young girls and three little boys, tiny little boys. Do you know I never had anybody steal one bicycle out of my yard? I never oh, had. That's nice. I, well, because they thought it was all hexed. They thought that I was, um, <laughs> you know, put a spell they thought on. I was a devil worshiper. <laughs> I wasn't, but he didn't know that. Um, and I did it to protect my kids. But one of the reasons that I left that house was, um, there was a block in front of my house, but it was a field. And there, but there were houses on either side of the field. And across that field on the next street over, 
um, someone broke into a man's house, did terrible things to his wife and daughter while he was tied up. Um, they kidnapped him and took him way out on the other side of town, dropped him there, and went back to the house to finish up. And I heard about this. Of course, the whole neighborhood heard about it. The helicopters were everywhere, and it was it was crazy. Um, and then the very next week or so later, I lived on an L-shaped street. And on the very short end of the L, there was a stop sign. And some gentleman stopped at the stop sign and got shot in the head. Ooh. And oh my God. At that point, I said to my girls, we've got to get out of here. We, we just got, yeah. I, I can't let you girls, and my girls were going to school with, it was terrible. It was just terrible. And um, I moved to Georgia, and that's when I met him. And of course, you know, I was in a I was in a pretty bad situation as far as relationship matters go, and I was kind of running for my life at the same time. And um, I don't even know how I got in that situation, to be honest with you, because before that, I had my crap together. I mean, I, I wasn't the kind of person that could be duped. But boy, was I duped. Yeah. No doubt. For seven long years, I was duped. And mm. at, at the end of that seven years, I just, well, no, it, it was probably about a year and a half before that. So what, five and a half years in? Here I've got two extra kids I didn't intend to have. And I, I woke up. I woke up and I said, oh, my God, what the heck has happened to my life? And it took me 18 months to plan and save and scrimp and escape that situation. <laughs> and I did. And um, it was a huge, I will never forget. I had my, my daughter's friends came over the day we left and helped us load the truck. They were maybe 13 and 14 year old kids and they helped us pack the house and leave. And I, I remember getting in the truck with the girls and we drove from one state to another. And when I saw that sign that said, welcome to Georgia, it was the best day of my entire life. It was like the weight of the world had lifted off of my shoulders. And I knew I was going to be okay. And they were going to be okay. And it, it was just it was the most amazing experience I've ever had. And, 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 and you I, were coming from Virginia? No, I was coming from Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, um, no, when I met Wesley in Georgia, we when we got married, a month later, we found out he was stationed in Virginia. Oh, and, I see. Uh, so we left and went and bought a house in Virginia and lived happily ever after. <laughs> there you go. That's good. Yeah. But um, of, of what we dated for what eight months? We only dated for eight months before See, we got married. We started dating June nineteenth. It was Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then we got married February second. Groundhog Day. Oh, that's my son's birthday. Oh, it's oh. a great day. That's yes, a great day. My that's my brother's birthday. Is it oh, really? really? Yep. We um we we decided to get married on Groundhog Day because she wouldn't forget. <laughs> that would be another cool day, but so she wouldn't forget. Look, we did not know at the time that I had a brain tumor that was messing with my memory. Okay, okay. You didn't have that problem at that time. You were a normal person. I was born with it. Well, no, do you remember? It didn't pop up and go, "Ha ha, I'm gonna mess with you." Oh yes, it did. For that when I went to the emergency room because I was blind <laughs> in Georgia. Nope, don't remember. Yes, you. I don't remember. He's she, the ding I that, did not marry damn good. She broke after I married her. He's the one that talked into going to the hospital. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I know. My phone finally rebooted, and now I can see all of you guys. That's great. Oh, <laughs> she was normal when I married her. 
her, and then just her, her cheese fell off her cracker after that. What? <laughs> cheese fell right off your cracker. Oh my god. Okay. You got the the, the tumor and all the craziness. Speaking of uh, cheese, speaking of cheese and crackers, Marcel, those that that cowboy candy is delicious. Oh, you <laughs> like that? Cheese and crackers, my godfather. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that's, why that's why we usually eat it. And I wasn't I wasn't kidding in the comments was saying I've never used it like a relish on a hot dog, but I'm totally gonna do that. We normally eat it like with uh, like sharp cheddar on it. Yeah, that's well I I tried that as well, of course. I mean it's just great, but I just thought, ah, hot uh, I'll chuck it on the hot dog, see what happens. It was delicious. I'll send you I'll send you some more for Christmas. <laughs> Marcel, have you done a video on that yet? I do not, and I've actually, um, and uh, because Patrick shared about it, I've actually had two people come over to my channel saying they were looking for the recipe. Of where the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I said I haven't posted it yet. Uh, when I when I had my bakery business, um, I used to sell it. Um, but I don't sell it anymore, so I guess I can give up my recipe. Oh, so good. <laughs> Thank what, you. What did you ask, Charlotte? Was it the, what did you I say? I wanted before? to know the if hot... you tried the hot sauce yet, the habanero mango sauce. No, no, not yet. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! But I will. I suppose it says that it's not that hot. It's not. Yeah. It is yeah. heaven in a jar. And it's it's pretty sweet though. It's sweet hot. Yeah. Good. I'll, I'll, so I'll delicious. Sure I'm gonna. I'll do a thing on it, but I'll t I'll try it and then I'll. Look, when you were opening it. the box and I saw that hot sauce, I was like, "Oh my god, what he's kind of gonna sauce? want that." <laughs> <laughs> the heaven, you <laughs> That is. Who um, makes it, you guys? Who makes it? Miss Melissa. Uh, Melinda. Melinda. Melinda's. Melinda's. Yeah. Okay. Melinda's. Oh. God, that stuff is delicious. The relish is good, and I can understand putting that on several things, but what would you mix, or how would you even drink the mango habanero whiskey? Mm, that's so somebody nice. gave me some Poppy, of that. Poppy, there it is. It yeah, is. That's, that's good. Yeah, somebody gave me a bottle of that, and it's it's odd. We have habanero mango whiskey? Yes. Do oh. I drink it? I've had some, and it's, it's odd tasting. And I'm like, what could we mix it with to make it taste yes, better? Odd, odd tasting doesn't mean it's bad. Right. Oh my gosh, Laura, that's different. a crazy story, girl. I reckon this. Maybe I could try that. I'll just, I'll do a video where I get absolutely hammered. I'll just drink <laughs> this in the back. With, put it. With uh, this. Patrick, put it in it. Put it in a uh, Bloody Mary. Ooh. That would be good. A Bloody Mary. Ooh. Tomatoes. Instead of using tomato the tabasco, put that in there. Grumpus, I uh, like the way you think. Oh, uh, maybe, but it's sort of not really a sweet drink, is it, uh, Bloody Mary? No. no, it's not. Maybe the salty sweet thing could work. Yeah. yeah. Grumpus. Maybe a, maybe a margarita. Maybe. I'm Let's thinking that's absolute turning. genius. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. An excuse to drink alcohol in the morning. Right. <laughs> Hair of the dog. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. <laughs> and of course, um, beaver nuggets. <laughs> oh my god! We, my six. daughter and I, we literally the the six weeks or however long it took for it to finally get to you. Because she's, we're fascinated with my, she especially, well, I, we're fascinated with your accent. We love to hear you say yeah. certain things. And uh, so when we were, when Just we went to Bucky's shot. and we were looking around and I was like, there is no way we're not sending this man beaver nuggets. <laughs> beaver nuggets. And then when you said it, we my, Emery was watching with me and we were like, yeah. <laughs> so, that was Bucky's, the, the um, gas station? Yes. Okay. Oh, they have amazing stuff. They have like so much stuff. They're saying within yes. like eight months to two years, we're supposed to have a huge one here. You got to have some time when you go in there. Yeah. They all kinds of stuff. They have arts, crafts, pottery, clothing. Wow. 
Yeah. Hot also, food. like usually from local vendors. So it's pretty cool because they'll take on, you know, local people and sell their things. Yeah, we've Uncle got some Steve. friends that live here. They say that every time they go to Texas, they make it a point to go there and they spend a couple of hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. Oh, easy. You could, you could, could spend, spend a couple spend that hours. Kind of money at a gas station. You could spend a couple hours there if you want. They got a, they got over 100 pumps. And wow. they have a full they have a full restaurant, a uh, barbecue restaurant. Uh, they have a, a, a fudge bar, homemade fresh fudge, pastries, um, sandwiches, and then they have a little area where you can sit. So when you get famished wow. from all the shopping, you can have a refreshment and then <laughs> go back to it. Well, I think wow. the two to us is either Texas or Alabama. Yeah, but the the beaver nuggets, even though I, I, we're silly about the, the the accent thing, but they're delicious. Have you tried them yet? No. Oh, you, <laughs> they're so good. They're really sweet. Like it's, not, it's a sweet it's not treat. Really like, beaver. <laughs> no, it's just little corn puffs that are coated in like a caramel. I love, oh, I love it. I love it around. I know I love it because I love anything um, popcorn related. Yeah, you. I think you'll really like it. Um, mm. Well, I've liked everything. Well, that that, that water burger sauce is sensational. In fact, I've I've used that again in the one I was filming today for something Yay. else. Um, so yeah, uh, that stuff's awesome. Every time we go through there, and I I don't eat it very often because I've been trying to watch my weight and stuff. But every time we go, if I get a, a burger and I like to get onion rings, and they'll you're driving through the window mm. and they say, "Would you like ketchup?" and I say, "Some spicy ketchup, please." Oh but, um, yes. It's so good. Actually, and actually, that would be good in a Bloody Mary. That stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like legit. Yeah. A squirt of that. Absolutely. Yep. So a few. When, you, when you open the box nuggets. of <laughs> beaver nuggets with milk for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Why not? And uh, this, uh, Look at that. Oh, oh, habanero. Oh, is that a habanero? It, actually... Yeah. It is a habanada. What you call me? It, now, Charlotte. They, they say it's a habanero without the heat. Lies, lies, <laughs> lies, <laughs> lies. That sounds like a story we all know, I tell. <laughs> we, all know we all know what I'm about to ask next. This thing is Come so on. hot, it burnt my face off. <laughs> well, one. The other one was. 50 bucks. No. <laughs> Come on. A hundred. A hundred. That's my final no. one. Some of your problems. Wesley, come on. Help me out. Besides the not hot ones. No, that's not a problem. The ahi don't say they're not hot. This wasn't, oh, I, heard you, I heard you earlier. There's not going to be any eating. Uh, come on. Let's go. I tried to talk. <laughs> to right now. Take a little, just a little nibble. I'll take a little <laughs> nibble. Good. Good. She's inside. She's inside. Yep. You're a loony. It's okay. Yeah, well, okay. Well, <laughs> take another she's, bite. She's about two glasses of wine deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it really has a wonderful flavor. I'm sure Woo! it does. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I God don't I'm see, outside. I can spit. I don't see you. I don't see you rushing to have a try of it, Wesley. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little nibble. I'm serious. It's not overpowering hot. It's got a beautiful go, flavor go, to it. Go, 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 go. And it's spit your to the left. It's very fruity. He'll be able to. He'll be able to eat it. I just usually cannot stand anything too spicy. Oh, it tastes like a bell pepper. No, it tastes sweeter and fruitier than that. <laughs> She's sweating now. Isn't it good? I don't know how you can't resist just eating the whole lot. See, and it's supposed to be habanero without the heat. And it, it does taste good, but I'm telling you, it's a little spicy. Oh, because you got a seed. Is that what it was? The seeds are a little spicy. A little bit. Not They're not bad. If you like spicy stuff, you could probably pickle these things and eat them whole. They'd be good. You think? Ooh, you need to make some for your daddy. 
Oh, I should. He'd love these. Some pickled hab- habanadas? Yeah. Well, I here's the funny thing is I, I'm growing ahi dulce, ah, pe- right here. ahi dulce peppers, and they are what you make sofrito with. What? Sofrito. Oh, right. It's a, it's kind of like, you know how in New Orleans they have the Holy Trinity, the celery, carrots, yeah. and yeah. It's like that for the Latin American. Huh. And it's delicious. Mm-hmm. And you it use um, you use these ahi dulce peppers and cilantro and culantro, which is a different herb than cilantro, but they're very similar. Um, and I forget, you use onions and you can use tomatoes depending on what um, dish. No, depending on. Like, um, oh, he's in Puerto Rico, water. they make it differently than they do in Mexico, than they do in Cuba, than they do in Spain. In regional, it's regional or or uh, ethnicity specific. I don't know. I I don't know how to say that, but certain. You know how certain languages have different dialects. Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of like the different dialects of sofrito. Okay. Um, and I'll, like show paella, right? I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah, I kind of like paella. How is, how is everyone else with spicy hot food? What's your tolerance levels, Grandpa Marcel? These I'm would about, be great in chili. Yes. I'm about medium high. This yeah, it's is, about the same with me. As I get older, I, I like it less spicy. This when I was younger, is when I, was younger I, could, I could put them away, but my uh, my stomach can't handle it like it used to. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same. Yeah. And yeah. other parts. See that? <laughs> What's that? Uh, that? That's an ahi dulce pepper. Well, yeah. I I have three of the habanadas, and then I have this one ahi dulce plant. Only I thought I had three ahi dulces and one habanada. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with all these habanada well, peppers. Let's, let's see what they taste like. Pickle them. Well, I'm down thinking about pickling them. Yes. Down the and hatch. I'll send down some the hatch. to you, Patrick. Pick, pickle them and put them in a Bloody Mary. Oh, <laughs> there you go. We're on a sandwich. Oh. Look, look, look. Grumpus, they... if you keep talking about Bloody Mary, I'm going to have to get one in the morning. <laughs> I know where we can get one in the morning. Where? The cafe. What cafe? One in the industry. <laughs> the... Grumpus, you have a cafe. Oh, yeah, they make bloody Marys. Pick up for brunch. At yeah. the end of the street. You um, want them cool. So, Patrick, the the lid was completely blown off of the campfire spice. It was. Oh, that's strange. But none of it. I mean, it's still all in there. Uh, maybe a little bit. Maybe I don't know how full it was. Maybe maybe but customs there wasn't, opened it. Was, but the seal was, was still not, on it. Oh, but the seal was still on it. Oh, and I don't know why it came off. That this stuff. Oh, well, that's good. At least the seal was still on it. Yeah. Maybe customs oh, yeah. opened it. And that's customs a might rub, have. Isn't it? Is that oh, customs rub, might have it opened it. Mm, mm. Did you see? Did you get the the note I wrote? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, it was just a little note. Okay. That was a really nice note, and thanks for the check for a hundred thousand dollars too. That was very <laughs> generous. I didn't know you had that much money, Pastor. And the Porsche. Don't forget the Porsche. Porsche. <laughs> well, still still like that's, the, that's the equivalent of twenty million dollars over here. <laughs> I, could, I could buy the whole. I don't know. I could buy anything. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy a helicopter. <laughs> there you fly go. over there. There. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I'm lost. No, you're not. You're in Mississippi. You're in Mississippi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, but I know Mississippi's a big place, but you're somewhere in Mississippi. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm by the beach in Mississippi, so I'm at the very end of it. Are you? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Like a half a mile behind me right there is the beach. Cool. That's so awesome. Go, it's can, not a good beach. Can... It's not like an Australian beach where it's beautiful and waves are coming in and the sand is shells and 
you have wonderful wildlife every no it's not like that it's huh. muddy and it's like a pond yeah we're so close <laughs> to the Mississippi river everything flows this way so you can walk about a half a mile to a mile out yeah and maybe be to your chin. waist waist deep in places it's um Ooh. It's kind of gross. Yeah, it's, it's really gross. So you, it feels like you're stepping in slime versus a Florida beach where it's sandy. Yeah, Florida beach. And you're beach worried about good. stepping on a refrigerator, a house, or a refrigerator <laughs> body. In it. Don't know. Yeah, because when the hurricanes come <laughs> in, they drag houses out. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to step on. I have found concrete in a box. I found a sink at the beach. Yes. Under in the water, I stepped on something. Like, what the heck is that? I looked <laughs> down and I pulled out a sink. But it's a great place to go gigging for flounder. Yeah. There you what go. You stay about knee deep, you're safe. Cat, you're right. <laughs> it's a man-made beach, Patrick. They um. They buy the sand and bring it in. Yeah. Yeah, and it's beautiful it's sand. Deep. It's beautiful white sand, but it just doesn't belong here. It, it really does. And he, he, he people well, are insane. If you go right. to <laughs> absolutely couple, insane. Yeah, cow crap, you're right. A couple of towns. Oh, you, found a, you found a fridge at the beach? Oh, yeah. Because the hurricane well, just destroys the houses. And sucks it back. And then sucks it back oh, out okay. when it. Yeah. So it wasn't <laughs> working. Welcome to the South. Mm hmm. Shit, Kat yeah. says, see what Kat said? She she lives just down the street from me. Like, oh, right, really? okay. almost right on the beach. And oh, she never yeah. knows. We Rather don't find a sink than a body. <laughs> oh, right? isn't that the truth? Oh, yeah. People Laura. in salt water has been there a hot minute. That's yucky. Um, but, and I'm sure oh, after yeah. Katrina, there were quite a few floating around oh, yeah. out there. Well, Laura, wants to know, Laura wants to know if you can get your toe in the Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like I sent a Matchbox car. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't have been happy with a Matchbox car. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of our friends that lives just on the other side of the railroad track, they had one lodged under their house. So the a Porsche? body. Oh, oh, they had the wife to go do something else when they had the coroner come and get him out of the house. Tom? No, um, Jennifer's husband. Hale? No. Oh, that Jennifer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The hubby's the chef? Yeah. Yeah. That cat. Yeah, buddy. Well. Well, her whole house uh, got moved. Her whole house got lifted up and shifted on the foundation. And that doesn't really. She told me. She said, she said it was the weirdest thing. She walks out in her backyard, and she looked up, and there was water, like waves. And I'm like, Jennifer, how did they not come into your yard? She said, I don't know, but it was there, and I was looking at it, and it was 20 feet in the air. She said it, it, there was a debris field. It stopped right at her house, in her took yard. Out her fence. And it took out her fence. And she said it was the most surreal thing she'd ever seen in her life. And th I am so grateful that I was not here for that. And I can promise you this. If there's ever another monster monster hurricane, we're leaving. We're not staying for that. Nope. No. I'll stay for a lot of stupid, but not that stupid. I'm not going to uh, stay for uh, another no, almost no. category one. We're not staying. I'm I'm surprised the Mississippi government hasn't asked you to do tourism ads. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, you make me really want to go there. It, tell, me something, Patrick, tell, me something, tell me something good about Mississippi. Come on. You know what? I love that the schools are very strict and they don't take any BS off of these kids. Oh, even, even hurricanes in Florida. If you're down in Florida for a big, nasty hurricane... You don't want to be there because it's going to destroy right. everything. Right. Whatever's yeah. on the beach is going to be in the ocean. Right. Right. And Texas is the same way. Anywhere on, yeah. the, on the coast. Um, I remember um, when I was a young adult, probably 21-ish, Hurricane Hugo hit South Carolina. 
and totally destroyed the place. And um, you know, it just it just happens. It just it. Don't y'all get tropical storms, Patrick? Oh yeah, we get horrible I mean, hurricanes. We had um, Harvey. Yeah, well, yeah, you guys had Harvey and um, oh, down in Australia, typhoons. Don't you get something like that? Yeah, don't you guys get typhoons? No. 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 So what kind of natural disasters <laughs> do you guys get? Fires. Besides they, fires, they get fires. You get earthquakes, volcanoes. No. Wow. <laughs> Just lots of animals that want to kill you. Shark, no, spider. No. no. Stingrays. Stingrays. Yeah. Oh, no, that's all crap. The soul. There's nothing. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing here. That, it's not like the American bloody wilderness where you got bears and cougars and. But I am petrified of bears. People with machine guns. <laughs> <laughs> bears with machine guns. Bears with machine guns. I've, I've seen Deliverance. I know what's going on down there. <laughs> that's a different state, honey. West Virginia. That's where you can marry your cousin. <laughs> Just don't stop to wash your car. Right. Yeah, right. Tell, you, tell you what, I saw that movie again recently. It, it was. I can't watch that movie. They got oh, a great movie. Down there. A great movie. I, I just can't watch it. It's too um, well, then, traumatic for me. And and, and I've that. never experienced anything like that. But I'm just saying that. It's creepy. That is just too much for me to watch. Ned Beatty just died recently. He was the guy that. Yes, you are correct. Uh, in fact, the only one left now out of all of them is, is um, uh, John John Voight. Yes, the and that's, three. that's a freaking miracle in itself. Um, is it? He's yeah. uh, Angelina Jolie's father. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and uh, he's good, well, John Voight. He's got um, some interesting political views too, which I rather enjoy. I don't. I don't know anything about that. You'd know about that, Gumpus, wouldn't you? A little bit. He's been pretty outspoken. He's been one of those Hollywood celebrities that hasn't been afraid to just say what he what he believes. What he wants. He, yeah, it's he, great. Yeah. He doesn't mingle with the herd. Hashtag nope. free Britney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's um, uh, we don't really. There's nothing here that I mean. I mean, I, I think you'd be more likely to get get hurt by because we've got a lot of big problem with feral deer uh, in this country. Feral deer? De yeah, there's millions of them apparently, and they're wondering what to do because they're destroying farmers' crops and everything. Eat them! Well, they tried that apparently, and, they, and it failed. People weren't interested. Really? So they've gone. You know, there's now millions of them, and and they're they we're not allowed. You're not allowed to shoot them. So. Uh, really? Well, how are you going to you you eliminate them? Oh, well, they don't. They just let them. It's turning into a plague. Well, set the uh, crocodiles big, on them. It's a big problem. Well, that might work, but most of them aren't down here. They're up up in the Northern Territory. Oh, I, I see. But there's, no, there's nothing here that's a part. I mean, maybe a deer. I don't think I, I think people do. You wouldn't want to run afoul of a deer because they they're pretty big. They could, you know, run you over. But Yes. Well, and nice. during their uh, mating season in the spring, they can become the 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 uh, male deer but, can but become yeah. extremely violent. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't want to yeah. get anywhere near them. But there's right. nothing here that's gonna. I mean, we got we nothing got happens feral, in Australia. <clears throat> we got that's feral hogs little, here I'm, in Texas. We got feral yeah. hogs here in Texas, but it's open season all year round on them. What happened? Well, Charlotte, yeah. get yourself out. Oh, there she is. There I am. Uh, I was just about to say that. I, I can't imagine another predator better than a, a feral hog or a boar hog, you know. Yeah, but we, we can kill those year round. Yes, yes. I mean, these people on ranches and farms, they'll invite people in just to, to take them out. To get rid of them, yeah. So I can't imagine them not doing something about the deer. I mean, I, I can understand they don't want people shooting shooting them up in town. But well, I would yeah. think they would have some kind of a make some sort of a big deer roundup, like a rattlesnake roundup we have have around here once a year, 
Right. Just in, invite people to come in there and take them out. Well, people don't have guns here. Well, so no, one, no, one has any, no one has any guns. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> they took them all off us, mate. They took oh, them all gosh. Off. Patrick, well, that's what happened. And we allowed that doesn't to happen have guns. The what? The, the entire country doesn't allow guns? No. Oh, you, my. I mean, you, you, can, you can get a gun license, but it's so – I mean, you have to be the member of a – a shooting club and it has to be sports related and and you have to have i mean it's the red tape is it makes it almost impossible to get one. Oh my goodness i mean and you certainly can't get any sort of you know like things like shotguns or anything like you know it's, you could get rifles and things that are sporting related you know see i like have pistols, my own personal oh. semi-automatic 22 named prince charming yeah well, can, can you, could you um, fire off a few rounds for us? I'd like to see that. I can't in the city limit. That is illegal. Yeah. Oh, is it? Besides, can't you get a shotgun for shooting clay but pigeons? But you're in Mississippi. I thought that would be okay. No, no, not down here where I am. If I was what up about, north somewhere, it would probably be what, perfectly fine. Yeah, if you live in the, what what they call the county, they don't care so much. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the city <laughs> limits, they <laughs> frown upon why, that. Why don't they care? It's the law that cares. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. Right. Okay. The law that cares. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and well, there's a lot of them in this little tiny town of 17,000 people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, where we're getting ready to move out in the country, we yeah. are surrounded by <clears throat> larger acreage, uh, like not estates, that's not the right, larger acreage properties. Um, yes. And they, a, like it's common, commonplace when we're even just sitting out there, like working on the yard or anything. Um, yeah. uh, my friend, our friend Butch, who has 30 acres, uh, one house over, he has 30 acres that go back. He and his friends, they practice, they shoot. And so we had to actually get used to that. The, the noise of the, the guns firing so close to it. Right. Not firing at us. You know, they're off in the distance and he's firing a totally different direction. But, of course, it travels. Mm -hmm. yeah. could, you, could you do a video on that, Marcel? <laughs> if I can catch him at the right day. Yeah. Say, can you go practice your guns you can, at 3 no. o'clock on Saturday? Then don't be no, late. No, no, <laughs> she could do a video work. for you of shooting squirrels and cooking and eating it. That's right. No, no, no. no. Listen, what the idea is that I have is... Or she could send you the squirrel meat to cook and eat. Oh, my God. After, after, we're moving, after we're living out there full time, I'm sure that I'll be able – I'll, I'll at least be able to catch the noise on film. No. Yeah, but, but you could go live and then take us as you walk towards it and go and see what they're doing. It would be great. I'll be sitting on my porch and with a cocktail listening to Butch yeah. fire rounds into <laughs> – but that's not very that's not very entertaining for the rest of us, Marcel. But, but you got me. You know, you got to think of the audience, all right? <laughs> Put your audience first, and get your you get your Kevlar vest on or whatever you wear, and, and you well, can maybe join in. Maybe with. I'll whip up you could join in with an hors d'oeuvre as we're watching and listening to the, the gun ringing fire. gun yes. shots in the distance. I'll do a live cook to the there sound of my neighbor Butch firing rounds in the distance. Gun so fire right. Right. Like right. I'm liking this. I feel like we're brainstorming here. Okay, you've, got to, you've, got to have, you've, you've got to have gunfire in the name of the recipe title. That's like gun, gun, gunpowder chicken or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't something like good. that. No, it doesn't have to sound good. But look, I'm, I'm just trying to give oh, you I suggestions know. on. You, you <laughs> might get a few subscribers myself. You might get a few more. I hit 1,800. I mean, by the way, I saw that. I saw that. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank awesome. you. You hit 1,800, Marcel? Awesome. Some point, at, uh, some point last night, yeah. That's wonderful. Thank I lost you. two last night. <laughs> oh, well, it happens. See, I get the same thing. You know, people join, I, and then they go away, and, you know. I was so excited because I got out of the 840s. 
and I went into the 850s like really fast and I got all the way up to 857 yesterday and then by midnight it was 855 again and I'm like what the hell <laughs> well sometimes, sometimes they purge you sometimes YouTube does a weird thing where they like right they, they purge, they purge and all the bots yeah and then but if you wait like 12 hours sometimes they all come back Oh. Like, I don't know why what they why they deduct it, uh, you know, and then it comes that happens, back. That happened to me recently. I lost nearly 500 overnight. What? Are you serious? I'm serious, man. That happened to me. So, I mean, it, yeah, nearly, I was in the 400 somewhere. But that's, yeah. I don't, I didn't care at all because they're either dead channels or they're, people that don't watch so I don't care and then right. they came back no no oh oh my god no they purged me they, they got rid of they, I, I was sitting here watching it as it was happening it was just my subscribers going down 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 it was about 400 and something oh my wow. god that That's would make crazy. me cry yeah. but I think it's a, I think it's good that they do it because I don't want it does, that's why the subscriber thing's meaningless. It doesn't mean much. Right. What you want to watch, what the what the only thing that matters is view time. Yes. Because yes. I've seen there's, yeah. there's, there's some there's a couple of channels out there that have got very low subscribers, but you notice, geez, they've got a lot of what they've got a lot of views. Uh -huh. I don't know how they do it, but that's what you want. You want the, the subscribers because half of them don't watch, and when they do a purge, it's sort of good because I think I don't want I don't want them. You know. Right, I'm, right. I and I get bit. that because I, I would like to have people who are interested in what I'm doing here to yeah. subscribe instead of people who. But here's the thing, y'all. I just got I got my mind blown last night, night before last. I was looking something. I don't know. I, I had watched one of these gurus, right? And they said something about suggested videos and I'm thinking well how do I get more suggested videos because most of mine is based on search people search for content and they find it and they come and to my channel that's really well, good about 54 percent of mine are like that I only have about 10 percent suggested for the past 28 days but anyhow so I, I got to looking and I'm thinking, okay, well, let me, let me investigate this a little bit. So I go to suggested or no, I went to the uh, reach, the reach page or was it audience? No, it was mm. reach. So I scroll down and it says the part where, you know, what videos are suggesting your content. YouTube don't know what the hell I'm doing over here because I had ww wrestling <laughs> suggesting my content i had um some kind of car channel suggesting my content i had uh, crazy stuff that has nothing to do with either gardening or cooking crazy hmm. stuff and i'm thinking okay youtube why are you so confused because for the last year i have done nothing but show my garden every single week in this thinking platform. Well, th they might be trying to, to put it out there to promote you in different avenues. And that's fine. That's fine. Um, I was just really confused as to why, you know, I, I didn't understand it. Because well, <clears throat> maybe well, not, it's 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 not the one daughter and the hot rods is because of me. It's not well, the target that you're looking at. Them it's suggesting just, you, them suggesting you. I don't think it necessarily has to do with your content. Uh, I think it has more to do with what the other people have been searching for. Oh, and, and what and, so, and what the other people are watching. If I if I'm yeah, watching barbecue, so, if I'm watching barbecue channels, and I decide to watch some wrestling stuff for an evening. It may YouTube may It'll, still may still push barbecue channels towards me, yeah. and it brings me back, and I find you or something like that. So it's not necessarily what you think your audience is; it's what your audience is watching, and that that follows them around. 
Yeah, what that they've been awesome. searching for, what they, what, what I've been searching for is going to dictate what I see when I click home on right. YouTube. And so right. if, you, if the people that have, you know, car channels or NASCAR channels or whatever, if they've been searching for th how to do things in the garden, how to build a garden, outdoor garden box or bed, how to right. make you know, spaghetti sauce or something like that, they, your video might get suggested to them. Huh. And every well, every and one of us. had a very good point because she said maybe that's the kind of content that my subscribers like. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's everybody, a very good point. Everybody here is going to have a different list of, of suggestions on the side. Yeah, yeah. If, if, I watch, if I watch puppy videos for a whole evening or two, all, all the, the suggested videos on the side are going to swing from what I normally watch towards animal stuff. Yeah. Like my, my daughter, you know, my eight-year-old, she gets on my, my account. I'll leave it on for her. And there are a couple of really clean, uh, clean YouTubers that do the, um, the games where they um, narrate it. Oh, and yeah. she enjoys watching them. And so she'll get on here and she'll click on one of them's named Aphmau, A-P-H-M-A-U, Aphmau. And she all she does is narrate. She's got like 10 million subscribers. But all she does is narrate funny stories as she's playing Minecraft. But she's really clean and family friendly. Anyhow, long story short, uh, my daughter would get on and watch a couple of her videos in the evening or whatever. And then it suggests all and then those to you. It keeps coming. Like every time I refresh my page, it's like act now this and act now this. Yeah. So it's not. It's what you're getting suggested to people. They're trying to promote you in a way. Like that's click this link. Right. Yeah, that's good. So kind of like when you or Violet mess with my phone and all weird crap comes up on my phone for a week or two. Well, I was, but, for the longest time, I was getting all kinds of crazy suggestions. I couldn't figure it out. You know, about, about six months, I couldn't figure it out. Right. Until I, until I realized that the wife was watching her YouTube stuff that she <laughs> likes to watch on, your, on my yeah. account on the TV in the living room. How to make so, a farmhouse wreath. I mean, yeah, I mean, all, that kind, of, it, all that kind of stuff, you know, and and uh, I couldn't figure out why I was getting all these florist suggestions right. and things like that. It's because she was watching gardening stuff in the <laughs> other room on my account. Frumpus, is that how you found my channel? So we <laughs> had to uh, so we had to uh, get her own we account. So she could watch it. <laughs> yeah, we all yeah. met on Marcel's channel. That's right. That's right. Um. So it, it's strange the way YouTube suggests stuff. I mean, just, it really is because I'll tell you this. You go crazy yeah. trying to figure it out. <laughs> Marcel, my kids, when they were little, <laughs> I was such a bad mom. Oh, God. No. I, let them, I let them watch PewDiePie and Jack, Jack Sept the guy. <laughs> I've never watched them. Oh, my God. It, you have got to watch PewDiePie. He's hilarious. Really? Absolutely hilarious. I've, I've actually caught a couple of episodes from the Mr. Beast guy. He's I pretty good, too. I've never watched him. Um, yeah. But uh, what's PewDiePie Jack do? Rants. Huh? <laughs> All well, he now, does is I will say this. I was getting... A, I have another YouTube channel on another email account that my kids used to use all the time. Mm -hmm. And so if it's I were random. to open that channel today, it would be nothing but Minecraft, Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, and, and excuse me, um, all kinds of um, anime. anime stuff, mangas, you name it. And Welcome that's, back, Laura. Sailor Moon. That's one of the reasons I created this channel was because I was so tired of getting all of the recommendations from their stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to look at my own stuff. And I started off looking at gardening channels because that's something I enjoy doing. And, you know, here I am. But um, what did Laura leave us? 
She, had to, she took a break. She, took a inter, she had an intermission. Laura, I watch true crime all the stinking time. I have two children that are addicted to true crime with me. Oh, I love it. And and I don't know why. Because she's a weirdo. It, because it's creepy yeah. and scary and right. hashtag free Britney. I worked yeah, at the yeah. for about four years and saw and had to do some stuff that was oh my God. not fun. And she didn't want to hear about it. Now she wants to hear about it. No. You worked with, I didn't I mind. I did what not did mind do? hearing about it. What, what did, I what could, you say? What did you say, Patrick? Say? <laughs> I said, what did you say, Wesley? Oh. I didn't oh, hear what that was. For about said. four years, I worked at the PD and saw... Police. Yeah, police department, and it saw and did things that I really did not want to see her do, but it was part of the job, and she didn't really want to hear about a whole lot of it or smell it, for that matter. Yeah. One time I came home after a horrific crime scene, I had to leave all of my clothes in the garage. She quickly bagged them and threw them away. There was no way I was going to get that smell out of those clothes. I had to wash myself with... What was Gone. the smell of? Um, Dead people. About three oh. of them that were squishy and gross. They had been sitting and rotting in a mobile home with no air conditioning for about a week. No, more <gasps> like a month in the summer. And, liquid folk. Yes. Yes. And they were soup. He had to go set up all of the lighting and the community, the and perimeter and the communications. communications and for all of the different agencies that were involved in the crime scene. And he was walking through. Oh my God. I can't. Have, they, have they been murdered? Have I they know, been yeah, murdered? They were, they, yes, they were. It was bad. They, they, they have since found who did it and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty unpleasant. The things. And then one time. You there had was, a day to wear sandals. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Thank God he wears boots all the time. But <laughs> Lysol saved those. <laughs> what? Um, remember the one incident where you had to, the guy, um, where they were drag racing? Oh, yeah. We had, still not going to say who or where, but two individuals were drag racing through a residential a neighborhood. neighborhood. Um, one guy accidentally, because they came across a hump. One guy tapped the other guy on accident. One guy goes flying down the road. The other guy goes sailing into, into a, a yard, which bounced off of a truck, which bounced off of a tree, and taco said car, and taco said person at the same time. <laughs> and we had to find a part of him that they didn't have when he was at the office. Yeah, they, they call the crime scene, or the accident scene, whatever you want to call it. Accident. And there are no accidents. There are bad decisions. Well, there was a bad decision scene for sure. But, but that person, Wesley, had to. Not just me, a group of people. Well, it was a group of people, yes. But they were looking for parts of this man's internal head, cranium, cranium parts pieces. Um, and some pieces never really materialized. Oh, they were in the car. Oh, thanks for letting me know that. They were gross. <laughs> oh, um, like he, he shot himself in the head? No. no the, the, the accident. Oh. They were drag racing. It, it mm. Something happened and his head just... No, that was a different one where the head came off. This oh, one, the God. car got <laughs> squished like this. He got squished like that. His, some of the stuff went out like that. His head got squished and it just... It went everywhere. It painted the ceiling. Yeah. Wow. It was terrible. Um, and it was very unfortunate because these people were related to each other, the ones that were drag racing, and it was just so sad, so so sad. Um, but you know, he would come home and and tell me all of this stuff, and I'm like, really? And and what's so funny is, you know, I went to nursing school and I worked in a, a nursing home for a while and hated the job, but I did it to make <laughs> some money. And and I'd sit there and eat lunch and talk about cleaning up dead people and having to do this and that and it, stuff you do in nursing homes. And um, 
And that stuff that he would come home and tell me about just really, I don't know. The older I get, the less I can, I'm sorry. Eeks. Sorry. <laughs> I just shifted my weight and put my, my leg down or my fist down on his uh, fake hip and, and shifted myself. <laughs> that was probably oh, the right. Yeah, that was dumb. But um, <laughs> but anyhow, the older I get, the less the, this, like the crime stories, they really disturb me. The little summer wells that went missing in Tennessee. You know, I'm going to say something about that. Go ahead. Because, I want to hear what you have to say about it. Um, well... You know, I don't know how much weight there is to my to what I think I think I think because the mom passed the polygraph, um, yes. and the dad passed the polygraph. Mm -hmm. um, however, I do think it's odd that a when they spoke about her initially, they it were immediately they were immediately referring to her in a past tense, and I think it's odd if you look at the state of their property. That the mother said, I went over here to plant flowers. It, why haven't they gone to investigate where she planted flowers? Mm -hmm. Because to me, that was almost cryptic. Like that was almost, we were planting flowers. And then I went inside and asked the boys where their sister was. And she was nowhere to be found. But, you know, you know, that's me reading, you know, watching lots of true crime and all this stuff. You know, she might just be a really distraught mother. But I really thought, think it's a bit odd that well, if you look at the state of their property, it's mm -hmm. not terribly manicured. No. However, yeah. she's planting flowers and then a child has gone missing. <clears throat> Some people have <clears throat> said that they believe the little girl drowned. So that while she was swimming and, oh. and they just, you know, and now we're going to get in trouble. I don't want you're going to have to, so we probably shouldn't talk about this because I don't want your live stream to get messed up, but we right. do we can have this in a private conversation, but, right. but there's, there's things they haven't looked into yet. Ways to ways, things that I, when I heard them, I heard some things that were off. I heard some things that were off too, but let me tell you the first thought. I, in fact, I even said this to Wesley a few nights after it happened. And and I understand that there are people out there who believe, look, we all, every time a child goes missing lately, especially lately, the first place we go is to the parents because those are the people closest to the child. Yeah. And usually those people are responsible. And it, well, at least that has been so in the past few months, the past couple of years, actually. But I was laying in bed the other night and I was watching something about it on YouTube. And I looked at Wesley and I said, dear God, what if she's still in that house somewhere? What if she, because they were saying how tomboyish she was. Mm -hmm. And they said that the house was only valued at about $10,000. And I thought, that must be a crappy house. And I thought, what if she was in that basement, crawled around in a hole somewhere, and hurt herself and couldn't get out? Got stuck. Got stuck. Yeah. And what if she's still in the walls of that home and nobody's looking? That's oh, interesting. Oh, and, and that's that, happened. That's and, happened. And sure it has. Um, and I don't know how recently, but but that was my that was just a thought that came to me the other night. When, well, you know, yeah. Interesting. When, you know, and and the likelihood of that being the case is probably one percent. But but um Stranger things have happened. Strange, yeah. I mean, look. Well, I'll tell you the ahead, case. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. But there was a case, and I forget the state. But you could probably Google this, and it's like a legit true crime case. It was a young man 
who was working at a restaurant and he was very young. I want to say he was either late teens or early 20s, college age kid. And right. he went missing. He went to work and then he never came home. And like, seriously, like, I forget how long, but like a year, two years, something insane, some, some amount of time passed. And the restaurant where he was working went to do a deep clean or to get new equipment or something along those lines. And they pulled out a refrigerator that was against the wall and the guy was behind it. Somehow he had gotten behind there. He got trapped and he'd literally been behind the refrigerator at work and he, he had conked himself out. He died somehow behind there and he was literally trapped between an appliance and a wall for years in a place of business. Isn't but that I want to know how in the world do they not smell that? I, I don't know the answer to that. But because that's a horrible, horrible smell. It is. You can't cover that up. Yeah, but it was something. Maybe it was a freezer. Maybe it was a freezer, but it was something like that. He was actually in his place of business, trapped behind an appliance, and they finally found him, and it was completely random. Isn't that that's just crazy? Yeah. Um, but there's some there's some validity to that. If the state of the house, if they're like hoarders and they have large things where they are, right? You know, or even if they're not, if there are spaces in that basement that would just, you know, I remember she could have crawl, crawled down or right behind. And, yeah, or, yeah, and that's what I keep. I, I don't know. I I'm hoping. God, I always hope that the parents are not responsible. I hope so. Well, of course. And then I, I, I hope, you know, she wasn't. The fact that somebody could have been stalking her and uh, stalking anybody because they have those other boys. There could sure. have been a predator. There could have been a predator on the property that seized her opportunistically. They have those other three young boys. Right. They, you know. Right. Well, and so that, see, that's that, also still a possibility. That is the part that confuses me about this whole thing because that story that the mother gave can be so corroborated by the testimony of the boys. Yeah. Um, and when you start, the, the bigger number of people who you're trying to get to keep a secret, the, the more yeah, likely... Yeah the secret will come out yeah you, you know? remember like the game we used to play what did they call it where you would whisper in somebody's ear you'd yeah. like make up a statement and then you whisper it in somebody's ear and then they and whisper it again and they whisper like again the and then go up and down the rows of students and by the time you got to the end of the fifth row two Tons words have been changed story. yeah yeah it's called yeah. gossip yeah but yeah. Um, it, it's really really a perplexing thing simply because number one the boys were in the house playing their games and number two they're in such an isolated area you know it's not like they live in a neighborhood like i do where there's house upon house upon house yeah they live in a rural area where there's not that much traffic they're in the boonies and if someone yeah. was uh like driving up into the driveway they know it you know they probably Somebody have could have, you know the way this world is working today and and children are such a commodity in evil rings of people yes somebody could have followed them i mean that's a legit thing you yeah. heard about the little girl i think we talked about this last week the little girl that was ripped off of her bike in front of her house Mm -hmm. and, and then they found her uh, two blocks over still in the passenger seat because a neighbor saw it and got a partial license yes. plate. Yes. I mean, that could be exactly what happened. It could be. Um, I hope, I hope not. Yeah. And that they wouldn't have had the benefit of an eyewitness or um, a CCTV camera catching anything. Right. Because it's so rural and poor. You know, and yeah. um, 
you know, at, at Wesley and I, we don't have CCTV on our house. We are contemplating getting it, but we don't even have a ring cam. Oh, shut no. up, Charles. I we, be before, <laughs> my, we, we didn't have one we'll until... We'll be getting it next week, though. <laughs> well, we finally got a ring cam. Before uh, Evan deployed this last time, he insisted that we got one. <laughs> And, and that, so that's why we have one installed at the house. And then my mother has had one for a long time. My younger brother made sure my mom has had one for years. And funny thing, right? Okay, I had the weird thing happen to me at the car wash today. Well, my mom tells me that on her ring camera yesterday before we got here, we didn't get here until like 7 p.m. in the evening. We just kind of took the day yesterday and we traveled down in the evening but my mom told me that at about two o'clock p.m., a young man came to her door, and she does not have a not, no soliciting sign in front of her door or anything. But she said a young man came to her door and knocked on the door and knocked on the door and rang the doorbell and knocked on the door. And he did it like three times. And she has motion sensor floodlights right outside of her door. And they, oh, they only turn on if like something passes by, a cat or leaf something right, um, right. but the lights turned on and she said that as he was standing in front of the door he kept holding his hand up and she was watching him on the ring she wasn't about to answer the door but he kept ho holding his hand up trying to block out the light from the floodlights uh -huh. but then he kept knocking and kept ringing and then finally he walked off but she said he was very persistent and that he had nothing in his hands like he was trying to sell magazines or a vacuum or whatever they do and i said well, what do you think you wanted and she goes i don't know but i wasn't about to go find out right right you know i you know my, wesley's not home i never answer my door no oh, i have my i have my kids trained and i say yeah. nope you don't stay the door. <laughs> don't, answer, don't answer the door don't answer anything. yeah yeah, that's the sad state of the world, you know. It really is. And 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 honestly, you know, I live in a fairly crime-free neighborhood, a crime-free town. Um, you have burglaries as far as breaking into cars and stealing whatever is left. But as far as violent crime goes, last violent crime that happened, really, it was a crime, but it really wasn't. An old guy died, and his his girlfriend chopped him up and put him in a tote. Uh, no, it was the garbage uh, thing, the gar mm. the garbage receptacle. And the only reason she did it is because she wanted to keep getting his social security check. So it was basically she was charged. Well, there you go. Right. <laughs> she was uh, charged with improper disposal of a body. <laughs> well, they, they couldn't prove that she Recycle's was... not going to take him. <laughs> right, right. The recycle company didn't want this guy. <laughs> he was but, getting done used up. I'll tell you what's crazy is it took them weeks to find him. And the trash can sit right outside the door of their these houses. And I'm like, what the heck? Um, and it was in a duplex. It wasn't like it was a house out in the country. This that is a stanking. duplex. Oh, yeah, uh, Laura. If you go to the YouTube channel for the Ring cameras, they have some amazing things they capture on this camera. Some of them are funny, some of them are sweet, and then some of them are downright scary. But if you go to the the Ring, uh, Ring. ring yeah, but go to their YouTube channel and they replay some of the things they've recorded with people that have their cameras, and it's amazing what they catch. Look what look what Cat says. You're not a Kat, very good ambassador. Cat lives very <laughs> close to me. I'll be flipping through YouTube and see Kat. these different car accidents and things like that. And there was one who was like 15 car accidents all caught on the ring camera. Cat, you know that stinking happened. You know it did. <laughs> <laughs> so but, what's our what's the big what's the next big cooking holiday? Nothing really until Labor Day. Fall? Thanksgiving. 
Labor, Labor Day, Day, maybe for cookout. Oh, well, for Grandpa's We're on our way to fall. Uh, hello. Okay. July first <clears throat> is my daughter's sweet sixteen birthday party, and it's going to be a blowout cookout. What are you cooking? What? What? What's the date on that? The thirty first of July. Oh, that's coming up. Absolutely. <laughs> like in two weeks. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, just for those of you who are curious about Kat's statement, I love it here. I really do. Sounds um, like it. <laughs> I, and I, I know it doesn't sound like it sometimes. So, sounds like you'd have to love it. <laughs> but I love living in a small town. I love. I love that. living in a small town too. Um. This is a really safe place for the most part. Um, it's a great place to raise children. Um, now, now that's more like it, Charlotte. Let's there go we go. Yeah. It really there is. It honestly, honestly, a great place to raise children. Um, however, once my children are grown, I'm heading out of. I won't <laughs> head out of Mississippi because my chicken going back on the here. <laughs> and my daughters are here, and I don't want to be that far away from them. Um, you just want to go to a quieter area. I just want to go to a place that is more quiet. That's all. And where all the crap we want is going to be really close. We don't have to drive anywhere. Yeah. We can hop on a golf cart yeah. or an electric well, bicycle. And well, like, what would fit retirement that? village. What yes. Yes. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> what would fit that bill for y'all? Like, you want to move out of a house into... Like an apartment or a condo, or you're looking at yes. like property. Yes. It'll, be It'll be a house, but smaller. Marcel, Actually I would be. This thing. I would be very dangerous in a condo. Yeah. <laughs> she would have to have her own condo, her own floor, her own She'd everything. Be the only one there. I <laughs> no, no, that's not happening. I'm going to have my own land with my own home on it. Whether so, and, and we're actually thinking about buying a mobile home. Or a manufactured mm -hmm. home. But having it bolt a slab. We're going to well, put it on a foundation. That's, well, that's what we've just done. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, if there's a hurricane threat, we're just going to go to my daughter's house. Yeah. We'll be fine. Um, but bolt, bolt it to pontoons and chain it to a tree. Let right? me tell you. <laughs> you know what, Grumpus? We are seriously thinking about buying a boat. And parking it at the harbor and living tax free. I'll be back. <laughs> I'm empty. I mean, right. well, property tax free. Of course, right. property tax is built into the rental of the slip. But do you know we can live on a boat for about 500 bucks a month? And that's yeah. cable power. Cable um, power, everything. water, everything. Having our sanitation taken care of, all of mm -hmm. it. So I don't know. I think a, a, a boat is probably a little bit too small for me. Depends on size of the at. Well, simply because I'm extremely claustrophobic. And uh, I'm going to have to have a little more square footage than that. And some marines have nice showers for the people that live there. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, she will. Mm -mm. But as a, a part-time, enjoyable... Hobby, I think that would be something very fun to do. Yeah. Stay at the marina for a week, <clears throat> take the boat out wherever we want to go, you know, that kind of thing. Because I love boats. Go fish. fish. Goodness, is that you, Jules? My God. Oh, Jules. You might have to mute her. Yeah, mute, yeah. Um, ah, ah. Uh. You're on your pooter. I'm trying. Just give me a second, guys. I got to learn how to do this. I haven't done it before. Okay. Probably just click on her thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you just got, looks like you, you got through her. Look at this her right here. Yeah, click it. Well, she's gone. Is she gone? You dumped her. That's right there. You, you, did, you, 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 did you dumped her, Charlotte. I didn't. No, I didn't dump That's her. That's terrible. terrible. I, just, just muted her mic. I just muted I the we're mic. All friends here. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Until you come. Until you come. 
Just Cypress says either. she would like a condo, but cement building. I want land with storage containers for... Oh, now that's interesting, Laura. Don't buy a condo in Florida. They fall apart. Mm, yeah, they, they collapse on you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, That's that was a sad thing. Did you guys hear about the Florida condo? Yep. Yeah. Well, 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 sure. then the it was the second one. There was a second one. Another a one? Well, one. No, it wasn't the second one when they dropped the second tower. The well, horrible thing was is they would not let any of the owners go in and retrieve their stuff, their animals, nothing. There was a bunch of people that had um, pets. Pet service that, well, animals. Service animals. There was an 83-year-old woman. Her daughter tried everything under the sun. Lawyers begged the judge, let me go get my mother's service animal out. I'll sign something. I'll sign anything that says... You are not the fault. The company's not the fault. If I die when I go in there, it's my, my bad. Fault. Yeah. And well, the, the said, mayor, Duh. I did see, I did see. Now, mind you, they didn't drop that building. They didn't do the controlled drop of that building until seven plus days had passed. And so you think about whatever animals were up there. They've been up there without food, without water, in heat. Right. And, the yeah. and they said that they did everything. They said that they had retrieved some pets from the place and they said yeah. they had yeah. gone into some of the places um, with drones and used infrared cameras searching for life. And if they yeah. had seen life, they were going to go in somehow and get the animals. But this was after seven, eight, nine days in the right. extreme right. heat elements. The animals have been up there without food, water. They're dehydrated, hungry. They, many of them have probably already perished, but they said that they did try with infrared cameras and drones to locate any any life. Yeah, one of the things I watched was about that one lady, about the one animal, they had tried to coax the dog out, but the dog was afraid. They, they fed it, they gave it food, gave it water, but the dog would only come eat after they dropped back the way and that poor animal, they all, the ones that were still alive, all got killed. Well, that's a very sad thing, but you know something? If my dog was in there, I'm signing that paper. I'm going in. Actually, I, I probably would have got trouble. I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second. And the people, now granted, I'm sure they turned and they ran, but the, the part of the building that was still standing, that the people that, you know, the part of the building that was still standing, why did they leave without them? That's what but I wanted. Because they were trapped in there. Nobody was able to run out of that part of the building. They were on their balconies waving, help me, help me. Yeah. And yeah. they should have had their service animal in their hand when the fire department exactly. took them out in a bucket. Right. You exactly. know, right. those people, those people were like literally trapped by the rubble from the falling yeah. building, they had to be rescued off their balconies. Nobody was running for their life to the point where they left anybody behind. Right. That would have definitely taken there's, there's a lot we don't know. That what a horrible, ridiculous, it's just a sad situation ridiculous tragedy. Yes, and and nobody's fault really, except for for all the people involved in the main yeah, I mean, the it's just cover up. Yeah, all the cover there, up. There was, there was one lady I read about that had literally lived there for the, like 45 years or however long it had been standing. She was like an OG to the building. She like literally lost everything. And she, I think was in her eighties or nineties. Wow. Oh, um, yeah. That is but so she, sad. But she's alive to tell the story, you know. And yeah. you know what? She'll probably live outlive the rest of us. <laughs> but it's so sad. I mean, you just can't even imagine. It and then really the second sad. building yeah. I talked about was a building in the same county uh -huh. where the the roof literally the roof slid off of it. And oh, it's another yes. building. Yeah. I I do remember seeing that on Google a couple of days ago. It might have been yesterday. That I saw that. Yeah. The, the they did. collapsed. Roof collapsed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a second building in the same county. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, also, there's the village. 
the villages, that giant golf course retirement community. Oh, yeah. Three oh, mass yeah. sinkholes in that place. Oh, I got a friend who lives there. I got a friend who lives there. They were showing a uh, satellite images of that thing, and those are three massive holes. Yeah. Well, and, and in Florida, you have to be so careful. Because just, just recently, well, within the last five years or so, Google it. The the guy that got swallowed by his house in the sinkhole. That was more than five years, but yeah, there's there's been houses swallowed. There was the a Corvette Museum. Yes. Um this gentleman was asleep in his bed and a sinkhole ate, ate his house. Where? Uh, and Florida. In Florida. And he it was just on this one piece of property. The sinkhole opened up and it was eighty feet freaking deep. <gasps> And the house just was eaten by this sinkhole, and this man in his bed perished in the sinkhole with the house. Yeah, well, that's and, about what happened to these poor people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, but you know, that happens in Florida. There are sinkholes everywhere. And you're, not, uh, um, you're, you're not, doing almost as good a job of. Florida. Um, what yeah. was that, Patrick? Yeah. I said you're doing almost as good a job of being the ambassador for um, Florida now. <laughs> well, as you I'm are for Mississippi, Charlotte. I'm just stating facts, Patrick. Facts. <laughs> you can visit tourism. Just don't buy a house there. You're fine. Um, don't go to Florida. Don't go to Florida. I know it's okay to go. Just be careful. Just get when the you hell out. Just, right. Yeah, have a theological uh, research done. My parents had a house built down there in Manatee County. It still stands. It's, it's you know a great what? house. I lived in Florida until I was 35 years old. The home I lived in when I left was the house my father bought when he was 18 years old. And so I was, not, nothing ever happened to it. It's still standing. Well, we don't have sinkholes in Australia. <laughs> we, don't. we don't have that anything is, here. That's a wonderful thing, Captain. All we have so is the beaver nuggets. Their houses on <laughs> <laughs> Look, what was that? What did that say, Patrick? What was that? Beaver nuggets. <laughs> oh, oh, beaver nuggets. Beaver nuggets. I'm a little scared of beaver nuggets. From Bucky. <laughs> I don't blame you. Oh, I don't Bucky. blame you. We're getting one. I know. We're about to get a Bucky. In like 18 months to two years, we'll shoot. Yeah. Out. You will no longer be afraid of beaver nuggets. They're delicious. Are they? I can't wait. Um, what's the place up the street they just built on Klondike? Um, on Klondike? That's not a Bucky, is it? No. Right there at 28th and um, Klondike? No, it's a key superstore. Oh, well, who knew? Bucky's is huge. Who knew? Bucky's is going to be a $50 million project. Where is it going to be? At the end of Men. <laughs> Get it! Right there on the it. Massive. Yeah. I'm so excited. I Massive. can't hardly stand it. <laughs> they got to redo the interstate and everything right there, the interchange and everything. Yeah. Just so they can say, hey, semis and everybody else, come, come here. Come on in to Bucky's. Um, guys. Marcel, how long did it take your package to get from your house to Patrick's house? It was like six to seven weeks. Oh. It was quite a while. Sorry, Patrick. You're not getting any fresh possum. Moose crap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe freeze dried. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, freeze dried. Moose crap. Who's a moose crap? No, look at Cypress Blue. Talk about moose crap. <laughs> moose crap. Chocolate covered. Oh, oh. I love oh, chocolate oh, covered oh. almonds. If you guys, I love moose tracks from Harris, uh, Harry and David. Moose tracks, moose not tra moose crap. Holy crap. <laughs> I, got, I got to send Patrick some moose tracks. I love it. What the hell is that? Don't even worry about it's it, yummy. Patrick. It's yummy. It's wonderful. After all that sweet stuff I've seen shove in your face, you'll love it. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm send me anything. I'm happy. I know, <laughs> and I can't wait. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm not fussy. Not fussy. But I'm really, really, really. I was kind of hoping it would get there a little quicker, but that's okay. Well, if Harry and David's do it, it might be better than if we do it. Well, no, I can have it sent here and then sent there. Why double pay? Have them just send it straight to his house. Harry and David's doesn't send to Australia, dear. Well, then they stink. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. Well, <laughs> I wish I could send you some of their pears. Oh, my God. They, they would be pear soup by the time they got the I know house. they would, but, God, they're delicious. I wonder how well, we pear, soup, pear soup doesn't sound that bad. It could be something. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds better I than the rubbish that you, I cook. Oh, my God. I'm going to send him some dehydrated watermelon. Okay. Because I have the food. Dehydrated sensitive. watermelon. Oh, it is my so God. Good. It's a whole watermelon's about that big. I'm going to make it. <laughs> I'm going to. And what, you put, you put water on it and it just turns yeah, it just blows it, up. Actually, <laughs> I call it uh, watermelon jerky. But, oh, my God, it is so delicious. It It's like candy from the garden. Yeah. I'm not going to believe it. I'm going to send you some. Yeah, yep. make it. I'm going to make it. Um, do it, do it. I make it myself. Do it. She'll make an entire watermelon, and she'll eat probably two-thirds before <laughs> I get home from work to get any. It's so hard not to eat all of it. It really it's good, is. watermelon. Yeah. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Um, I'll just have to make sure I extra dry it and food seal it. I ha my daughter bought me a food we'll get saver. Those, um, things that you can buy from Amazon. That the keep oxidator, all the, yes, yeah, moisture. Um, <laughs> my daughter bought me a food saver for Mother's Day, and I'm still like trying it? to figure out how to use it. But I'm very excited because I know I can dehydrate food, put those little oxygen packets in it that that suck up. Because here. Patrick, what you don't That's understand good. is here so in Mississippi, it's about 100% humidity for 90% of the year. Mm -hmm. Same where I'm at. Yeah, right exactly. Here. Texas is the same way. Yeah, um, the especially same coastal Texas. Coastal Texas, yeah, but once you get into Dallas, and it's not so bad. Well, we're not talking about Dallas. We're talking about like Houston and Corpus, San Antonio and Brownsville. Corpus. And Brown yeah. yeah. So anyhow... My point is, in order to save food or dehydrate food here in where I live, you have to be able to suck the oxygen out and the moisture out. So you dehydrate it, and then you have to actually seal it to keep the humidity from getting in and spoiling it. Right. So you can't really put it in jars after it's dehydrated. Excuse me. Because the humidity will get into the jars. So you have to suck all the air out. And that's why I'm tickled to death to have the food saver. Because that's what it does. It sucks all the air out. I and, was actually uh, given a food saver. And I've never used it. It's actually like in a cabinet. I've never used it. Wow. Change your world. You have not lived, Marcel. I have some friends that like to cook that way. They'll take their food. Put all the seasonings like and everything. The then they'll see, yeah, they'll seal it. Then they'll throw it in their sous vide. And then what? One guy, he's a phenomenal cook. Who? Blake. He'll oh. put his steaks in there at the medium rare temperature for like hours. So even a cheap cut will fall apart. Fork tender. Then he'll get his grill ready where it's like super hot. He'll sear it on both sides, pull it out. That noise. What is that noise? Who's grinding that's like stuff? that's that, that's Marcel. That's when you're dragging a dead body across the floor. That's what it sounds like. Marcel, how many dead that? bodies are you hiding in there? She can't count that high. She's got that many in She's there. She's like looking around, going, mm mm. I'm not mm -mm. telling. <laughs> More than I want to say. A lot of times well, I'll back. Does have, my mom does have paranormal ha things happen here in her house here, too. So, cat. That's next on my list. I'm going to buy that. Um, Marcel, do you, Grumpus, you you know about this. I'm sure you do. The the mason jar attachment where you yeah. can suck the air out of the mason jar. Yeah. I had to get the lid on real fast. No, you put the lid on. Uh -huh. it's, it's part of the lid. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. And ours has the attachment to where you can suck all the air out of the mason oh, so jar. Oh, you got the super amidine one. Exactly. Yeah, right on. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of times, uh, I'll vacuum seal cooked leftovers. 
Uh -huh. Or I'll make I'll make extra just to vacuum seal, and then after work I bring you, you can pull them straight out of the freezer and put them in boiling water and heat them back up. Oh wow! Oh. And it's it's just like you'd cook them that day, like Ooh, like yeah. stuff like stuffed peppers and things like that. Sure. Uh, just make extra and and seal them up. And yeah, it's I had a my nice, easy, hot. quick, get hot, honey meal. I had I had a friend of mine. Uh, actually just give me hers she was like i'm never gonna use this here do you want it and i said sure and then i took it and i literally i know exactly where it is i shoved it in a cabinet under my sink <laughs> and i've never used it and that's like three and a half years ago i have literally awesome. i have literally burned up two of them i have worn wow. out wow wow really? marcel the first thing you need to do is get you a watermelon Slice it up, put it in thick like slices like you would beef jerky, okay? Uh -huh. Dehydrate them with basil, salt, and that's it. And then you dehydrate the whole thing. De vacuum seal. Well, you got to taste it first because you're going to die. Because it's so delicious. It's so delicious. You're going to like... Oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> and then use that food saver and seal it all up. And you can do like six watermelons in one day. And it's amazing. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. I've never even heard of that. I'm going to have to try it. But That's you something. do need to look. When you're doing your watermelon, a little bit of salt and some basil. Bam. Okay. But I Maybe. do have a recipe coming up for strawberry soup. Oh, I'm a little mm. bit busy, so he says I'm getting loud. Am I oh. getting loud, guys? I'm sorry. No. Uh, so, something right. else. Something else I do on a regular basis is I'll put a partial a partial vacuum on a marinade, meat and marinade, mm -hmm. and that help that helps draw it into the meat. Draw it a into lot the meat faster, and you don't have to leave it in the refrigerator overnight. You can give it a half hour or an hour. And it's just like it sat overnight. I made the best chicken I've ever made in my entire life the other day. Doing, well, marinate. I used a Korean barbecue recipe. Soy sauce, uh, brown. brown sugar, ginger, garlic, salt pepper, salt pepper mirin, mirin. It's a sweetener. It's it's kind of like a Korean. It's sweet a sweet wine. It's a sweet wine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and oyster sauce. Sounds good. good. I put it all. Uh, put I, I cross cut the chicken. And I put it in a gallon Ziploc bag, put the marinade on top, and just let it marinate for maybe. Two or three hours, I think. It was about two or three hours. Totally. It was the only before I got from, from work. Yeah. Um, and I took it, and I have a cast iron griddle. And I stuck that chicken down on that cast iron griddle with a little olive oil on the griddle. It was absolutely delicious. I, I made some rice, some jasmine rice. And I put uh, some sautéed uh, peppers and onions on it. With a little bit of sesame oil. It was the love best. sesame oil. I love it too. I'm and ready I'm to eat again. That stuff was so good. But, you know, I was what I was going to say, Grumpus, is I bet you had I done the uh, vacuum, vacuum, that flavor would have gone even deeper into that chicken and really, really saturated it. Yeah, I mean, you can't put a full vacuum on it; it'll suck. It'll suck the juice right out the bag. Right, right, right. But, you, but you can get you can get all the air out of it that you can. Right. Well, and that's what I did with the uh, Ziploc bag. I used a gallon size, and I just rolled it onto itself. You know, folded it basically, and yeah. zipped it while the air was out. And when I picked it up, it was basically flat till you got to the chicken part. Yeah. And I just stuck it in the fridge for about, I, it couldn't have been more than three hours. But boy, oh boy, that was delicious. Delicious. I wonder, I wonder how you, I wonder how it would be if you actually used a vacuum cleaner for it. 
<laughs> you wouldn't have any chicken cool. inside the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, well, I've, got a commercial, I've got a commercial one here. It's very powerful. You can sort of suck the chicken into it. Well, in, <laughs> in have my the marinade house. in the bag. You know? I'll tell you what would happen in my house. My what cat. My cat. It would be covered in cat hair. <laughs> wow, well, you just rinse that off, don't you? Darn. <laughs> Or, or good night, cat. They also, <laughs> you know, um, I buy the cats these little cardboard things that they can scratch their claws on, mm -hmm. and of course they tear them up, and the little bits of cardboard end up in the in the rug. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly Vacuum vacuuming the rug. Cardboard. So I'm thinking, when you said that, Patrick, all I could vision was cardboard covered cat hair in my chicken ew so ew ew oh well, you just rinse it off and chuck it back in the pan chuck it back in the pan. <laughs> chuck it back you know what i was watching a gardening channel the other day it's a channel that i really enjoy and it's an english lady or british do they call them english or british Call them whatever you want, Charlotte. <laughs> well, no, she lives in England, and she yeah, has a lot. English. She has an allotment. Yeah. And I love watching her channel because she's so sarcastically funny, um, and she makes fun of herself a lot, and I I really enjoy that, uh, self-deprecating type humor. And she was talking about how she. Uh, messed up something in her garden and and all of these bugs were eating all of her food and and but whatever you said just reminded me of that and i can't remember what i was talking about because i'm old and drunk <laughs> wow let's leave it at drunk <laughs> good job honey i'm sorry so, that was a crappy story <laughs> well my this one's crappy too because what i've uh, been researching it and if I had a see I don't have an outdoor area here but if I did I want to do a I want to I've been wanting to do a series called power tool cooking so that what I you like do it is already you, well you use power tools to make you know, like a chainsaw for example <sighs> but I can't I they're actually you can get the electric ones and um I just don't know how because it would make quite a mess because I've got a few ideas and I, it needs an outdoor area Oh my gosh, Patrick, hmm. if you want an amazing electric power tool, I have a Black & Decker weed eater, 40 watts, and that bastard will blow through anything. I yeah. love it. I love that yeah, weed eater. Once again, that sounds like an outdoor sort of appliance. It, it is an outdoor activity, but yeah. I'm just thinking... If you needed to weed whip some of your food, that would be the ticket. Oh, that would be great. But uh, yeah. as I say, I need, a, I need a sort of an outdoor area. Well, don't, don't you have a common area? Yeah, but I, I don't know how the other residents would Well, react. there's only one way to find out. I'm pretty sure I know how they'd react. <laughs> <laughs> Me out there hacking up a, a leg of lamb with a chainsaw, I think that would. Or some I think, or some of that soup strumming, what did you call it? Oh, that, that crap, fish. yeah. Oh, no. oh. Have you done the fish yet? No, no, I'm still waiting for this other guy. I don't know what what he's doing. Are you um, scared? Well, not like last time, because the tin is not bulging this time, Charlotte. Right, it's, right. It's normal. And I get so that. It will still smell like a crime scene, but it will taste good, apparently. Look, <laughs> Patrick. Apparently. If your friends bail on you, I will buy some, and we can do it across continents. In the backyard. <laughs> In the backyard. It'll well, happen. I can do that. There's an offer. There's an offer. Never there's mind the offer. haggis. Don't worry like, about the haggis. Look, Get I'm still waiting fish. on the freaking haggis. The god dang... Never mind. Well, all the of us first company it. lost it. They delivered they it to the wrong the address, so they gave her a refund, 
and she had to go to another company and she reordered. And it hasn't gotten here yet. And I'm a little disappointed, to be honest with you. Well, it's way north it's and there's always excuses on why it gets here slow. It, it might just be a sign. It might be a sign that I shouldn't be eating any goddamn haggis. How you like them up? Crumbly lamb sauces. Laura, I do not really want to eat haggis. However, <laughs> is it? Everyone what else is haggis? Everyone else wants to know where this. We've gone However, over it. I'm going to try haggis just like I tried Vegemite because I might be pleasantly surprised. You can try the spam. I really don't care for spam that much. Have you had spam. I've had spam. Okay. Hello, um, I grew up on spam. spam. Did you really? Spam, eggs, and spam. I haven't had a bite spam. since I left. Oh, God. <laughs> This I like is my Monty Python, Python dude here. Spam, spam, eggs and spam. You said it wrong. Whatever. So, but no, Laura, I really don't want to eat haggis. But I'm I'm an adventurous soul, and I'll try anything. Well, she was dared, so she wasn't going to back down. So now she's going to really have to eat it. And I was kind of dared to do it, so I have to do it. So if there's anything weird or gross you want her to eat, dare her. Oh, oh, that is oh. not what this <laughs> channel is about. And should I remind everybody of my Double beautiful new dare. water lily leaves? <laughs> Look, oh, Rumpus recommended a certain water lily company called Lily Blooms to me. Lily Fonz. Oh, that's right. Lily, <laughs> I'm sorry. Put a lot of Good pressure on here. <laughs> um, so I ordered one because... Grumpus, did I tell you how much I paid for this lily? I was afraid to ask. I'm, I'm going to guess. Fourteen dollars and fifty cents. How much? Fourteen dollars and fifty cents. Oh, I'd have been way off. I know you would have. I'd have been up around normally, the sixty-five dollar range. I know. Well, and their shipping is sort of high too. So total, it was twenty-seven dollars. But. The actual item was fourteen dollars and fifty cents. Now. Oh, that's great I'll, price. It was a great price, and I'll tell you this. It is not a named water lily. It is just a color family. It says peach water lily. But those are my favorite colors. I mean, I love orange flowers. They're, they're my favorite. I love orange roses. I love orange lilies. I Orange, orange, orange. Peach, salmon, whatever. So I decided that that was a great deal. And I was going to buy it. So I did. And um, got it in my pond right here. Love the, I actually am so enamored with the colors on the leaves. I did not expect that it would be a variegated type leaf. And um, I can't wait till it blooms. I really can't. I think but it'll bloom pretty quick. I'm hoping... So I'm going to keep my eyes on it over the next month and see what happens. If if we can get some sun. <laughs> God, if we could only I, get some sun. If we don't get no sun, it may not bloom. <laughs> Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I love that song. Sing it. Sing it. Um, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Anyway. <laughs> The Gulf, the Gulf Coast Granny does cabaret. Cabaret. I'm to the cabaret. Anyway, um, Careful, you'll wake up the neighbors. I know. I don't care. You know what? Patrick, after the hell that I've gone through with the 1980s reject music coming out of my neighbor's house for the past 18 months, hair bands, Leonard Skinner, who, look, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm from Florida in the same city where Leonard Skinner was formed. My father went to school with Ronnie Van Zant, Donnie Van Zant, and the whole gang, was best friends with them at John Gorey Junior High School in Jacksonville, Florida. I worked in the service industry 
for a short time in my life, probably about to five years. And every bar that I ever worked in, Leonard Skinner was the theme. If you didn't hear, give me three steps, Sweet Home Alabama, and Freebird 45 times a night, it was a bad night. <laughs> Stop. So, yeah, I don't like that kind of music anymore. And that's all I heard for 18 solid months that we lived in this house. And now that neighbor has been hmm. basically evicted. The house was foreclosed on. They have been scuttled out of the house. The new owner has come in and cleaned up the yard. Thank God. They're all about good. to come. I'm sorry. I said it's all good. Our, it. our life has just transformed in the past three weeks since they've been gone. Wow. Totally transformed. Yeah. Just get rid, get rid of one bad egg. One meth head. Hoarder. And let me tell you something. This guy, not only was he a drug addict. But he was the most vile human being I have ever encountered in my entire life. This man, I had my four-year-old grandbaby out in the backyard. And he was on the phone with what a, I can only assume was a woman. Because he called her names that don't usually come out of my mouth. And I said to him, he was across the fence. We're outside. There's a chain link fence between our yard. So it's not like I could shelter her from the things thing. And I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You can't say these things in front of my four-year-old grandchild. What is wrong with you? What kind of man talks like that in front of a child? And he invited me to screw myself. <laughs> oh, that's he, called, he called me the see you next Tuesday word. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? You are the most vile individual I have ever seen in my entire life. Shut the F up and go back <laughs> in your house if you're going to talk like that. So he did not. He did not. He went in his house, thankfully, and I could take Millie into the house and get her away from the stupidity. But I, I just, at, after that happened, I was so afraid to bring her out into the garden. She loves to come in my garden and just put seeds in the ground and pull things out of the ground and point at the flowers and play in the dirt and she's just she loves my garden and after that happened i was really afraid to bring her out here because i didn't want her exposed to that to that profanity and and it broke my heart because you know no child should have to hear that no and in fact, any adult woman shouldn't have to hear the things that were coming out of his mouth. And he had no problem saying it on a daily basis, saying these things. Like he, towards he, to you when he saw you in the yard? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, one day I was filming him because he was, let me tell you, this man was beating his dog. He actually what? spit. Look, this, I filmed him spit spitting on his dog. It made me so sick. What a, what a piece of work. Well, he's gone now. That's that's the main thing. And I'm really happy about that. I'm sorry. No, they know it. All this damn whole neighborhood knows exactly what kind of person he was. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Be loud in your house. They all know it. Do you want to go in the house? Sure. You want to be loud? Poppy okay. thinks we should move this party to inside the house. So I okay, tell you I what. have a suggestion. I have a suggestion. What? 
I want to invite you guys. Yeah. I want to wait till Patrick gets back. Okay. I'm still listening. Actually, wait, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to leave it. Grumpus, do you have your, is your email on your channel? Uh, it's in my about page. Okay. I'm going to email you guys and talk to you about a, uh, a holiday thing I want to do. Oh, fun. I'm going to put my email in the private. Okay. No, I'm, I don't need to do private. I can do it in the comments. Yeah, but I'll email. I'll email y'all. It's not right now. I'm gonna. E it's an idea I have for kind of a collaboration around the holidays. But I'm gonna wait for Patrick to get back. But I'm not gonna say exactly what it is out right here because I know this will be out. But I, it's something I'd like to do with y'all, and I've got a couple other people I want to invite. But um, like a little collab if y'all like to do it. Marcel. Do yes, I have to look? Yeah, well, uh, maybe not. I can. I mean, you know I can. I know you can. Okay. Count me in. Count me in. But it's, it's going to be like kind of our style that we do here. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, like a party, and okay. it's gonna have like a theme. It's gonna have what? A theme. Oh, that sounds fun. And Honey. then, excuse me, just a minute, Marcel. I'm sorry. You got it. We're not gonna need. So, if you want to just throw it in the corner, can. Okay. Because it's like plenty bright in. Here. So anyhow, What's this theme business? Well, I'm gonna email. I'm gonna actually email y'all, or I we might schedule like a like a private group call where we talk about it. In fact, that's definitely gonna happen. Um, okay. And um, but anyhow, like a holiday themed thing, and then there's a couple other people I'm gonna ask to. I'd like to ask to be a part of it. I'm 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 just kind of thinking out loud now, and I'm about four glasses of wine deep. Okay. Is that all? That's it. Um, you definitely look like you're in church, Mark. You, I could swear you're in church right now. You've got the thing behind you. I know. All she needs is a holy water container right, right. there behind her. What do they call that? Looks like yeah. a, a nice mausoleum. Right. <laughs> Bless you, Marcel. Bless you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, but like, we're totally going to do it. It's like a halo cool. overhead, isn't it? It is it's actually if, is. You're, if you're a little bit other the other way, it'd be like a halo. Right. I do feel like I was a bit divinely protected today from the psycho from the car wash. You I were. really thought so I really that thought well. I, when I realized that he was not a good Samaritan. And he was not trying to tell me I had a flat tire or a headlight <laughs> out. And he was accusing me of something. I was like, truthfully, what flashed through my head was like, this MRF is going to shoot me. <gasps> and I was, but I just, you know, I just did what I do, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I'm driving down the highway going 40 miles an hour. And he was like, you stole my car wash. And I was like, I, I didn't steal your car wash. I mean, it was like straight out of a John Hughes movie. Like we're driving, <laughs> you, have you seen planes, trains and automobiles? Oh yeah. Yes. Um, where they're trapped and they're driving and they're turned into skeletons driving down the thing. Like that's like, when I realized he 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 ran me down like that to accuse me of something stupid, <laughs> I was like, "What?" Like, but I have my eighty-three-year-old mother and my fourteen-year-old in the back seat. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I'm just glad it didn't go that badly. But in this day and age, you really never know. You know. Do you, have, do you guys over there? Do you have these these people that stand at? Traffic lights and try and wash your windows. Oh yeah, and ask, and ask for a dollar. Do you, do you get them? Oh yeah, we got them. We don't get those here. I got them on every corner down here. 
Yeah, they're, yeah and they, they're usually homeless they or druggies or whatever. They may not be asking for a dollar to wash a window, but they're usually holding a sign and they say, we'll work they've, got, they've got four kids and they ran out of gas, please help or- Homeless um, veteran. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, the, the, these, these characters down here, they do this, and they, you know, they make the, the windows that they clean on your car wor worse when they clean them, you know? Right, they I don't do let them touch my car. No, nah, but some of them get really aggressive. Yeah, they do. And, you know, if you if you don't, you know, if you say no or whatever, they start mouthing off at you. But so the other day, I'm at the lights, and there's this scumbag uh, doing this. You know, he's going up, you know, soliciting basically. And you know, you can see people on the car going, "Oh, he looks scary, this guy." You know, and I'll just give him a dollar to make him go away. Yeah, looks yeah. strong. A couple, couple of cars in front of me, I could tell the dude in the car was like, "Nah, don't do it. Don't want it. Go away," sort of thing. And the guy started to do it regardless. He said, I'm going to wash your window anyway. And the guy said, like, yeah, use some colourful language, you know, to politely ask him to leave. Was that uh, me? The guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then so no, I this. I think it was my this, neighbour. This guy, uh, <laughs> he, he started to abuse the guy in the car, you know, uh, you know all this sort of stuff. And he, start, and he hit the car with his wiper thing whatever it was so the guy got out of the car and the guy was like six foot nine mm -mm. towered over him grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and washed literally washed he had a soapy rag washed his mouth out with soap in oh. front of him. people were people were getting out of their cars cheer, cheering yeah. <laughs> taking video the whole nine yards and he just grabbed this guy because the lights were changing, and he just sort of tossed him off to the side, just, and just got back in his car and left. That's yeah. awesome. It was one of the best things I've ever seen. That's so that scary. Was hilarious. I mean, people are just dipshit next door. Just wash his mouth out with soap. Damn right. Oh. Well, a couple of summers ago, I came up on the feeder on, on a stoplight, and it was kind of a similar situation. But there's a, I heard a bunch of commotion, and I, and I looked in my mirror, and it was the car behind me, and it was a guy, you know, on the street with a sign, and he was standing next to the open window of the car behind me, and the guy, the driver, was just giving him, I mean, just giving him hell. I mean, he was just ripping him a new one, and the guy just standing there nodding and nodding and. Uh, you know, it got to the point I thought, you know, am I going to have to get out and get involved in this or something? And then the guy smiled and handed him a dollar. And when he turned around, his sign said, we'll take verbal abuse for a dollar. <laughs> I thought it was priceless. It was perfect. That's absolutely YouTubeable. I thought it was brilliant. It is. It is. That is a good one. That is a good one. I agree a thousand percent. I don't know how we're going to get this off of there. Here. Guys, give us a second, okay? We're going to change. What's that doing? What is okay. Charlotte eating? Oh, I know what we're going to do. Never mind. Is, that a is the shit. Is that a what? carrot you're eating? Oh, it's a carrot. Yes, a baby carrot. Amazing. No telling I what you're doing. I would love to say that it came from my garden, but it did not. It came from the local grocery store. Okay. You got all time. He's like, oh. Lost its impact. Yeah, it's not as nice. It's not as exciting now. No, not at all. Well, I love it because, look, look. These are the cutest little baby carrots. Look at them. Those are cute. Uh, I love they are them, the, and they're so sweet and yummy. They are the cutest carrots I've ever seen, Charlotte. <laughs> Honey, why don't you grab the hummus? Yeah, only the on uh, be able to stand it. <laughs> only on Gulf Coast Granny. Only on Gulf Coast Granny. <laughs> see, you we see, get we see. Cutest baby carrots on Gulf Coast Granny. Yeah. Um. That's fantastic. Shoot. Shoot. Okay. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. No, oh, it's live TV. It's great. There we go. And where you know, trying out? So well, here, where you trying out? Right right oh yeah, grab the hummus. No, just the red pepper one, not the olive. I want the olive one and the crackers. So. 
Oh, the cracker. Look. So I don't know, Marcel, I don't know what I'm going to try next from all of this sort of stuff you've sent me. So what's there? Have you tried the beer salt? Suggest no, no, that's the one I must. I've got to try the beer salt, but I want to do that. And I'm, all this is going to be on videos, of course. Okay. What is it? Beer salt. Beer salt. Where is that? That's the one I wanted. Yeah. That sounds pretty stinking amazing. We have beer salt here, honey. Beer, do we have salt? beer salt. Yeah, we have beer salt. Where? At the store. Trouble head. Oh, I thought you meant in our house. Yeah, Did there are people that like legit like, and that if, I don't know if you can act. I don't know if you have access to like Mexican beers. Patrick oh, over there, like a thing. Oh, they have like uh, Dos Equis and Corona. Yeah, salt. yeah, yeah, yeah. Corona, all that. Okay. Match oh, made Lord. in heaven. You put some beer salt, like get a bottle of Corona and use a lime. Mm -hmm. Go up the side of the bottle with the lime, sprinkle a little bit of beer salt on the side, squeeze the lime in the bottle. Yummy. Express. Yeah. We even we even have tacos here, Marcel. <laughs> Amazing. But I will try it. So it's sort of similar to, you know, like you put the bit of lime in the uh, in the Mexican beer, but you rub this around the, the edge of it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and then like it would be good what on actually there? margaritas. Like it would be good on margaritas too. Yes, yes I was gonna say that with the salt around the edge, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely oh, I can't wait to try that, but that's gonna be a I'll have because I want to tie it in with a few other things, like maybe do something with one of these rubs. I'm just so glad you're enjoying it. Are you kidding? I even, I even like, um, I even hey, like the, the, the straw that you sent. <laughs> I'm gonna find some use for that. Maybe I'll, there maybe you I'll go. try cooking. I might try They're cooking this. Yeah. Happy birthday, well, Dwayne. I, was I don't know what like, but I didn't know it was your birthday. And happy birthday, Dwayne. Happy super birthday. Hey, Dwayne, happy birthday. So now that you posted it on my channel, you have to tell us how old you are. It's the rules, Dwayne. It's the rules. Come on, don't be shy. BRB. Please. Oh, his birthday's oh. over. Uh, it doesn't matter. He announced it, so he has to tell us how old he is. Besides, it's always good three days before and three days after anyway. Yeah. <laughs> See, my birthday was months ago. Yeah, it was. Months and months ago. Mine was two weekends ago. Well, happy birthday, yeah. Rumpus. Thank you very much. I cannot believe 20. you didn't announce it for us. I'm sorry I did not know that it was your birthday two weekends ago. I gave you the day off. It was July the 4th. Four. Are you freaking serious? So let me ask you this. How many years of your childhood did it take for you to figure out that the fireworks were not just for you? He still hasn't worked it out. Yeah, I still did. What are you trying to say? Look, You've I'm just, only asking no, no, you that. Wait a minute. Because, wait a minute. What are you saying? This is like this is like <laughs> telling a child there's no Santa Claus. Yeah. This is I'm only Charlotte. asking that because just, my Easter birthday is like. Easter Bunny and Sparklers is all I had left. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, my you work out. Is December 29th, and of course, New Year's is January 1st, and I always thought. That all those fireworks were for my birthday. <laughs> Until I was like, I don't know, 29? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but now she put all those candles on her cake. She's like, all the fire department. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you, did you Heat, see, heating up the house. Well, Charlotte, let me see? tell you something. This, this is a great story. Uh, five years ago, of course. Oh, okay. Thank you. Five years ago, I turned 50. Five and a half years ago. And, you know, I have seven kids. And it's very rare that all seven of the children come home on the same day. Well, it was Christmas time, of course, because my birthday's four days after Christmas. And I 
kept having these kids coming home and all of a sudden all seven of my kids were home at the same time and it was it was maternal bliss okay i mean at that point you're going oh my god my babies are all home it's wonderful and at For the same time it's like holy crap i put them all i know right <laughs> and what are we thinking I, i'd be thinking am i dying <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly so you know it's so funny because our family always really concentrates on christmas <clears throat> as a, a major holiday in our home. And so I thought all of my babies were coming home for Christmas, right? And they were staying the week. They all told me, oh no, we're, we don't have to go home until the first of, you know, the new year. And I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. <laughs> they were throwing me a surprise 50th birthday party. <laughs> you couldn't so figure it out? Me, my daughter takes me to get my hair touched up, as she calls it. My other daughter took me to the mall and bought me a couple of beautiful outfits made and, and made me wear one to go out to eat with my husband that night. Now, I'm thinking it's just me and him. I don't. And you know what's so funny is I always have the mama mojo. I always know when these idiots are up to something. <laughs> And I love them for it, but I always know. And this time, that that 50th birthday, they all had me snowed. I had no idea what was going on. I walk into this restaurant. He opens these double doors. And my entire family is there. Not just my children. I'm going to get emotional. Your brothers. Shit, shut up. But my parents, my brother, who is my heart, he's the baby brother of the family. He was born when I was 13, and I just love him something fierce. Um, and then I look to my left, and there is my brother, the one that is next in line to me. We're only 13 months apart. I've not seen him in, like, 15 years. And he's wow. standing there at my birthday party. I just turned into an absolute pile of mush, of course. <laughs> I cannot believe that my kids put all of that together. Cannot believe it. And it's one of the happiest days that I'll ever remember in my whole life. Oh, and that's amazing. It, it was. It was go. an amazing day. It was. I'll I'll be honest with you. Seeing my brother after 15 years took the cake. Where where was he? Um. Well, he lived in North Carolina <clears throat> for all of those years with his wife and his little girl, who is now grown, grown and has a baby of her own. But um, we just had separate lives, you know. I, yeah. He lived there, I lived here, or there, or everywhere, and our lives were extremely different. Um, and but, but when I saw him standing there, I just, like like I said, I turned into a puddle of mush. Aww, and, that's, uh, yeah, that's so sweet. It, it really was. And I, of all of the people in the world, it, and it was the funniest thing because when they opened the double doors, I walk in, and I'm like, oh, my God, my parents are here. How cool is that? And then I look around, and I'm, I'm looking at this. <laughs> there's like six table lengths of people because I have a huge family. And, you know, this one's wife and husband and this one's husband and, and this one's girlfriend and this one. And, and I'm looking at all of these people. I'm looking at all of these people who are mine. They're mine. And, and I made half of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was the weirdest thing because he was, my brother was standing kind of like in the corner over here, like as a surprise. And and I, something caught my, the corner of my eye and I turned and I looked and all of the air in my lungs just escaped my, it, oh my God. It was just like, I couldn't breathe for a minute. 
I looked at him and I'm like, oh my God, what is he doing here? Am I dead? <laughs> and um, it was the sweetest thing. I'll never forget. I just, I hugged him and he hugged me back and I was sobbing and I, he was sobbing and, and my dad, he's sitting over here on this side and he says, uh, okay, that's enough of that. Let's eat. <laughs> <laughs> So we all sat down and had Mexican food, and it was great. My brother was feeding me Patron like it was candy bars. Aww. Yeah, that sounds like food. what an amazing. I'm so <laughs> glad was, he got to come home. And, well, you know what's so crazy is that, like I said, my kids put all this together, and I was so totally clueless. And that is not like me. When my cell phone rings, I can tell by the way it rings which kid it is. And I know that sounds crazy, but I know who's calling me. And it's just, I call it the mama mojo. Which, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like conjuring tornadoes. You know, I just know who it is. And um, like when the phone rings at two o'clock in the morning, I know that's my son, Logan. Because none of my other kids ever call me at that time of day. And I know that he gets off work sometimes very late and he wants to talk to me. In fact, this is a funny thing. Last weekend, he called me at about 2.30 in the morning. Actually, he texted me. I'm sorry. He texts me. He says, hey, are you up? And I was because of my ridiculous insomnia. And so I, I got the notification on the phone. I picked it up and I looked and I'm thinking, Oh God, is he dead in a ditch somewhere? You know, and then I see the message. Dead people don't text. I know, right? And uh, I see the message and I said, all I said was call. Me. So he knew I was up and he knew it was okay to call. So he called. First thing out of his mouth, you are not going to believe this. He says, Mom, I met this girl. Oh. I almost cried. <laughs> I did you want to almost cry. What Not time? Cross, what cry. time of night was this? It was at two thirty in the morning. And when did the bars what? close? <laughs> <laughs> Probably two. Last call for alcohol. Two o'clock. I was just going to say, what, what kind well, of a girl and, has he met at two in the morning? <laughs> he got him a pretty one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he works at a place that closes at around one or two o'clock in the morning. Anyway. And so I said, uh, oh. I, uh, I said, tell me more, <laughs> you know, because I'm thinking, oh my God, he's met a girl. Yeah. Well, What's now mind profession? you, my son's 30 and has lived his life as a perpetual 16 year old <laughs> until about a year ago. So when he calls me and says, mom, I met a girl and I'm thinking, good grief. <laughs> He's never said that. Now, he has called me before. Y'all, this is crazy. He called me a few years ago. Maybe he was 24, 25. And, of course, it was late at night because he always calls me late at night. And he says, to, I said, hello. He said, hey, mom. I said, hey, son, how are you doing? He said, I just had the best sex I ever had in my entire life. And I said, nice. son. Nice. I don't know why I didn't ring my mother up. Talk I was... to your mother about. This is one of yeah. them. <laughs> That's I don't want to hear it. What did you even hear say? About... Please I tell me so I can prepared. prepared. I don't want to hear about the time you almost got arrested. I don't want to hear about, you know. The last <laughs> thing. The last thing on my mind any time in my life when it's come to having sex with anyone, the last person I think <laughs> well, of. The last thing you want to do is call is my mother. mother. <laughs> That's right. And tell her about your experience. And I never, never want to tell her. Would never cross my mind. Anything like that. <laughs> and I'm sure she doesn't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> now, I've never called my parents and said, hey, guess what I just did? Guess what, Mom? You did too. You called your father. Shut up. He's lying. 
Not right. No, not right. <laughs> not <laughs> His father told him, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. <laughs> Dude, he never said that. That's a good song, but he never said that. <laughs> What is that you're eating? Huh? What are you eating? Which one? I am eating sea salt townhouse pita crackers. My God. And bring me some of those. Red pepper hummus. Oh. I can send you some of these. Okay. Have you? So dehydrated watermelon. Salami. Salami from the deli. Nice. Nice. And we have some um Olive tapenade, tapenade, nice, and baby carrot. I'm sorry, oh, guys, awesome. I'm starving. Can I show well, I am you? Now. Can I show you guys <laughs> the cook? Can I show you guys the cookbooks my mom and I bought? Oh, please yes, yes. do. Oh, and um, Patrick, these are townhouse black, black bread, bread sea crisp. salt, and olive oil crackers. Oh, they sound delicious. They're delicious. They are. And at the same time, somebody sidestepped the whole birthday thing. What birthday thing? Dwayne. Dwayne, tell us how old you are. Well, you or I'm Quit teasing us, Charles. Dwayne. Quit teasing Charles. us. Charlotte. What? I've been, I've been waiting for you to draw breath for 20 minutes to say, didn't you see his comment about 20 <laughs> minutes ago? What? You need to scroll back. Shit. I haven't been able to get a word in. What's this? Well, you should have just took it. Two days later, you're going home. Wait, 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 wait. Behind most requested recipes. I'm sorry, Patrick. I'm go sorry. Go back to 2.32. Right, there's one. And we okay. haven't had time to go through these because we just bought them today after our harrowing experience at the car wash. So what, wait a minute. With the Hang on with the first one. What is the? What is it again? The 20 um, most, most requested by who? Yeah. Taste of Home, Taste of Home subscribers, Taste of Home oh, well, magazine. Oh, so that's a known, it's a thing. Oh, oh, in the U.S., yeah, Taste of Home is a very popular uh, oh, yeah. home cook magazine. Mm -hmm. I've, I've also heard you have tacos over there. We have lots of tacos. And then here's another Taste of Home. Quick cooking. Oh, oh that's right up my alley. Yeah. Quick cooking, yeah. Six hundred. Well, there's and your next. We got all these books. We got all these books for uh, two fifty, two dollars fifty a piece. All right. Well, there's your next six hundred. Taste of home. It's like wow. it, this. Oh Lord, this one's heavy. But this one has almost um, like like. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, big books. This is a big book. I'm going to move this. But this was my mom, like, shopping with me. And then Better Homes and Gardens, Hometown Favorites. Hometown Favorites, yeah. yeah. And it's got a lot of stuff in here. Um, some of it, like this one. Creamy chicken enchiladas. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking forward to that. Now, this yeah, is a have... vintage one. And if you guys know, I freaking adore vintage cookbooks. Like, love, love, love. I will buy them all. This was one. Awesome. awesome. Oh, Campbell's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, how nice. And this one, it is in amazing condition. Like, Somebody oh, had this nice just, too. yeah, somebody had this just sitting on their bookshelf. And this is like from the, let me see what the date, let me see the publication date. But it's, it's a little, um, the color has turned a little bit, but it's from 1984. Wow. wow. And it still has a cover, it still has a paper cover and everything. I got this for two dollars and fifty cents. Shut the shut, door. shut the front freaking door, okay? And then I got this one. And I am a Southern Living cookbook. I love Southern addict. I have so many, and this one was brand new. I mean, well, to me, <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, got it for two fifty, and it's huge. Look how thick this is. Wow. Have you bought, have you bought, have you bought uh, another bookshelf? Loads of you're them. Gonna, you're going to need a bigger bookshelf. I'll tell you what. I, hey, no, hey, I have a cook. For what? Have you heard, have you are you aware of uh, the channel Yester Kitchen? Oh yeah, I follow Jill. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And another it's... one that you guys may not know about. She's a smaller channel. Um, she may or may not just recently have hit a thousand subscribers. And I don't comment everything like I should with her, but she's amazing. But she is called her channel is called a Cookbook Collector. And she does vintage recipes and stuff. And she has a whole series on Titanic recipes and other wow. famous ships and things where she took, where she That's took, uh, yeah, where she took recipes from their menus and things and recreated them from the oh, Titanic, wow. the Britannica, uh, all the famous, those famous ships like that. And then other famous cookbooks she takes and she redoes, but her channel is a cookbook collector. I've checked well, her tell, out. Her I, tell her I sent you. I don't go visit her nearly as much as I should, but I adore her channel and it's grown by limbs, leaps and bounds. And I think she's fantastic. A cookbook collector. Yep. Yeah, she's wonderful. She's sweet, 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 and very vintage. Do you know the only vintage cookbook that I own is an original <clears throat> spiral bound, big spirals, Betty Crocker book cookbook. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know what the date on it is, but it belonged to my mother, and she passed away in 1974. So... I don't know if it, I mean, I don't know if it was handed down to her or if she bought it new, but um, the front page is missing and there are pages missing throughout, but I keep it, you know, because it's really the only thing that she owns that I have left. But this was so fun to go thrifting with my mom oh, after, yeah. we, after we decompressed from the psycho with the car wash. Right. Well, and now you just sit back and enjoy what you got. Most of my most of my vintage cookbooks I bought new. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you that that, old that, that's not, teasing. That's not, not teasing. possible. You're 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 not a day over forty four. <laughs> Marcel, how many cookbooks do you have? A ridiculous, stupid, crazy amount. <laughs> Look, give me a good, like, give, just is it embarrassing? An estimate, just, just an estimate, um, um, roughly. Uh, what do you think? Well, it's okay. Now, okay. So I have, I have books, right? I probably have estimates. Mm, mm, yeah. Roughly. Uh, they, they are probably. I probably have 60 cookbooks. Wow. Uh, 60. But then I have, I have, uh, over the years, I have collected, I had magazine subscriptions. Well, mm -hmm. And I have collected those two, and they are very neatly put up because I'm, I don't, I can't do the horror thing. I, I can't do clutter at all. I'm very OCD with clutter. I don't like, I do not like clutter on countertops or anything like that. I lose my fucking mind. I can't handle it. And um, I, but they're put up and I have ancient, ancient um, recipe magazines from Woman's Day and Bear Homes and Gardens and things like that. And they're put up and they're protected and they are in, they're stored. But um, I go through them and sometimes my intention with those magazines, I don't really care so much about the magazines. I really don't, but I like the recipes, but I have to go, I want to go back through and cut them out and like save them somehow. And some of the recipes I don't even care about truthfully, but there's certain things. And, um, but the way my mind works, I know exactly what's in 
each magazine. I know what's there. I know where it is. I know, I know what it is. <laughs> and so it's hard for me to let things go like that. But yeah, anyway, long story short, I have no idea. A uh, shit ton. But yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> A shit ton. That's what you should. You just should have said a shit ton. <laughs> is, is is a shit ton more than a oh buttload? <laughs> no, yeah. The Civil it's War a... cookbook. Marcel, this is Wesley's favorite cookbook. Oh my gosh, I would love to read it. That looks awesome. It isn't I? He tries to cook things out of it occasionally. Can you? Can you just pick just pick a random page and show us what's on Laura, it? Laura, I'm an organized hoarder. Just pick one, like, just randomly. And I want to see what, what a recipe from then is. Yeah. Like um, legit. Fine, honey. I'm fine. I'm trying to find one's got a picture. Okay, I have uh, like one more glass of wine left in my bottle. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. I've heard that before. I've heard that before myself. Yeah, what? but she got another bottle. I've only got one glass left. I've heard that before. <laughs> There's something from that time period. What is it? Well, you got to pull what it back. It? Hold it. No, hold it closer. Um, it's hang on. Pork pie with green beans. And yeah, I can see and it. And, see that? and show us the and photo. And then this is <clears> the <throat> picture. Wow. And, and it and, says. What does it say? Uh, one pound of pork chopped, salt, pepper, flour, six tablespoons of butter, a tablespoon of yard, lard, yep. two cups of flour, a pinch of salt, and cold water. Cover the pork with water. Stew until tender. Remove the meat and flavor. <clears throat> flavor the remaining juices with salt and pepper. Thicken with a little flour and then set aside. Rub the butter and lard into the flour. Add the salt and mix in enough cold water to make a nice dough. Roll out dough and line a deep pie dish. Fill the dish with the cooked pork and cover with the gravy. Cover the meat with the dough. I guess make a, a two-piece pie, basically. Yeah. Uh, and bake until the paste is lightly browned. Wash one pound of green beans and remove the tops and tails. Cut into small lengths. Place in a pot of boiling water. Boil for 15 minutes, adding salt and pepper five minutes from end of cooking time. If available, bacon fat or pork was added before boiling to impart extra flavor. Serves four. Oh, isn't that great? Getting pickle on the um, Pork pot yeah. pie. Yep. Well, there's hardtack in here. There's um. There is a recipe for hardtack. Sugar cookies. Um, let's see. Bouli, yeah, Bouli. I don't know what that was. One mm. pot meals were very common mm -hmm. during Civil War. You've eaten this so many times. So, oh, so, this, so would they have recipes in there? Uh, what is this? Just what people would cook while the Civil War was going on, or not necessarily? That time so I period. It would, I yeah, believe I that this was recipes that the uh, troops made. To serve lots of people, actually. Well, that's the, um, that's the interesting. That's interesting. Um, A lot, because yeah. they're super simple. And, yeah. of course, these could be recipes. I don't know how. See, the United States, of course, is so split over this. Mm. Thank you, Laura. And the education, I, think, I believe that the education that we <laughs> receive... Sorry. Depends on which half of the country that you lived in. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Right. Um, so the education that I received, because I lived in the South all of my life, was that the North came down and pillaged everything, and everyone was so poor and taken advantage of that they had to struggle to eat, and they were eating cotton out of their field. Okay. Cool. And that's just a synopsis. That's well, um, a great book. That's a great book. So I'm going to imagine that a lot of Southern people who were very poor and didn't have a lot of ingredients used a lot of these types of recipes as well. And as it could have been in the North as well. 
Well, even yeah. in this book, it tells you how to make oyster dressing without the oysters. So you make fake oysters to make. Oh, you've what got What the a... hell is a fake oyster? It's like, That's um, what I want to know. It's flour, water, salt, pepper. But they'll like use, a dumpling? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a dumpling shaped like an oyster. So you have that resi resemblance of it. But you'll That's use in the That's fish. in the cookbook. Yeah, mm -hmm. you use fish wow. or shrimp or something to kind of get the seafood flavor for it, and then you make it make your um, oyster dressing the same way you normally would. Ew. What a great book. You do with what you got. It, it is a great book, and <clears throat> it's um, educational. A, 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 I think it's really I believe that it's a great commentary on a portion of history. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And there's it's it's a, two different chapters because you got what you would eat at home. You got what you eat would um would eat in like restaurants that they had back then, which were they they weren't fast restaurants or like inns or bars. And then they got what you would eat if you were out in the field during battles or camping or things like that. You know what I see on here? That's a crazy hair going. Brownies? No. <laughs> Do you see this? Hang on. Yeah. Oh, that tiny little vegetable right there. Mm hmm. That's a squash. Yeah. Yep. And I'm actually growing something that looks very similar to that called a sweet dumpling squash. Ooh. Wow. And um, there's a rutabaga. Oh, God. I, have you guys ever had rutabaga? I've never had rutabaga. Go buy one and cook it. It's delicious. <laughs> what do you do with it? You cook it like a potato? Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can. You can. You can roast them. <clears throat> you can boil them like you would potatoes, like dice them up. Um, you can mash them. You can. Um, you can kind of treat them like a turnip. Yes. Yes. I actually love turnips. I'm sorry. I turnips. love turnips. They're good. Oh, me too. Me too. Turnips are good. Artificial oysters, page 34. How oh, many no. cookbooks do you have, Grumpus? Oh, gosh. I haven't looked cookbooks so many years. I've probably got, I don't know, maybe 20. Mm. That's I had about to guess. what I've got. Do you, do you have a favorite? People, people, have a generally, favorite? people will buy me cookbooks. I hardly ever buy any. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, but I, know, I kind of cook my seat in my pants. <laughs> I think to do that. Now I have I now, now I do I take that back. I do have one cookbook that I yeah, that I cherish. Uh, my mom years ago went down and took some of my uh, my grandma's recipes, some of her recipes, and some of the family passed down recipes and hand wrote a cookbook for me. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, How in fact, in fact, she did five of them for the five kids. And that uh, is really nice. Yeah. That's if there's a fire in the house, that's the first thing I'm going to grab. Right, right. It no, sounds like that should awesome. be in a put it in a safe. But it's I actually uh, have, um, all all the recipes I grew up with. You know, all the going to grandma's for the holidays, all those mm -hmm. recipes, handwritten, all handwritten. I have some handwritten recipes that I, um, they're in my phone, actually. Um, my stepmother's mother, who was in all, for all intents and purposes, my grandmother. She treated me just like I was one of her kids. And so I grew up calling her grandma. And um, the last time I was in Georgia with my parents, my stepmother let me photograph an entire, she had 12 children. <clears throat> and in this little booklet were recipes that grandma made. And each recipe was one, each child's favorite recipe. Mm -hmm. And she let me photograph those. And I actually started gardening about the same time. I was going to try to cook all those recipes and they kind of went by the wayside when I started gardening. Yeah. But well, I would love to do some of them because but, my grandma was some cook. But who does Oh, that sounds amazing. 
You should definitely do one. Do a video on one. I would like to. Yeah. I, I, and I probably will, especially when it gets closer to Christmas time. Right. And not because there are any kind of Christmas recipes. I'll tell you what, though. My uh, stepmother used to make a, an ice cream recipe. And, and really, she called it sherbet. <laughs> she made orange pineapple sherbet out of sun-kissed orange drink, mm. sweetened condensed milk, and a can of pineapples. Wow. It was delicious. I, and she would make it in big batches and, and put containers of it in the freezer, like four or five of them. I mean, I remember in particular, I would just grab it every day when I come home from school and just gorge myself on this orange pineapple. It was delicious. And she gave me the recipe. All I need is an ice cream maker and I can make this recipe. So, I want an ice cream maker too. That That's kind of going to be one of the next things on my list of kitchen things to get. I'd like to try it. I've it. never had one. No? No, I've never had an ice cream maker. I've seen well, where I, you can make them with like a, a mixer. Like you turn uh -huh. it kind of with a mixer and then you freeze it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we had a picture of one in Virginia, but used it so much it died. It did die, and I used to make that a lot, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Um, the only kind I've ever had is the kind you have to use rock salt and ice and, and all that, and then the yeah. thing spins. And that's, that's the only way I know how to do it. Um, but I've learned that there are more automated types now. And so I'm going to look into that. Oh, God, these pickles are good. Jesus. There's, there's oh, there it is. Oh, my gosh. That's so awesome. Oh, my goodness. And she went through and cataloged them and just all kinds of. Look at that. And it's volumes and everything. Oh, my God. Oh, that is awesome, Grumpus. Grumpus, that's a treasure. I think that it took, is her, a about treasure. Hang on. I think it took her about a year to do it. That one oh, there was wow. that, that hang on, the one that you just had there was spaghetti sauce. <laughs> was it? Was it? Was it a recipe for spaghetti sauce? It probably was, because my I had a an aunt that was blind and made spaghetti sauce all the time. Oh wow. wow. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Yeah, what what does it say? It's, uh, okay. I can I can read the top sort of bit of it, but not the three bottom ounces. bit. Let me get, That's a lot of ingredients there. Uh, three ounces of olive oil, <laughs> two onions, minced garlic, green pepper, paprika. Yeah. Pinch of thyme, oregano, margarine, and tomato juice. Cook, cook four to five hours. Four to five hours. Yeah. Now, what would they? What what does tomato? What's tomato? Tomato juice mean? Just the actual. It's, it's the juice. juice from the tomato. It's not juice, um, juice tomatoes. Yeah. Okay. Per now, if, very watery if, parade. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It is. And she That's was blind. Incredible. She had been blind for years. Wow. Yeah. That's treasure for sure. You know, I'm, I'm, you know real, I'm real proud of that. My mom, my mom spent a lot of time on that. Oh gosh, Grumpus. That's incredible. Yeah, that's she hand, to be proud of. And she hand wrote five of them. Wow. See, and how many oh, recipes would be in there? Oh gosh, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's, you can see how thick it is. What? Oh, and now, oh geez. my. Does she gen, actually? This is generations she, after generations. I mean, every page is full. And she's cataloged them in terms of, uh, she's actually, there's a structure it to the says, recipes. Uh, like appetizers, breads, Appet okay. yeah. preserves, jellies, salads, casseroles, poultry, fish, meats and gravies, pies, cakes. So she's somewhere she found this book she's and she hand, hand wrote it all in there for me. That's a beautiful thing right there. Wow. I wish I could.
that for the kids? You could. Well, that way it ain't too late. Videos, so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> There's no YouTube party there. Uh, my kids call me all the time. They're like, Mom, how do I make so and so? I'm like, You know, I got a YouTube video about that, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you, you tell them like and subscribe? YouTube. I did it for hey, you, like honey. And, <laughs> and if you write it, like and subscribe. But, um, well, and honestly, that's the reason I started my YouTube channel was. It, I started my YouTube channel in July before I had my heart attack. I had the heart attack in October. And I know this sounds really crazy, but I knew something wasn't right and I felt like I wasn't going to be around much longer. It was a feeling of impending doom that I had for a few months. And I had no idea why. And then when I had the heart attack, I learned that that is a very common symptom of a heart attack is a feeling of impending doom. However, that being said, back in July, I started this YouTube channel basically so that my children could have recipes that they always call me and ask me about. Hey mom, how do you make so-and-so? Okay, well here, you know, and I'd, I'd have to sit on the phone with them and walk them through it. And I'm like, no, maybe I can just put it on YouTube and they'll be able to see it whenever they want to. And that way, if one of these days I'm not here anymore because I was preparing for that and didn't realize really that that's what I was doing, but I thought my kids will be able to see me living and breathing and showing them how to do the things that they're calling me and asking me about. And then, of course, I had the heart attack, and I survived, and everything's great and wonderful, and I'm healthy, and I feel amazing, and <laughs> and I'm not going to die anytime soon, I don't think. Oh, we're we're never heaven. promised tomorrow, and that's one thing I did learn from that whole experience was um, you just don't ever – you never know what's going to happen a minute from now. No, you don't. Well, I, started, I started my channel for a similar reason. And did you? I mean, I mean, this, this, this got my juices flowing because yes. I, didn't want, I didn't want to write them down. So I, video was easier. Yeah. yeah and, easier. and I can exactly. understand that so, so wholeheartedly. Yeah. And in many, in many ways, you know, for future generations watching it, it's a lot more personal because I can see you as well. I can hear yes. you. Well, and, yes. You know, yeah. that was a big deal to me because I lost to my mother when I was very young. You know that. Um, I was eight. Mm. And there was no video. There was no, Nothing we have a few reel to reel videos that my brother put on CD. Mm. Um, but I have nothing. I'll show you what I have left of my mother. Just, just make sure to back up those videos. Yeah, I've got them back. Yeah. yeah. In case YouTube sort of, you know, you never know with them. Marcel, what flavor of chips are those? Oh, my favorite, sour cream and onion. That's what I have left, y'all. Oh, wow. My God, she looks like you. Really? Definitely. I can see the resemblance. <laughs> I see my daughter in her. Oh, straight daughter. away I'm seeing you. Straight away I'm seeing you. Well, when I was young, yes. Um, but we... That's just what I can still see it now. She was 17. 16 in this picture. Wow. And she only lived to be 26. And so we don't, you know, don't know how that age progression would have taken place. But I see my daughter in, my youngest daughter in her a lot. Well, the, mm. the resemblance between the two of them is uncanny. So your daddy. And my dad sees it as well. And I'll tell you, funny, <laughs> he never speaks of that one. My father, even when I was growing up as a child, my father never mentioned her. Even though we all knew she was my mother, we knew they were married, we knew blah, blah, blah. But it was just never talked about, ever. It was taboo. And um, a 
couple of years ago, we drove up to my dad's house and Violet got out of the car and we're all sitting around the pool. And um, I was saying how much she looked like my oldest daughter. I said, Dad, I just can't believe how much she looks like Erica. And this, he said, she doesn't look like Erica. You know who she looks like? And I said, who? She said, she look, he says, she looks like her grandmother. And it hit me because at first I'm thinking my my grandmother, my grandmother. And then all of a sudden it hit me. It's like, oh, God, she does have a grandmother that's not even here. I said, are you do you mean she looks like Becky? He said, that's exactly who she looks like. <laughs> so I thought that was an interesting. Um, I thought that was real interesting that my father actually said that. Mm. But, um, yeah, people used to tell me when I was very young that I looked like her. Have you got your videos backed up, Charlotte? No, but my brother does. And I can, he'll send it to me if I ask him for it. I, um, did you understand? I'm not sure if you got the question. You your videos on YouTube. Video up. Yeah, you can do somewhere. Yeah. Very good. Because no, Robin. You know, we never know with YouTube. Oh, you, know? you mean with YouTube? Do I have them backed up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you've got to. We have backed up otherwise. And your brother? No. The video of her, I have backed up with my brother. He'll give it yeah, to I've, me. I've got I, multiple backups on my uh, stuff. But my YouTube yeah, you stuff, got, yes, it is backed up. You, you can't. I mean, I'm one to talk. I actually haven't got them backed up, but I've got to do it because I just know, you know, I'm not saving them for anyone to watch. In fact, I'd, no one should watch them. But, you know, the fact is, you know, <laughs> it's a record of something and I'd hate to lose them. Well, but if you're right. doing, Whether if you're we doing should watch them or not, I still do. Reason, yeah, it's because it's, <laughs> it's your work, isn't it? You know, it's your Exactly. And yeah. it's not like, yeah. It is your so work. It's, it's a good idea to back them up because you just YouTube. I mean, you don't know they'll change the rules tomorrow, and suddenly, oh yeah, you and know, suddenly it's gone. Yeah, they, 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 could, they could lose a server too, right? And yeah. we all we all uh, we all take it for granted that they're backing backing everything up, and nothing would ever happen. But we don't uh, know. That. No, don't know. I actually um, have them backed up on the cloud. And I also have them backed up through that Odyssey thing that you told me about. Yeah, that's true. Everything's mm -hmm. on Odyssey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you over there yet, Bill? Are you on? I, I haven't gotten over there yet. I don't. I don't know what the holdup is. I haven't had. Ah, oh, well, it's just it doesn't take. It's just getting. It takes like doing... that long to go ahead and process everything and get it going. How's your and viewership like a, going a on? It's like a mindless activity, isn't it, Patrick? My 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 channel's huge. Over there, I was, I've really got to spend more time over there and figure out how it all works. I've had more success on there doing absolutely sweet f all. Yeah. Nothing done. Nothing. So and I've got. I'm already mm -hmm. over five five and a half thousand. I know a bit over five. Last time I looked, it's going up all the time. My subscribers. I don't know. I, I cannot what? understand it. So you still have you still accumulate subscribers and views yeah, and stuff over there? Yeah, Do you, is it watching. monetized? Well, no, but they, they they work it differently where it's it's not like oh like, that's, already, that's like a Bitcoin, right? Yeah, they've got I've already got money on there. The, some sort of cryptocurrency. I've earned money already. I've done I do nothing. Too. I have um. Let me think. And me and think and more importantly, apparently, uh, Grumpus, they're a little bit, well, they're not a little bit, a lot more. There are no rules as far as censorship. You right. Can say whatever you want, which we all know is a big, a big attraction to a lot so of people. So I could, I could there. use a uh, a gas grill over there. Hang on. There's a line. Sure. A line I'm I'm sure. ah. <laughs> yeah, you've crossed. You might cross the line with that one, but. Other than that, um, yeah, apparently freedom of speech is the, one of their big deals. And um, look, it's just an alternative. And by the way, mm -hmm. I've just so you know, I've heard, I've, I haven't looked, gotten into it yet. But the same guy that put me onto Odyssey, 
Mm -hmm. Thomas, who's got a uh, YouTube channel, put me onto a, I still haven't looked at it, but there's an Indian um, platform The India, someone in India set up a, a rival platform to YouTube as well. That apparently is going really well. So is that right? Yeah. Uh, apparently it's i mean india do you imagine i mean if, if it was only in india there's a billion people in india um there are a billion people in india but only about five percent of them speak english right <laughs> yeah but it's apparently it's that does i don't think that's relevant it's it's uh they've no, done it, so it's, like a, it's like a youtube type thing oh so it it has worldwide yeah. reach yeah 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 okay. i'm a little, is, I'm a little ignorant is, on the indian culture do they eat pork uh, I don't believe so. I don't think I don't think that's got anything to do with. Okay. It <laughs> you not, know where I'm, you know where where I'm going. Indie, yeah, I know. I know. Well, well, I think the whole northern part of the country doesn't eat meat. Isn't that right? Is it not? The right. They're all yeah. vegetarians. Yeah. I think they like they revere the cow. The cows are they uh, do. sacred. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. yeah. Walk around in the streets. Well, they got Hindu. Bollywood too, so they've got their own Hollywood over there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the the Hindu the Hindu religion? I think they they I eat cows. So. Yeah. So this, I think, the north of India is all vegetarian, and the south they eat meat. But anyway. Okay. It's just that there's other alternatives to YouTube springing up now, and yeah, who knows? Who knows? I think it well, is that they you, believe you're that right. You don't know who might take off. Reincarnated family members. Answer. You may be right because I've had a mother in law that looked like a cow. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've definitely had one that looked a lot worse than that. I mean, horns and all. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know. I'm pleading the fifth. <laughs> I've definitely had a mother in law. I can't neither looked... confirm nor deny. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we've all had mother-in-law experiences. <laughs> some good, some not so good. Have you had a mother-in-law experience? Look, my stepmother some mother -in -law is the only mother-in-law that he's really got. Yeah, one. That woman, God love her, has never allowed me in her kitchen one day in my entire life. Because you make a mess of it. They're full of prunes. <laughs> she's the biggest mess maker of anybody I've ever known in my life. However, we go up to my parents' house for Thanksgiving one year. Guess who's helping in the kitchen with the stepmother? That Special. one. And I looked at her. I said, I said, what the hell? Why is he in your kitchen? She said, because he stays out of my way. But there you go. <laughs> she taught me how to make tomato pie. She did. She taught him how to make Paula Deen's uh, tomato pie. It was delicious. Absolutely. Mm. Well, it's very disappointing that, uh, Wesley, that you still haven't done a cooking video yet. Right? Very, Especially with very that award-winning chili you made. <laughs> oh. Chili's wintertime food. Well, just pretend it's winter. Right? <laughs> It's all acting, man. It'll it's all come acting. back. People will start looking now, for chili, and all of a sudden, your video will blow up and go viral. Now's the time to do it. By the time you right. get it edited, it will be red season. Right. Then I need to do mulligan stew, too, then. You go right ahead, dear. It's like, it's like, it's no different. I mean, people think I'm Australian. I'm actually, I'm actually French. You know? <laughs> it's just an, it's all an act. It's all an act. <laughs> You just get up there and say, oh, isn't it cold? Oh, let's have some chili. You know, let's do it. Just do it. You should put habaneros, in, the habanada, oh. in the chili. Yes. Oh, right. That's good. Yeah. I, like that one. Yes. I think that would yes. be really good. Because yeah, if, they, if you take the seeds out. Oh, yeah, definitely. Ribs and seeds. Yeah. Because, and, and you know, I showed you how to cut the peppers so mm -hmm. that you, you know. Um, that would be good. Yeah. We should do that this weekend. Patrick, what kind of say, peppers? What kind of peppers were those you put in the uh, uh, the uh, pot roast? Oh, they were just some. Um, uh, they were sort of like a pickled, not hot at all. Yeah, but they don't look like a peppers we have up here. Well, no, they, they, they have a 
Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Videos. Okay. But it was different oh. than our version. Mm. But they were pickled, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, pickled. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I'll get, I've, I've still got some in the fridge. I'll get up and have a look in a second. Uh, oh, that that uh, looked delicious, man. Man, it, it really was. Did. It was. It's one of the few ones I've done where I'm thinking <laughs> this is actually. I'm not bullshitting anyone. I know, <laughs> right, right. You didn't, you didn't, this you was didn't actually spit it out. Huh? <laughs> Patrick, my son called me last Christmas time. He was trying to make a dinner for his his girlfriend, and not the girl that he met the other day, but a different girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Mom, I want to make a roast. What? Sh how should I make it? I said, oh, you got to make a Mississippi roast. Yeah. Well, how do I do that? Cool. I said, it's the easiest thing in the world. Super simple. And I told him how to do it. I said, you need a three-pound roast. You need a jar of pepperoncini peppers. You need... a uh, envelope of Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning. Hidden Valley Ranch. Who would have thunk it? Yep. You need a, a container Butter. of, or a, a bag of um, au, jus au jus seasoning and a, a au jus mix. And we have that here in the grocery stores. You could just, it's an envelope and you crack it open. Um, and a stick of butter, and that's all you need. He said, get the hell out of here. I said, no, I'm serious. That's all you need. I said, he says, how do you do it? I said, well, you put, you got to brown your roast. Put some olive oil in the pan. Just do it. Brown it. Yep. Yep. I said, and delicious. then you throw the powders, both of the powders, over your yeah, roast. Just, throw your stick of butter on it. Throw your peppers all over it. Your pepperoncinis. Put let, it in the stupid crock pot and cook it let, for four hours, five hours. Let, <laughs> yeah, let the crock pot do the work. That's all it is. Just heat, he calls me heat. up. He made it. He calls me up about six hours later. He says, that was delicious. <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. And I said, I told you it was good. <laughs> the thing I loved about it was the, the most was that gravy because the, the vinegar oh, yeah. from the peppers oh, yeah. just was mm -hmm. exquisite. It's like I've never yeah. had anything like that. Now, I'll go I and will get the say cup. this. Yeah. Um, I only use a half a packet of each one of those things. Because to me, it makes it really, really salt, overpoweringly salty. And that might just be the stuff we have here in our grocery store that's so the gravy mix or whatever. But, um, and maybe I should try some different ones that aren't so salty. But um, if I use a whole pack of the Hidden Valley Ranch and a half a pack of the gravy seasoning, it's perfect. Well, see, so I just added it. I just added a stock cube, but I could. Oh, do you okay. know what I could have? Do you know what I could have done? And I nearly did. Well, I could have just put Vegemite in there. It would have been done exactly the same thing. For the love of God, you are correct. Mm. That would have been good. Just a, yeah, I thought about doing it, and then I thought, no, I don't want to sort of distract. That'll you know. Oh, it's like, yeah. Then yeah. it's all about the Vegemite, you know. I thought, no. Right. I'll well, and the, however, the recipe. You could put that whole Australian twist on it and use the Vegemite, you know. Yeah, true, true. Australian Mississippi roast. Australian Mississippi roast. But Australian we're not Mississippi. Mississippi. What about Imagine just an Australian? Well, how about just an Australian roast? What? Well, what? it could just be cold. I'm asking if there's beans and chili. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being with chili is my dog. <laughs> no hamburger either. <laughs> Chopped beef. I'm with you on I that. Beef. I didn't say what kind of beef. My son in law, Still Justice. Is the best. My son-in-law makes the best chili I've ever eaten, and it's delicious. And he uses chopped beef and yeah. or chopped venison. Yeah, and chopped it, venison's good. Leftover brisket is excellent. Oh, bear is good. Bear, bear chili. I've had it. It's good. I'm scared of bears. I would well, try that. Bear, they can't get you. No, nope. they can't get you once they're in chili. Right. <laughs> I don't want to be within a whole Damn. room of a bear. No. We're going to kill a man. He's going to kill a cat if he steps on this paint picture. Julesy, 
You better get off my table. You've lost your mind. Murphy, come get your cat off the table. Why are you awake? It is 3.30 in the morning. Why are you awake? Video games, mama. Bed now. Get the cat off the table and go to bed. Video games, mama. Go. Why did I not know the boy was awake? Um, Brandon. Three glasses of wine, that's why. <laughs> Bed now. He's working on the mom. Turn the light off, please. <laughs> Good night, son. I love you. I'll be right back. Come here. He still gets a hug and a kiss, though. <laughs> Right on. Now these are the um, peppers, and they're just sort of chili. It just says chili peppers. Just chili peppers. But um, they, I mean, they're long, long and narrow. Yeah, they are. Uh, I'll have a good look at them. Hang on. Okay. I've got to put my other my other glasses on. What's that, Patrick? There's some sort of. Um, Um, we're doing we're um, doing a pepper uh, examination. Vibrant <laughs> mix of yellow and red chili peppers with a medium heat. That's all it really says. Oh, craft! Well, these these are from Turkey. Turkey. Turkey peppers. Yep. Turkey. Peppers. These are these are from these are some sort of turkey. And all it says on the ingredients is peppers. So okay, there's some sort of a Turkish pepper. Ooh. And they're very, they're very mild. I mean, they're and yeah. it's like they're. I was, I was impressed how long they were. Yeah. That threw me so off. There you go. I'll have to find some of those. They look good. They really I'll, do. I'll, I'll send you the rest of these grumpers. <laughs> See, here's some more of my habanadas. Isn't that beautiful? Let me see your pepper. Mm. <laughs> I've been asked that before, Charlotte. <laughs> oh, come <I> on! <laughs> Jeez! This is not appropriate. <laughs> not YouTube appropriate, is it? See there, look at that. <laughs> Let me see. I'll show you mine oh, if you God. show me yours. I'm sure you would. <laughs> uh, that one. Peppers, peppers, peppers. He told me it was not appropriate for him to show me his pepper. Oh my! Well, they they're, they are. I mean, I I just picked them up from the because I couldn't. I mean, uh, pepper and chini or whatever they call them. Yeah. Maybe these are what they are, but we don't have that here. We don't don't have a product gotcha. called pepper and chini. So right. I just thought, well, I'll try these. These look like they'd be okay, similar. Look. Yeah, Delicious. anything anything oh, wow. pickled, I think, would be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I. So I just thought, well, <clears throat> I'll get these and just. See what happens, but it was just, it was the vinegary combination, right? Which I've never had in a pot roast. It was delicious. That pot roast looked delicious. It oh sure man, did. it was. I was uh, yeah, so excited when I saw that you were making that because I was thinking as soon as you said that's what you were going to make, I'm like, oh my god, he's going to love it. <laughs> and I did. Yeah, that that is, um, in fact. I don't know if you're like my son, but he said to me after he made it, he said, that's going to go on the rotation. Definitely. Because, yeah, because it's I can't. just so delicious. Now, what's good is that doing it the day after for lunch, taking like oh. a small hoagie roll or something like that, shredding it up and sticking it on there, and then taking some of the beef broth with you to work and having yourself like a French dip. A French dip. dip, yeah. That's what I did, man. That's what did I did. You did you really? Did that. That, was yes. a couple times. That's, that yeah. sandwich looked delicious at the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I had it for days afterwards because it was, you know, it was a lot. But yeah. I can't wait to make it for um, for the family, you know? Sure. Sure. Because you know, I know they're going to like There'd be just no one that would look at it. If you're a meat mm -hmm. eater, you're going to love this. Mm hmm. Definitely. If you, hate, if you hate the vinegar or peppers or stuff, but I mean, it just blends so well together. They really do. And, and I find that they're not as super 
they add so much to the dish, but they're not an overpowering. It doesn't thing. overpower it. it. Doesn't. Right. No. Right. No, it's per it's perfect. It it really is. Now on my recipe, it says to add five of the pepperoncini peppers, and and here they're only about. Inch yeah, and I've half, seen that. Uh, inch and yeah, a half, inch and half, two inches, inch yeah. and a half maybe. But um. But I always add more than that. And I even pour some of the juice into it. <laughs> hey, Marcel, welcome back. What's up? I had to I'm eat. Gonna have to, I'm going to have to do the right thing here now and show, now that I've shown you. Uh, show Marcel your pepper. Yes, yeah, I'll I'll show, you. show Marcel your pepper. I have to everybody, else, now. everybody else, look away. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you can... It's like I always say, you can look for a second time, but you might regret it. You know? <laughs> I mean, if you didn't like it the first time, you're not going to like it the second time. There you go. That's a hell of a That's... pepper. I have, wow. I've never heard that before. I've never been told that before, Marcel. <laughs> you're the first person that's ever said that to me. Please uh, they are... forever. <laughs> we have. You've seen my pepper. But th these are the ones I used in that Mississippi thing that I the pot roast. Yeah. Um, and it says they're from Turkey. They're Turkish peppers. Yeah, but I like I commented that video, and I've always wanted to make a Mississippi pot roast, and I never oh, have. You've got to. I haven't either. I'm gonna do it. They are so good and they're easy. I can even make them. What? It, the oh, Wesley, you can. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. It's just one of those slow cooker. I mean, you just ch chuck everything in and leave it, and it doesn't, it, you know, does it itself. But we can't get that ranch mix here. That's not. I mean, I've run out of it now. I've got none. Well, Patrick, so. Patrick, if you, if you go to, I have a video for homemade ranch dressing, and if you just make the spice mix that I that I have listed yeah. in my video, you have yeah, ranch a, dressing. That's the truth. So I'm I, bad, I, don't dude. Buy, I, don't, I don't typically buy it. I just make my own ranch and I have a, the video is up and then the blog post is up. You can print it. Mm -hmm. I've got to and say after today, I'm, I'm feeling really free, you know, like, like maybe a hippie back in the sixties. I've shared my peppers with you. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling liberated, man. I'm yeah. liberated. And you just wait because I've I've got a whopper of a, a Christmas collaboration coming up that we're all going to do. So, wow, got gotcha. you. Like for that one, we are, we are just bonding I'm and in. bonding all over the place. Well, I've we've all Is you that know, it's like a... what? I did not hear what you said. <laughs> Is that a crunchy chocolate? No, it's a, a sweet pickle. Oh. oh. Uh, I I said, half the jar I said, now. We, we are bonding over these experiences and conversations and complimenting people's peppers and things like that. And yes. Um, yes. And yes. And uh, then I've got a Christmas collaboration for all of us that I'm going to email you guys about. So I'm excited because if it's a cooking thing, I have the perfect, perfect Christmas dessert. Totally. Going to do it. Perfect. Going to do it. Super simple to make, too. Well, I don't do a lot of collabs. But I'm in on this one. Okay, well, good because I'm I'm not allowing you to not be in the, not, not be on the end on this. Yeah, that was a smart. No choice in the matter. <laughs> Whatever I just said, you can't not do it. I've thrown in the white flag. You're gonna have to barbecue a moose. Listen, <laughs> I survived. I survived oh, yeah. a personal attack from a car wash today. Okay, you do. You do. Yes, I I need help, people. So you're I going through your bucket list right now. Love <laughs> and and this one is going to involve ugly sweaters. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, Julie, Julie, she woke up. 
not, not to mention that. <laughs> Not to mention you actually could have gotten stuck in the car wash. You you could still be there. Dude, I was still, like, I thought I was going to, like, permanently be in the car wash. I, like, we made a mad escape from that thing. When it finally jammed, I legit had, you know, the furry things, the things that look like the fraggles that turn, that do all the work? The brushes. Yeah. It was it was draped. They were draped over my uh, rear view mirrors. That's how not done it was. And I was like, my son was like, Mom, go. And I said, I'm not going anywhere. I got goop all over the car. It's it's like a half-cooked Mississippi pot roast. I'm saying. (laughs) With some some droopy peppers. Droopy peppers. (laughs) Nothing worse. (laughs) Nothing worse, Look, this is a celebration today. You've survived... uh, I don't know how you survived, actually. How how did you do it? I survived with cookbooks. Alcohol. And cookbooks. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much my life. Alcohol, uh, children, alcohol, cookbooks. Yay. Yay, Jules. How are you feeling? Should I? How am I feeling? Um, I feel like I slept for a little bit. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> Sorry, I broke into a coughing fit. I know I sound like a seal barking. In all, in, in, in all, in all, in all fairness, I think you Jules, share. I've, shared, I've shared it with everyone else, except this time, okay. I've got a red one. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Those are the droopy peppers. Is that are his pepper. Shared peppers. Yes. yes. Yeah. Marcel was very complimentary of them. Yeah, I yes. And so were you. So were you, Charlotte. Yes, yes I was. So I've never seen such a, that's a, a, that's a, a pepper before. That's a hell of a pepper. pepper. <laughs> Apparently they're two schools. And then I had to show off my little miniature pepper. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. That's fine. That's cool. That's that's more realistic. That's more it's realistic. It's a poor comparison, okay, Patrick? You're, you're, <laughs> right there. you're just making That's Patrick cheap. feel better, Charlotte. That's I more know, realistic. I know. <laughs> My job is what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is public, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> At least I probably, it. Probably won't be laughing. <laughs> We won't be laughing tomorrow, but for right now. <laughs> <laughs> the peppers were in the pool. They were in the pool. Yep. Maybe, maybe. Well, maybe wait a it's, it was a oh, Mississippi oh, pot. Maybe, Not a heat. Oh, well, maybe maybe carrots. <laughs> yep. I love those little baby carrots. I, I'm definitely feeling the effects of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I can't wait to get up again. Uh, <laughs> well, well. No, I don't want any more wine. I'd like some tea, though. <laughs> I mean, if you're offering, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, yeah. no, you're not out. I have no more booze. I'm at my mom's house, so when I finish, the, when the bottle of wine was done, I'm absolutely done. She keeps no alcohol here in her house, so I'm down to like sparkling water or iced tea or frozen egg rolls. That's very sparkling depressing. water and frozen egg rolls. Frozen egg rolls. Frozen egg rolls. That's random. Oh my god. <laughs> Marcel, come to Mississippi. I'll make you some tea. <laughs> and unfrozen tea. How are you, Jules? I'm, I'm, I've been really sick, actually, the last couple of weeks. but That's not good. Yeah, it's starting to break up a little bit. I'm just feeling really tired from it oh. all. And every time I lay down, I just, I'll just start coughing. And gosh, it's like I can't catch my breath. But... Um, that sucks. We had okay. something very okay. similar mm-hmm. sounding about four months ago in this house. <clears throat> My poor kids were so sick. 
And every time they laid down, they would call. Every single time. I get. We had them at the doctor, what, three times? At least three. Each. Um, I thought they had COVID. I really did. Yeah. Uh, but we had them tested three times. And the very final time, I made them do the blood test for the antibodies. Mm. And they were clear. Uh, so whatever they had was just some kind of. I honestly believe it was bronchitis. Yeah, and mine's bronchitis. I mean, it's yeah, different. and at the very end, I told them treat these kids bronchitis. So they ended up having inhalers and breathing treatments and antibiotics and the whole nine yards. And finally, <laughs> finally, after about three weeks, they were well. But it yeah. took a while. Yeah, it's it's a long it's a long lasting one, and it sucks. Yeah. My daughter brought it home, and she's kind of relapsed. She was feeling better for a little oh. bit. Oh, I hope you're feeling better soon. I never yeah, ran a fever, so I'm not concerned. I was not COVID. It's just a, a, some cold or virus that turned well, into the, the that Sahara dust is supposed to be kicking back up. The Saharan dust? Oh, yeah. I have heard that. Yeah. Well, that's where our hurricanes come from. It's one more thing. Huh? Is it? Yeah. Mm. Screw them. No interest in a damn hurricane this year. I'm done. I hope we don't get one. All the coastal, you know, I, I'm in a coastal town. That's where I grew up. You know, I grew up here on the Texas coast, but right. I, I hope we don't get another massive hurricane this year because they've finally started rebuilding and recuperating from Harvey. Right. And that's and that been was, what, I mean, two, three, three years. years ago? Yeah. And some places are still some businesses are still down. I mean, yeah. Believe it or not, Marcel, the town that I live in is still recovering from Katrina. Oh, I believe, I believe it. it. Um, there are still. Not, go ahead. I'm sorry. Incredible. No, it's just. Uh, how long ago was that? Twenty. Six of uh, August will be 16 years. There are still concrete slabs where there were houses and businesses. You'll see the silver rail where there were swimming pools. Just it, going into nothing. Yeah, grass. In fact, I'll take a picture of something very interesting for y'all this weekend and post it because um, I don't know where I'll post. Probably Instagram. Um, there's a restaurant downtown that used to have a residence next to it. And in fact, I think that whole property used to be the residence. Mm -hmm. But right next to the restaurant, the restaurant on the, say, the left of me, and about 25 feet from the restaurant, there's nothing but a, a concrete staircase going to nothing Yeah. with iron railing, you know, to hold on to. And it goes to nothing. And it used to go to a home. And two towns over when we were here and that, when we Remember shot the here, bank vault? Yeah. Oh. Two towns over, it was just the vault. No bank around it whatsoever. And this thing was massive and heavy. It still yes. bolted to the ground. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It, it was just the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, well, close, but still. Well, my boss, the uh, the owner of my company, he, he lost his house in Harvey. I mean, oh. they, bull they bulldozed it over, oh. and and he just bought a house uh, two months ago. Wow! They're just oh. they're just now just now getting moved into it. That's sad that it takes yeah. so long. To yeah, get it's been the, absolutely crazy. the The small coastal <laughs> town where what I have a strong attachment to. I grew up in Corpus Christi, and that's where I'm at right now. Um, but my favorite Texas coastal town is Rockport, and Rockport was just oh, they took the oh, obliterated Dev and mm -hmm. obliterated, and we were absolutely heartbroken for the whole community, and yeah. it's unbelievable. You know, the high school was ruined. The place where we got married was ruined. I mean, like they had to bulldoze it, and it was the town community center that had been standing since the forties. Oh, I was there. Yeah. I, was, I was in Rockport. Uh, what the hummingbird festival? When is that in the fall? 
Yes. Uh, I, I went there, uh, me and the wife went there last year and uh, well, there's still sure, buildings. Actually. There's still buildings that have not been rebuilt. There are uh, still things, hotels that are still things that vacant. Have not reopened. Yeah. It, it was just it was sad really. Like the yeah. Holiday Inn, the Holiday Inn, like they just abandoned that building. They're just not coming back to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's several buildings that are to the town to our, our right. Go for. Yeah. And there were hotels, all kinds of different things, and they have finally, within like the last year or two, started to doze all the stuff. And they were they were just falling apart, decrepit, mm -hmm. turning it into all kinds of seedy places. And they finally uh -huh. said it'll just be better if we get rid of them. Yeah, yeah just them bring them down. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, guys, I'm, probably, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to sign off. It's it's uh nearly 4 a.m. here. I've got to go to bed. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh. To go to bed. Yeah. I'm gonna have I'll to go nighty nights because me. my mom is gonna be getting up to have coffee in about an hour, oh. and uh -huh. yeah, it's gonna be like. Should we go here? Yeah. Or like, yeah. Well, yeah. I told her we were going to stay up late and party, but I don't think she planned on me being up till then. But I, I have no hour. regrets. I've had so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's well, only been so going much, nearly six and a half hours. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, six record, hours. Guys. Well, when uh, this yeah. when this started, I was out eating, and I, I yeah. had time to eat, come home, jump on. <laughs> yeah, I was so here. Yeah. I had made my, yeah, when, dinner for my mom, and we were hanging out a little bit. We did uh, pan when, we did pan fried pork chops, ooh. mashed potatoes, and a, a can of corn, and some uh, French bread. All of my oh, favorites. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, well, when this, when this started, I just graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite the marathon. Quite the marathon. When this first started, I we're going to we're going to get Charlotte's watch hours up one way or another. It's going to be a insane, little bit. you guys. Yeah. Charlotte, yeah. Charlotte will definitely be at a thousand uh, by the holidays for sure. Oh gosh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I would think so. Um, Social Blade say in about two months. Yeah, that yeah, thousand. Yeah, and honestly, well, that's what like, I mean. I mean, within two months, it's going to be freaking Halloween, Thanksgiving, all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I'm actually thinking about decorating the garden for Halloween and making it real spooky. So that'll be fun. It's just that hard for me to think else. about it. I swear, it just seems like we just absolutely <laughs> jettison through this whole. Year, summer, everything. Yeah. It just seems like it's gone so fast. Yeah, school's going to be starting for my kids in about three weeks. And honestly, I am not the mom that loves to send my kids back to school. But this year. You ready, huh? I'm ready. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I am. And, and I think it's okay to finally say, yes, the kids are going back to school. I'm going to bring them back with the um, kids. Well, I gotta tell you, when I finally decided after after Christmas last year to go ahead and let my uh, send my kids back to school, school, right? Oh my God, I I had like uh, probably, and I'm not, I I'm not being sarcastic. I maybe like a small form of PTSD. <laughs> yeah, but it was the homeschooling. You know, my son yeah. had. Uh, five different teachers my daughter had two different teachers and i was the teacher's aide for all these teachers and trying to run right. around and then deal with the natural personalities of my kids that are they're stubborn and all this stuff and then trying to manage uh, right. all the mandates coming from all these teachers and then the home the house the my my videos my blog my everything i wanted to do and your husband was and, then, and he was gone for uh, right. five months of it and so i was on my Mar own marcel right. marcel mm -hmm. when was the last time you made your mother breakfast in bed oh uh, because i'm just like thinking now could be a good time i mean you're you're you're, you're 
you could do that now. You're awake. Yeah, you might as well do it. I mean, you're already up. Well, it's only another hour. That's very sweet, but I'll tell you something about my mom. She's a, a thousand percent, a million percent. She's not a breakfast person. She she yeah, likes to she likes to get gesture. up and she gets going and then she has a like a little bit of water and then she has her coffee and then you know she's eighty three yeah. and she's got this and that and so she takes some medication. She takes her medication. And then uh, she'll, yeah. she'll eat for the first time uh, probably around nine ten o'clock. But still yeah, do that. that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if it was different for if it was different, you know, I would do that. But I made her dinner. I made her dinner. Yeah, but breakfast in bed is got something. Just My just a cup of cereal or something. Just take her a cup of coffee. Smack me with the tray. Yeah. But that would be funny. You know, <laughs> her smacking me with the tray would not be funny. No. Uh, well, not for you, maybe. No. Just put coffee on a tray. But then yeah, the coffee will. will go all over her. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing is, is the, thing, the thing is, you go and wake her up, and then she'll feel bad because you got up so early. <laughs> <laughs> he knows exactly what I'm oh, doing right now. Go back to bed. She, knows exactly. she saw me with my bottle of wine and I showed her you guys. Because Charlotte was already good. going. And that's why she was like, I'm out. And she went and went and went and went and No, she knows. We, we, we're older now, but we still have that dynamic. She knows her night owl kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like last night I stayed up a little bit. I actually had some wine and I got caught up in a live stream from a uh, RVing channel that I follow. And I was it, like interacting in the chat with them. And we stayed up till about probably nearly three and I had some wine and stuff. And so this morning I woke up and I come out to my mom and she's on the computer and she's playing solitaire on the computer. And I came out and I sweep my hair back and I said, I said, wow, I'm not used to sleeping until nine o'clock. And she goes, well, when you stay up all night, it's real easy to sleep till nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're older, but it's not much different. So, <laughs> yeah, but well, that's what she said. Those are beautiful. Did you make those? I didn't make them. I bought them, but I thought you'd get a kick out of them. They are gorgeous. They're uh, be Indian beaded. Are they really? Those are yeah. gorgeous. Um, well, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream, but thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart for showing up for us tonight. Everybody, everybody make sure you hit that thumbs up before you go. Yeah, hit the thumbs up. Yeah, hit the thumbs up, people. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch my, my, my replay. Uh, oh, I have 12 thumbs up to you guys. That's a record for a live stream. Mm. Yeah. Oh. And it'll get well, it'll get there. It'll get there. I'm getting there. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see anybody named White Chipmunks in the chat? What? Did you see a White Chipmunks in the chat? I haven't seen her on this not. chat. Okay. I told her to come over and check you out because she was supposed oh, to be okay. leaving another live stream, and sure. I didn't know she ever popped in or not. Yeah. So well, there's always another day, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys have a wonderful evening. Try to get some sleep if you can, Patrick. Charlotte, thank you. I, really, thank you. Charlotte, I, thank you. I, I left and you a link. Jules, He's trying to talk. I'm sorry. You're Charlotte, trying I left, to I left you a link in the private. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you. You, might, you might want to check it out. I certainly will. Thank you. All right. Bye, well, right, everyone. All right, everybody. Bye. We'll see you next night, time. Everybody. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Y'all have, have a great evening. You too, Grumpus. Bye-bye, Marcel.